And fellow streamer Nihil. Nihil, but yes. Hello, YouTube. I, I, I have always pronounced that Nihil. Is that how it's supposed to be pronounced? That's how I pronounce it. Uh, no, I mean, I say it. I don't really care. And, uh, but yeah, and now we're uh, we're going to be showing off some stuff uh, for the coming remake of Andoran Saga called New Dawn. And uh, take it away, Mister Writer Man. All right. Well, New Dawn is a, a project that I've been working on for three months now four months now this is basically this is not a remake of andron saga this is not a replacement for andron saga this is a re-envisioning uh, originally it was just going to be a straight up remake we were just going to port andron saga to a new engine do some bug fixes do some slight script adjustments but then it was like you know if we're going to make this change which is going to be a little bit contentious we might as well make this other change and if we're going to make this other change we might as well make this other one and it just kind of went on and on and on until you know we're at where we are today, where I have a 15-page document detailing 850 changes. So, is that all? This is, yeah. Oh no, it's probably a lot more than that. But I wouldn't want to exaggerate or anything. So, uh, yeah. Um, hello, chat. How's everybody doing? Uh, I don't know how many people are actually in your guys' streams. You want to tell me? Yeah, sure thing. The Twitch icon is always misleading. It says five. I doubt it's that. I doubt it's that low. I just I just pinged everyone in Andoron. Quick, I'm at so we should uh, be getting... 25. Okay, we should be getting some people flowing in here pretty soon. Yeah, exactly. I've already got some chatters going on. Everyone's excited. So I assume you both have uh, the entire full screen of my screen, uh, like zoom in for everybody. So yep. I have a document right here. It's a 15-page document. What I'm going to do real quick before I even talk about anything, for people who want to tune in and just want to like see the core of everything, I'm just going to scroll through the document and you can always rewind, go back and pause if you want to read it page by page. Oh, so I'm just are, are we starting through. with the document? We're going to start with the document. I'm going to flip back and forth between them because there's, there's a lot to cover. Okay. The document is like, it's just a little bit of everything. So I'm just going to slowly scroll down a little bit. Again, if you guys want, any of you viewers, you can just pause and read any of this. There'll be There's... a VOD after this that I'll make sure is saved as all, as well as posted to YouTube. So if anyone wants to catch it, you can check it here or you can check it over on uh, uh, Nighthill's stream. Yep, that's it, right. So we'll auto be a VOD. It's so hard to pronounce it that way now. That's all right. That's... And just to be clear, we are going to be going over this. We're going to be reading this entire document today. Sweet. But for anyone yeah. who doesn't want to sit there and sit through like three hours of a stream, you just want to quickly pause it and read, you can go ahead and do that. Hold the uh, fuck on. Did I just see that you can recruit Astrid in the new version? Ah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to that <laughs> later. I, I feel like I just saw that in the document going by, and I am all for that. And Fuck, this character uh, sections, this Mang, character Mang's sections here. are outdated. He says, oh, hey, "Are we gonna see any gameplay today?" Not gonna see any gameplay. It's not that we don't have gameplay, but the project file is not really. Uh, it's not in, like any sort of fun playable state, so there's no point. I can't we're show not you guys. Three standards. Hey, yet. I would. Oh, I forgot you're in Lex Taliona, so I was about to say like, Andoran Saga is in a fun playable state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe we'll load up the old ROM and pretend that that's the finished project, everybody. We'll, we'll fool some people, I'm sure. Okay, so that's the whole document. I've skimmed through it. If viewers want, they can go through and pause and they can read the changes. We still have a bunch of portraits to show off. We have a bunch of sprites and we're going to be discussing the general game design and all of that. There's also uh, all the new house names and everything that are slowly featured up here in the corner. Yeah, you can see that. We've got uh, the Lightbringers are renamed to House Borealis. Uh, we've got uh, House Darkholm is renamed to Umbra. Uh, House Ring is renamed to Orion. House Rose is the same. House Spear Garden is renamed to Saffron. Rose and Saffron are actually descended from the same ancestor. House Taros was originally House... Uh, oh, what was it called? I always forget, like House Axe Cleaver or whatever. Oh, what uh, Ash Ashburner? No, uh, um... House Ashburn. Ashburn. Yeah, see, I, I always have trouble remembering that one. But it's called Taros now for a few different reasons. We'll be getting into those later. Uh, House, House, Win Pokemon, that's what it is. House Windlance is renamed to Gale. 
House Flame Guard is renamed to Ember. Claymore is still a thing. That's Victoria's house and uh, Caroline's as well. And then House Steel is the same. So basically, Rose and Steel stayed the same, and everything else changed. Uh, there was different reasons behind each one. We also did a little bit of polling with uh, some of the players in the Andron Saga Discord, asking them which names they preferred for renaming. Um, but mainly, I just didn't like how long the original names were. I wanted them to be a little bit shorter. And there's a few reasons for that, too, but we'll get into well, it Well, House Ring never made any sense to me, like, at all. Whereas Orion makes so much sense. The symbol's an arrow. They're all archers. Orion is a, like, a constellation that is typically referred to by archery. Hmm. What the fuck did Ring have to do with anything? I... Actually, I think House Ring is a reference to FE4 because there's a House Ring in FE4, so it's probably something okay, like that. Okay, see, that's why I didn't know that because I my experience with FE4 is like four chapters before I'm like, it takes too long to play this fucking game. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start from the beginning of the document. I'm just going to read what it says, this first part. We can skim over some of the other stuff later, but this pretty much explains everything. Real quick, so, too, yeah. uh, chat, yeah. I've got a notepad open now. So if you guys want to, like, ask any questions and stuff, um, I'll write those down, and uh, we will get to them when we get to them. Sure. And if chat has anything to say, please keep in mind, chat, I'm going to be... The chat is over on my left side, my left screen. I don't really have the mental focus to focus on it while I'm also talking about the game. So if you ask me any questions, I'm probably going to overlook it. I'll leave it up to my co-host to read chat and catch me up on that. I, okay. as, as relevant questions pop up, I will take mental note of them and then ask them when there's a lull. Please do. Please do. We want to make sure we answer all of chat's questions. I'm sure they're going to have a lot. Yeah. And this document, by the way, is probably going to answer most of them. I should mention, too, um, there's been a lot of criticism of Andron Saga. I mean, I have my own criticisms of it. Sure. But there's been a lot of criticism over the last four months, and uh, I totally understand where pretty much everything comes from. There's obviously there's a little bit of bad faith out there, people who just don't like it because of who made it. You know, so be it. But as for the mo the vast majority of criticism that's talking about like actual story issues or character beats that they didn't like or whatever, I've listened to it and I've tried as best as I can to incorporate all of it into New Dawn. So New Dawn won't be a perfect game. There's going to be some compromises I guarantee you people are not going to like. Some people are going to love it, some people are not going to love it, but it is what it is. My Ferdinand fanfiction made it in after all. <laughs> We finally have the it's dating kind of game. That you mentioned, you mentioned that because, like, with me playing all these other hacks lately, like Bile, uh, Bells of Byland, Vision Quests, everything else that people are recommending, I'm effectively just holding them up to Andoron as my comparison because that was like my lead into for Fire Emblem hack. Mm. So, That's like, awesome. My, my my bar is very high. It's like, oh, does it have good sprites? Does it have good writing? Does it have good music? What is it <laughs> missing that Andoron already had? And I have to remember that Andoron is still relatively new compared to everything else I'm playing. And there's a lot of ones that are that were started being developed like back in 2016. So, you know, they were dealing with much older tech that wasn't as yeah, advanced yeah. as what yeah, we yeah, have Vision now. Yeah, Vision Quest so. a great example. It was apparently one of the, the, the starting ones is what people were telling me. In fact, speaking of the music, the music was made by Treat Star and Tambo. The music is, in my opinion, the hands down best part of Andoron Saga. Like, if you if you're talking to someone, they're saying Andoron's bad, and they're listing off reasons. You're like, eh, I don't know about that. And then they say the music. You can effectively disregard all their opinions because they're just wrong. Like the music's yeah, I mean, perfect. The Tamea battle good. music stays on during sex. Let's just be real here. <laughs> well, you keep whatever you do in the bedroom to yourself, okay? <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start reading the document. So, and Utter, sure. yeah, so Andoron Saga is incomplete as far as I'm concerned, and my plan is to remake it in the Lex Talionis engine. It's not a ROM hack, but a custom game engine made in Python. It'll allow me to add tons of features missing from the base game, expand the plot, add more recruitable characters, and overhaul slash improve the story like I never got to do originally. So, when I say it's a custom game engine made in Python. Uh, I can't really show it to you at the moment because I have this this here portrait screen open. Mm -hmm. This portrait screen is actually attached to Lex Talionis, and if I try to like drag it around, it just whole screen flickers. So I'd have to close this off to drag it over. We'll do that later. I'm going to show off what Lex Talionis can do specifically. But for right now, just know this is not a ROM hack. This does not produce a GBA ROM that you can play on an emulator. This is like a full PC game that you have to play on a PC. In the future, we're hoping that it can be ported to, like, your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll make, like, a .apk for Androids and whatever it is for Apples. But 
for right now, it, that's not possible. It's just for PC, which sucks. I'd like it if it was playable on more devices, but it is what it is. So the, make some the question that I'll ask for the audience and myself as well is that um, because you're building it as a new game from the ground up, can you do a Steam release? Uh, sell it, yeah. Is it commercial? No, no, no. Absolutely not. And we're not going to because so. it's a rip. It's not a rip off of Fire Emblem. Like that's not fair to call it that. But you know, it's based on Fire Emblem. It okay. has like a lot of Fire Emblem assets in it. Like we'd get sued to oblivion. No, thank you. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, that would also cause a big rift with the divide, the the design team as well, because there's probably people who contributed to stuff that will be in the revision. True. That may not necessarily want it sold, but True. are still intellectually involved you know what i mean yeah, yeah i didn't and, think about that and and for me like here's the thing too is that uh, i don't care too much about money like if i have enough money to pay the other people who contribute great uh, as long as i'm able to live decently comfortably i'm pretty happy with my monetary situation if i made like a million dollars off of anderon or whatever that would be nice but it's it wouldn't really change my life in any meaningful way uh, this is for me is a passion project mm -hmm. like pure and simple so i'm going to be working on this for however long it takes to finish it so it's not, it's not about making a bunch of money or putting it on Steam. If I were to put it on Steam, there'd only be one reason for that, and that's to make it more accessible to a broader audience, which yeah. still can't do it because it's Steam, so. People are wondering when the, uh, if there's, if you can't sell it, how are we going to get the DLC for Buggy's comeback? Or mm. Enderon 2, Electric Buggy Loop. Uh, we'll, we'll add an update DLC button on there, and that, we can add some paid DLC for sure, yeah, like two ninety nine. We'll add some horse armor for uh, Caroline's horse. Uh, can we get some uh, buggy hair, uh, like some toupee <laughs> DLC for Buggy? Yeah, we can. We can give him like a, a hair extension DLC. That'd be pretty good. Oh, that, that, see, there we go. That's that's all we need. <laughs> I would personally also... love a language patch that um, changes everybody's names to what Estelle calls them. <laughs> like a. Yeah, like no, no, no. A... I want. I want a. I want, a um, I want the narrator to re be replaced with just Ferdinand's rendition of it. <laughs> That'd be good, yeah. I was thinking of like, uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of uh, Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal. Yeah. Where, uh, where they translate, they translate yep. it from English to Chinese, I think, and then back to English. It's so funny. I think One it was Vietnamese. Things. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's what um, it is. There's a there's an infamous uh, retranslation for Star Wars that they translated to. I think it was Japanese or Chinese or something. In the that's Chinese. Movie. Backstroke yeah, of the so West. They, yeah. So they turned it from like. I am your father, no, to do not want. <laughs> yeah, do not want. That's the classic one. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just continue with the document now. Sweet. So, it says, so it says, the first half of the game will be relatively the same as Vanilla Andron Saga in terms of plot structure. All the same story beats will occur. There will be many new characters added. Some characters are swapped around. For example, Jesse swaps with Coulter. And by this, we mean Jesse now appears in Chapter 1. Coulter appears inside the dungeons. And there's a good reason for that. There's several good reasons. But we'll get into that when we get down to the character section below. And there's going to be some other changes. But otherwise, the first half of the game will be pretty recognizable. The second half of the game will be much less... Will be far less unrecog... No, far less recognizable. Don't worry, guys. I'm a professional writer. I know what I'm doing second half of the game will be far less recognizable. At the end of chapter 15, you're offered the choice to go with Helga to Hornheim, and you can follow a path very similar to Vanilla Andron Saga, or you can continue sailing to Timaeut and join with Tendaris in his war against Il Rodan. And this oh, is a big on, change. Hold on, I, I have to stop you right there. So that means there actually is no Timaeut plotline, because when you go to pick, uh, when you go to pick Tendaris, the game's gonna pop up being like, you don't want to go with Helga? Really? So there's a lot that goes into the give thought me, behind this route sec. split. I got to oh. up Spiral's volume chat's telling me. That's why you guys oh, can't see for a second because of how I'm doing this. Yeah. But um, to answer your question, Spiral, so I had a lot of thoughts on what there we could go. do exactly with one route in this game. And ultimately, we wanted to expand the story in important ways. But the problem is the game's already... 31 chapters long so like what are we gonna cut to make room or are we gonna really add even more chapters it felt a little bit ridiculous to do that um the route split also comes from another reason so jaka and his friends are allies with tendaris and it doesn't really make any sense that they just kind of get on a ship and sail away and they don't really have anywhere to go and then helga shows up and invites them so the new storyline justification is they're actually originally planning to go to tendaris because jahira recommends it while they're fleeing 
And then Helga interrupts them, is like, hey, why don't you come up with us? My grandmother says you'd be helpful. So then you have the choice to go with them. Now, the plan that we have made as the uh, the New Dawn team, the plan we have made is that we're only going to focus on one route. So we're going to do one route in its entirety, and we're not going to touch the second route at all until the first route is done. And the first route we're going to do is the Helga route. So it's going to continue on basically the same trajectory as in the vanilla game. So you're going to go with Helga. You're going to go to Hornheim. Later on, you're going to go to Styxia. But Timaeit, well, we'll learn about that as we go down in the document. There's going to be some big changes to the Timaeit route and the Helga route. I okay. do have a question, because in the document here, it says the two routes will be likely to be a bit shorter. So instead of 15 chapters, we might only have 10 or 12. One of the most common complaints I've heard about late game Anderon Saga, and this is one that I share as well, is Hornheim, Timaeit, and Styxia all feel like they're just completely underdeveloped because you spend about three maps in each. And the Timaeit ones are all effectively the same ones. Like the last one is different. So but here's Timaeit maps one and two are just here is a big lava field. So Hornheim, Hornheim is actually going to have pretty much exactly the same number of chapters. That's because I actually think Hornheim is the best of the routes. It was the one that I spent the most, the best of the arcs, I guess you could say. It's the one I spent the most time writing. It's still got problems. Like, it's got big problems, especially with, like, Skilla. Her, like, her motivations are weird. Who is she? You know, it's, like, it's very nebulous. But I've beaten it, like, three times, and I still am not 100% sure if the Skilla you fight was always her grandmother or if she was possessed at some point, or if it was just like a body double that took her place and killed you. I, I still don't know. Yeah, and we're gonna solve that. We're gonna solve that. I already have lots of ideas on that. But um, so anyway, Hornheim is gonna stay the same. Styxia is going to be changed drastically. Like it's gonna be very different. You'll see when we get there, because I've already written down everything that changes in Styxia in the, ch in the chapters. I think it's like chapter 20 to 25 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a completely different structure. For one thing, they don't come from the north. They they sail down from the south to get to Styxia. So, and you're going to fight Kangax not once, but twice. And when you fight him twice, it's not going to be that he's invincible like in the vanilla game. He's actually very easy to kill. Like, he's super easy to kill, but he revives because he's a lich. We're going to make that part of, like, his thing. So, so are you it's... removing that exact mechanic from Ash then? Because that would be very, very retreading old ground if we did... The Ash fight where she keeps coming back and you have to keep repeatedly killing her. Well, the entire the entirety of Timaeit is also going to be different because yeah. uh, right. Timaeit is a, is was originally it was like a def it was like an offensive thing, but now it's a defensive war. You'll see. We'll okay. get to it. We'll get to it later. But anyway, okay, I like the suffi sound of that. suffice it to say, the two routes are going to be very very different from what you expected. There's a lot more thought that went into them. And... Um, real quick, I wanna I wanna jump into Morph Ball yeah. says a lot of people complained about Jaka not figuring out Skilla despite all the hints. Look, if you go to a completely different culture that you've really had no experience with, it's really hard to pick up on other things, like, when you compare that to, <clears throat> like, what what is just normal to these people. Because you have no bearing, you have nothing to measure this against. So, yeah, Skilla acts, like, super weird, but Jock is also, like, probably like, oh, maybe that's just how these people are. I don't know. And Jock is also fresh from the trauma of losing bottom on. I, that's, I wanted to address that as well. I had two points based on that exact comment. One was, when I played through it, not for a second did I doubt Skilla, but it was mostly because we just got betrayed. So I'm like, mm -hmm. they're not going to throw another... I think I said this during my stream. Like, they're not going to throw another betrayal at us immediately after it just yep. happened. And yeah. following that... Jock is also distrustful of anything that's even remotely non-human, and consorting mm -hmm. with demons is pretty not human. But you also have to remember, too, that Jaka is, uh, he's looking for power. He wants to avenge Bodamon. It's like his soul thing. So maybe he thinks, you know, aligning with the demon. But I'm not, I'm not going to get too much into the justification for it. I had no say in the original formatting of Hornheim, then Timaeit, then Styxia. I didn't, like... We were writing a story, and then Mengs was like, okay, so they go to Hornheim next. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And so I just wrote into that, and then he's like, okay, then they go to Styxia next. I'm like, okay, or I mean, they go to Timaeus next. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. He's like, also, you got to skip Timae. I'm like, uh, okay, well, I guess we don't have a lot of time. Might as well. Then we get to Styxia, and I write that out. And by the time, like, it was such a whirlwind, those last, like, that last year that we spent writing the second half of the game. It was only after it was out and about that I finally had time to really sit down and think, and I was like, oh, yeah, actually... It doesn't really make any sense they went to Hornheim first. Why didn't they go to Timaeus? Hey, why didn't Jaka trust her? You know, that's kind of weird. You know, there's just like, 
so many things that finally come to you after the fact. And I'm sure it was the same for Manx too. Like he was probably so focused on getting it done, just getting the project out that when it finally came out, that's when you get to sit back and think about the problems that were there. And you're like, oh yeah, no, actually these players, they're making some good points. We probably could have done that a little bit differently. Could you um, name any source of fiction it, that you've ever read, seen, or played that was 100% ironclad from start to finish? Because I can't. Uh, actually, yes, I can. I can. It's called Arcane. Arcane is amazing. It's pretty <laughs> much... I'm going to say it's pretty much perfect, and that's only because there's, like, like two little things you could maybe nitpick, and they are really small nitpicks. Like, Arcane Season 1 is basically I, perfect. I can't argue that. Arcane was really good. I'm sitting in a fucking Jinx chair right now. I'm biased as hell. Okay, viewers, so for those of you who have not seen Arcane's based on League of Legends, you've got to see it. I don't care if you like or don't like League of Legends. I don't even like League of Legends, and Arcane is, like, the perfect series. So just you watch can, it. You can watch it with absolutely no knowledge and still get every single bit of it. Yep, You're I fine. didn't know anything about League of Legends aside from cultural osmosis, so I'm good. So oh, to pull uh, it back... I got, a, I got a question from chat here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let me jump in with one real quick, too. Fire. Um... Yeah. Morphball says, "Well, Albert and Don pretty much warned Jaka and, that Skilla was a, or was going to have her demon moment, and everyone seemingly ignored that. Look, if you know, let's say I'm going to a different country, right, and my friend with me um, is super racist towards the people in that country, yep. and they're they're constantly like, these people aren't trustworthy. I'm like." Okay, but, like, you say that all the time. <laughs> like, that doesn't necessarily mean anything about these specific people. My like, biggest criticism... Don kind of hates everybody. Yeah, my biggest criticism of the Hornheim arc actually has nothing to do with Scylla, and it has nothing to do with Jaka not trusting her or whatever. My biggest issue is, why are there only three Scotians with faces? You've got Scylla, you've got Helga, and you've got Sigrid. That's it. Like, there's, there's nobody else from Scotty. There's no, like, I don't know, like, there's no lesser Scottians, just like a random mage wandering around in there. And I want to address stuff like that, too. Because, like, having the, the complete lack of other characters in Hornheim really hurts it on a world-building level. And it makes you wonder, like, because it feels like there's just, like, two women and their grandma there that are helping Jaka. And it's like, well, it's no wonder they need help. There's only three people. Of course they're going to die if Tyranar comes over. He's got, like, a friggin' army. There's a think... lot of icebreakers with faces and somewhat personalities. Mm -hmm. And you compare that with Scotty, it's just like there's nothing. So, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, the, the issues with Skella are a problem. The issues with Jocko are a problem. And I've addressed them. You'll see in the document I've addressed them. But it's going to take time to get to that. We've got 15 pages to go through. So I don't want this yeah. to be a seven-hour stream. And I know you guys got stuff afterwards. So ah. I'm going to continue reading. I do have a so, question before we get too far away from it, because we've kind of already strayed. Uh, someone yeah. uh, in my chat had a question about the Kangax arc that you were talking about. And they said, please ask, is the oops, no staffs mechanic going to be gone? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that, because I don't know. That's too far away. Okay, valid. Yeah, it's I, I can't comment on like a gameplay chapter that's like chapter 25. Uh, who knows what could be changed by then, so. Okay. So anyway, the game will feature different mechanics from Andron Saga, including chargeable items, that's going to be a fun one, new weapons, skills, and other systems to make the game more open-ended. It will also feature a total overhaul of the support system, and I am very excited for this one. We'll talk about this later. But I want to mention just chargeable items really quick. Can you scroll it down just a little bit? Oh yeah, sure. There you go, that, that helps. These are the different that. pads. So the chargeable items mechanic is going to be really fun. So imagine for a moment you've got like... You've got, like, the Lumina Staff. You can only use it once per chapter, but because of GBA ROM hack limitations, what we had to do is, when the staff is used, it breaks, and then Zacharias repairs it. It's a little awkward, and there are actually some bugs with it that I remember, but now it can just be, like, it just drops down to zero uses, and then it recharges on a new chapter. You can also do the same thing with the Regalia. If they get down to 40, if they go down from 40 uses down to zero, they recharge. I'm not saying we will, by the way. But I'm just saying, like, you can have items that recharge when you reach the end of a chapter. You can have items that recharge if they get a kill. You can, like, add recharging mechanics to all sorts of different things. For example, um, we were thinking of uh, uh, vulneraries and elixirs. They might become rechargeable. So that could be interesting. 
That sounds like it's going to function similar to how uh, Thracia's equipment breaking system works. Like, once it gets down to zero... We are going to be still... doing the Thracia equipment system. Yeah, it's, like, still technically usable. You just really don't want to use it when it's like that. Yeah, one thing that I've never liked about um, games outside of Thracia is that in Thracia, if you use that Master Sword and you're not paying attention and it breaks, you're not like, oh, no, it's gone forever. You're like, oh, i got to repair it now. Because it's, it's still there. It still exists. Like, it didn't just disappear from the atmosphere. It didn't yeah. evaporate into dust. You can still that fix said, it. That drop it tanks your stats so hard that if they're getting attacked with it in their hand, you might be losing a unit. Yeah, my favorite thing is when you have an iron sword that breaks and it goes from 5 weight to 20 and all of its stats become 0, and you're actually worse than if you were fighting enemies with your bare fists. Very funny. Okay, so now we're going to go on to broad overarching goals. So the, this is going to be something that mostly addresses criticisms of the game as well as my own major thoughts about it. Mm. So the first one is we're going to be removing most of the unfitting jokes and references. <clears throat> uh, these didn't fit the tone I thought the hack was going for when I first joined, and they're not funny. That doesn't mean we're removing all of humans. Some of these jokes that you didn't care for? Yeah, sure. So like, uh, there's some Skyrim references. Those are me. There's some Skyrim references. Uh, there's a there's a joke. Um, Ash makes a joke like, "If you strike me down, I'll I'll just come back stronger." That's a Star, Star Wars, Wars joke. That one's Mang's. You know, him and I both we put in a lot, but I definitely put in more. So there's just a lot of just bad, cringy jokes. And some of these jokes are just kind of like, you know, like they're just something that I put in that I was writing. I was like, yeah, maybe if I have time later, I'll go back and fix it. And I never had time later, and I never went back and fixed it. And some of them I was like, oh, this is this is a good place to put this joke. People are gonna love this. And then I people like reacted to it, and they didn't love were... it. I feel like there was a couple of jokes that I remember reading and getting and went like, I love this. Like, there was a couple that I think maybe some people would consider cringe, but I was like, this, in any other way, this wouldn't work. But because it's right here, it works so well. I, so, I, I felt the opposite. I, I told Clock a lot of them I didn't like. <laughs> oh, and that's valid. I'm sure there was some that was like, really, are you are you serious right now? Sure. Like, so I caught here, that. But. Here's going to be the general rule, okay? So you're going to read the main story, and the main story is now going to be pretty serious. Not like, you know, like, serious, like, grim dork. Everything's grim dork, and people are going to die. But, you know, I mean, like, it's going to be, a, it's going to take itself seriously. Yeah, don't Batman the whole thing. But the guidance are going to have, like, plenty of humor. There's going to be lots, lots of cross-character interaction. Maybe because we have Jesse at the start of the game. Maybe Jock is a little bit less of a stupid idiot who's just constantly cracking dumb jokes and ruining things. Maybe we give that to great. Jesse in the guidance. That's a great question be... right there. Uh, you said Jesse's going to be the start. Is it going to be more of an obvious, like, this is a Breaking Bad reference? Because the farther we get from the year that that show ended the less relevant and less known that reference is even going to be in the first place. Yeah, and, and Gemini, for example, he says, don't mess with this centaur repeating twice was a bit cringe. That's just, that's just, we yeah, were at the end of the game and we didn't I have really time. Liked, but it was, it was a reference to a YouTube video about this game itself. Yeah. Like, that's, as it's far as the, the breaking, as far as the breaking bad thing, though, I don't think that's as big as an issue as you guys are making it. So here's the thing. I, so. I agree on that one. Like, so like that's a name is very small. There's a line that's like, don't don't forget the men, but the women and the children too that Jocka makes, and there have been some very interesting reactions to it because I saw someone play the game, and when they got to that, they didn't actually realize it was from Star Wars, so they just saw it as Jocka just saying, you know, not just them, but the men and the women and the children too, or whatever, and he was he just took it straight on. He just thought, yeah, that's fine. Skill issue. But then the people who knew it was from Star Wars actually liked it less. Because they were like, oh, that's so cringy. I can't believe you put that in. That totally ruins it. So it actually, for people who got the reference, they hated it. And for people who didn't get the reference, they just thought it was fine. They thought it was like a totally fitting line. So I feel like I feel like I might have made the wrong point there when I was talking about the Breaking Bad thing. I don't have an issue with it. I was more concerned with like, do you know when you play a game and it makes a very distinct dated reference? Like you're like, in five years, yes. this is going to make no sense. That's more what I was worried about. You want your jokes to be yeah. at least somewhat timeless. Here's the th but... even if you even if you don't know anything about Breaking Bad, Jesse's still just like a funny character. Like yeah, it's not absolutely. like he's funny because Breaking Bad exists. He's funny because he makes jokes, and he's funny because he's always getting high. And then he's got that serious plot of everything with Alvaro. So uh, you the know. fact that that serious plot is tied to him and Natalie is actually what redeems his character from just being a one-off joke character because you suddenly see, especially because. 
I don't want to say everyone has had an experience with someone who's been through a horrible traumatic experience because that that's that's just a dark world but I don't want to go there but if you have ever known someone who has gone through a horrible traumatic experience mm -hmm. and then fell onto drugs uh alcohol substance mm -hmm. of some kind in order to cope with it you immediately feel for Jesse like mm -hmm. at no point do you sit there and go mm -hmm. no I'm sorry he's too much no you understand 100% where sure. he's coming from and I should mention, too, regarding Jesse and uh, Natalie. So here's an interesting thing. So when we first started, Natalie was just a wacky, gender queer, like just kind of like a weird girl who made like weird jokes and stuff. And Jesse was just like a funny Breaking Bad kid. And he just made like funny jokes and stuff. And then there was a there was talk in the Discord, the Dev Discord. We were like, you know, eh, should Jesse and Natalie, like Mings was like, I originally wanted them to be brother and sister, but they're too weird, you know, nobody's going to like them. And when he said that, the, I could feel like the light bulb igniting in my head. I'm like, wait a minute, they're brother and sister and they're both weird? Why are they both weird? And that tied into maybe there's something that caused them to be weird. Maybe there's some trauma there. Why would she be acting like the way she is? And then that eventually tied into Alvaro after I connected some other pieces together and that led into like the slow redemption of their characters over the course of the game but i also acknowledge that people who play the game and who are immediately put off by natalie and they're like she's too freaking weird i don't like her i'm just gonna kill her off they'll never get to see that and you know that's okay it's unfortunate but it's okay from uh from and from I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get i'm gonna game. get one in here now too because it's been a little bit um yeah, go, go first and then i'll go after you my chat was uh, really asking a lot about um, Ahmed saying based. Is that getting removed? Oh, oh yes, no. So that. it's not getting removed. It's getting moved to like a Gaiden or something. It's not going to be between okay. him and Jaka. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's like, it's a I funny joke. That. It's fitting. It's fitting for Ahmed. I'm sorry. I, to me, I, Ahmed I, I is think, that character. I do love Ahmed. I, I adored reading Ahmed's dialogue because I did the papyrus voice. <laughs> but I... I'm personally against all of like the the riz, the base. That I I hate those, but that's me. That's just me. I think it, I think it's it's less it's especially less palatable because it's in the middle of a like a serious like a main story yes. dialogue scene. But I think if it was just like relegated to a guidance side dialogue, you wouldn't mind it too much. Well, uh, like, I'll, oh, ha, I'll agree ha, ha, with. Ha, ha. Um, I think based has been around long enough that I think that if if you're going for the weird internet lexicon, I think based is just gonna be around forever at this point. Don't don't, don't rub it in, man. Riz, I don't want to live in that world. So Rorik asks, Riz, I um, think, is going to be dated in a year. I I don't think there was a single point in the entirety of Andron Saga I ever used the word Riz. Oh, okay. I, I didn't remember that, that but Spiral said it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just using an example of internet lexicon. Please go ahead with Rorik's question. Yeah, so he asked, um, he understands wanting a more serious tone, but what would be the point of Ferdinand? Ferdinand, Ferdinand never got the redemption he deserved. Ferdinand was supposed to have an absolutely awesome scene at the end of the game. And we had a few different ways that the scene could have played out, which I'm actually going to talk about later. But suffice it to say, Ferdinand actually is a legendary ancestor. He's actually uh, Zacharias and Don's older brother. He's a true-born Lightbringer, and he's the son of Joseph. So he's like the strongest person on the continent. So he just like rolls out of a house one day in chapter 29, and he sees like Alexander's men like smashing down the gates. And he's like, you rapscallions! How dare you? You're making too much noise. You've interrupted my tea time. Huzzah! And then he, like, casts Armageddon and destroys, like, a bunch of dudes. He's like, okay, I'm bored now. And then he goes back into his house. So you could have something like that. We were also thinking maybe he could be, like, the Goto in the final chapter. But Mangs and the other guys were like, you know, eh, he's too, he's too wacky. He's too comical for that to be a thing. So then yeah, we were thinking maybe he's, like, an ancestor you fight. He was too wacky for that to be a thing. So he just ended up kind of getting, like, a little scene in the end credits. Oh, actually, tying into the Ferdinand thing, will we find out what happened to Jeeves? Because I'm dying to know. Yes. Well, the question isn't what happened to Jeeves, it's will it still happen to Jeeves? And what happened to Jeeves is that he just kind of got forgotten. So it's, it wasn't like a deliberate thing, just like I was too busy, too, too busy rushing to think about Jeeves, so he just got forgotten. But I won't be forgetting about him in New Dawn. Good, good. Jeeves deserves... I want, I want Jeeves Justice DLC. And Jeeves is actually uh, Ferdinand's great 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 grandson. So he and he and his he and his like fathers before him have all been taking care of their crotchety old ancestor as his mind decays. Oh, that is a fate worse than death. I'd rather be the fucking dark spirit in the tomb of horrors than that. 
Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna continue reading. Okay, yeah, so we, we, we are not yeah. even one page into this. Yeah, okay, we'll so. we'll we'll do that. If chat keep asking questions, I'm writing them down. So okay, so um, we remove the unfitting jokes. Then we're gonna do a complete overhaul of the support system. We'll talk about that later. We're gonna obtain more battle sprites for personal characters, those who probably could have had them if we extended the dev time. We already have a bunch. For example, we have uh, uh we have Bjarki as a warrior. We have Coulter. Uh, he has a promoted sprite with, that didn't make it into the base game. Uh, and we have a Jahira Lance animation that was scrapped. We have lots of other options. We also have, uh, I have a brand new sprite that I commissioned from uh, Nameless for Rod. Rod's going to have a big character overhaul. You guys are going to like him. He has a big glow up. So lots of more battle sprites. We're also going to have new uh, music written by Treat Star and Tambo. I already have two songs. I'm not going to show those off during the stream not going to show them off. They're very cool, but I'm not going to show them off. Will some you of the music to... be the same? Oh, all the music's going to be the same, okay. but we're going to need more music because there's going to be more chapters ultimately. So That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you really going to complain with more Andron music? It's literally the undisputed best part, so... No, not at all. Okay, so a new route split with two options on launch probably would change this. Let's just say there's... And then there's a... We're trying to aim for a route split. We're going to have the Hornheim path is the one that we're aiming for on launch. It'd be great if we could also get the Timaeut path too. But I'm aiming for Hornheim path on launch and then maybe later we add the Timaeut path and then maybe later we do this. But here's the explanation for them. Hornheim path still has Elon to nearly die to Skilla. Then you're approached by Darius, Ahmed, Kepri, or some other Styxian character to sail south and help Darius fight his father. If you choose this path, Tandaris dies to Il Rodan. This route ends with Hornheim and Styxia battling against Anderon and Timaeut in a 2v2 war. So, oh. yeah, it could be pretty interesting. The Timaeut path has you help Tendaris save his country from Il Rodan. You will face Il Rodan and Mortimer's united armies on this route, uh, allowing us to more logically progress the Anderon plotline. If you follow this path, Tyranar takes over Hornheim, kills Clan Scotty, and attacks Anderon. At the same time, King Axe kills D Darius... So King Axe kills his son Darius, and he attacks Andron from the south, perhaps to search for a method to restore his body. Uh, this path concludes with Andron besieged by Hornheim, Timaeut, and Styxia all at the same time, but none of those signs are actually allies. Darius so it's like, it's, is my favorite. It's either so a 2v2 is, with two... This is bad ending. Yeah, not necessarily. It could be pretty interesting. Darius so. is my favorite, so it, this is bad ending <laughs> for me. Now, there is a possible unified third path, however... If we do this third path, it is a long way away. And I am not even, I haven't even really thought about what it would be in there. I have like some ideas, but it's its like very, very, very back of my mind. So uh, somehow Timaeut is saved, as is Hornheim and Styxia. Scotty survives minus Scylla, Tyranar is defeated, Tandaris is saved, and Darius is saved too. So how the way you happen... have that written there, and I know it's not how it goes in the document, but how it's written exactly there is all I'm thinking is somehow Palpatine survived. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly what I was thinking when I wrote it, too. I take my inspiration only from the greatest of movies. The greatest of movie lines, clearly. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. You know Palpatine. He was always good at the uh, the meme lines. <laughs> Unlimited power. Okay, uh, so we have um, someone asking uh, in chat with the, how the secret ending hints at a sequel coming. Is there any way to combine that, the prequel you guys are working on, and this into one massive game? Uh, absolutely not. Um, for one thing, the characters that Mangs is doing for Rebellion Saga are pretty incompatible with like the remade characters that I'm working on. For example, just Rod alone is totally different. Um, there's probably going to be other characters who are very different, so we'll kind of see as we go through. But um, when you combine like all the changes to the characters and how that would affect their stories in the war retroactively, you wouldn't really be able to combine it. If I were to do an Anderon Saga 2, it would have to be like taking off of uh, New Dawn, so it'd be like New Dawn 2 or something like that. Uh, but that's a long, that's such a long way. I don't even want to think Sounds about like it right we're now. we're discussing effectively the difference of like a Dragon Ball Z versus a GT route. Like this is going to be the new canon yeah. for this, and then anything that man's yeah. team build. This is also why I don't want to. I don't want to call this a remake of Andron Saga. It's not a remake. This isn't like 
you know, we're, we're fixing something. There's a big changes here. This is a reimagining, a re-envisioning, like, this is basically what would happen if Anron Saga was made by Clockinator. And that's not even entirely correct, because there's still plenty of Mangs' influence in this, but it's different enough to where you should consider these two alternate universes or different continuities or something. We'll just call this the Silver Timeline, and the original Andron was the Gold Timeline. Just, just move from there. Makes sense. Okay, yep. so regarding the Hornheim path, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. so right here it says, still has Elon to nearly die to Skilla. This is actually a little bit deceptive because there's a lot of different ways that particular thing can play out. Uh, Elonda can completely survive just fine. Elonda can actually die to Skilla. Like she can straight up die to Skilla. Or she can almost die but be saved. And there's a few different ways that can play out. Uh, if it's mentioned later on in the document, I'll tell you about it. If it's not, you just don't get to know about it, and you get to save that for when you actually play the game. But uh, suffice it to say, we have some very interesting ideas for the uh, Elonda and Skilla thing. And the reason it's important to say that Elonda can completely survive the Skilla is because the Elonda skilla thing never happens in the Timaeut path. So when you reach the final chapter, Elonda's not dying. She's just, she's totally fine. She She lived, she lived, bitch. Uh, she made it all the way to the end, and then she's not going to, like, you know, die and then rejoin Bottom On in the afterlife. That's not going to be a thing. She's just going to survive, and she gets to live for 10, 20, 30 more years. So that's one of the we many different endings. Weird Amon. Yeah. In fact, speaking of which, that's one of the many new endings. Huge number of new possible endings for the game, depending on the choices you make during the adventure. So this is only a summary of a few of them, but we have a lot more planned than this. So these are just examples. You can think of these as like alternate endings where you do certain things and then the game's ending changes as a result. The game can even end much earlier. So if Jaka takes the demon deal in Helheim, he becomes an enemy you face in chapter 32's equivalent. This is considered a bad ending. So at the end of chapter 32, when you face Alvaro and you're trying to escape, instead of, instead of or maybe in addition to um, Emilia, you fight Jaka at the end of the chapter. And he's like a demon or something. Ooh, spooky. Uh, so if you want to save Bodamon, there could be an unlockable ending where Bodamon lives and you can fight a final battle inside Malthrak after he leaves the throne room. Defeat Ka uh, Cassandra and Alexander's forces to get the best ending for the best boy. And we have a few uh, ideas on how we could approach that. Maybe... If that happens, if that happens, does that mean like that officially becomes the game's ending right there? Yep, Cause yep. If, okay. Because... The reason that, that would become the ending is because there's no fucking way I'm doing, like, a fourth route with, like, another 20 chapters afterwards stretched Oh, no, out. no, I like this because you're doing a Chrono Trigger-style thing where there's multiple endings, but some of those endings will come sooner, some will come later, yeah. and it depends on your player choices, and I like that. And the interesting thing about this possible ending, so imagine for a moment, like, let's just say support levels are somehow involved with this. So let's say bottom one gets to an A rank with Mortimer, and by doing that, maybe with some other conditions... So you unlock the secret ending. Mortimer doesn't mm -hmm. betray you. He joins you, right? And then you fight back against Cassandra and Alexander who are pissed that Mortimer betrayed them. So they try to kill you both. Or maybe he still does betray you if you don't get it. But you still you can still fight and kill like your brother and Cassandra and Alexander. And so Bottomon just kills all three of them to become the king. You know, there's like a lot of different ways that we could approach just this alternate ending. And it could be very interesting. Kanas asks, um, can we save Randall as well? Uh, I have no comment on that. Okay. So then the other, the next ending would be, um, if you want the original ending for Andron Saga, where Elonda joins Bottomon and the Great Beyond. So if you make certain choices, you walk the Hornheim route, you'll get that ending. In other words... If she almost dies and then she's saved by Helga, you could get the same ending as in Vanilla and or on Saga. And if you don't want Helga to die, you can have her S support Varg or Tendaris. One of them can surely preserve her life. So Varg gives her an elixir of immortality, or maybe Tendaris gives her like a longevity elixir. Uh, we have a question from Retro asking, uh, will Theodore remain a pre-promote unit? And earlier someone asked another question about Theodore saying that uh, they, they're wondering if he's going to still drop off after part two because he literally becomes a background character until the end. Yeah, guys, you know me. I mean, when I write a character like Theodore, I'm just like, you know, nah, we got the new characters. We don't really need the old sauce anymore, so I'm just <laughs> I'm just going to keep him dead. Yeah, in fact, I may just straight up kill him off. Uh, his, his uncle will land the killing blow. That's the end of his storyline. You don't need to worry about him anymore after that. Yeah, that, was, right. that was a really brilliant story choice that I definitely enjoyed. Totally not sarcastic. Nope, so, not no, um, we're going to have Theodore be more present throughout the story, like, just in general. 
Well, it seems like he almost became the Merlinist to Jaka's Roy after a while. Like, we need someone for Jaka to talk to in some of these cutscenes. Fuck it, Theodore's plot important enough. Let him do it. Yeah. Now, um, Retro did ask, will Theodore remain a pre-promote? The answer to that is, yeah, probably. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't change that. He can become useful in plenty of different ways. It's always Hopefully. possible he could get, like, a third-tier promotion or something. I don't know. I mean... I w like... If this game goes long... Like, if this game becomes, regardless of route, longer overall in some capacity, I would love to see all the characters become third-tier pre-promotes. Like in, uh, like, Radiant Dawn style. But I really I don't want to go... I really don't want to go over 31 chapters. 31 chapters felt exactly. very long in vanilla Anderon. So I'm trying to find ways to cut chapters down if we want to fit new ones in. That's yeah. why we're like redoing as, Stixia. So. As an alternative to giving everyone third tier pre-promotes, it would be interesting to see more characters than just Isabel and Ralph Deer have alternate promotions mm -hmm. if conditions mm -hmm. are met. That would be like a way of keeping the game the same length but giving the player more flexibility as well as like inspiring them to try harder for certain chapters. Because you have to you have to power train Ralphnir to get Yarn. You have to power yeah. train Isabel. Well, to get Ralphnir. Well, we'll we'll see about Ralphnir. Yeah, um, and, but I'm using I'm using current Anderon as my example yeah. for this. But nobody else has those optional and motions uh, besides Jaka. C Cactus asks, will we see more T3 units? No, uh, I don't really intend to add T3 to this. Um, uh, that's one thing I don't want to depart from vanilla Anderon on. I don't want to add like a bunch of T3 when you promote. That doesn't mean that you won't get like a tier three unit or two, like hello Ferdinand, but you know what I mean? Like it's not going to be like a common thing. I was interested okay, so in somebody asked, uh, where was it? Toko asks, any word on different things that may happen to Samuel if you're changing Theo a little bit? Uh, it's entirely possible, but I don't think we'd, we'd, we'd change the story too much. I think the, um, Samuel's betrayal is very integral to the story. However, mm -hmm. I agree. However, yes. in the bottom on survives arc, who knows? Maybe Theodore, I mean, Theodore, maybe Samuel is integral and he becomes like your ally again. You find out he didn't really want to betray you or something like that. That's, that's totally possible. <clears throat> but I don't want to do a thing where like he survives in chapter 14. He's just like a presence throughout the next 15 yeah. chapters in vanilla that would really take away from his death. in vanilla as well i don't think he wanted to betray you like yeah. i never got the sense that that's what he wanted i i got the sense that it was his last resort but it was very heavily manipulated into his head like this is legitimately your only option to preserve your house etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so let's move on now so um there's also who knows there could be a super secret ahmed ending i mean people who've uh beaten the yeah, final yeah, chapter yeah. People who've beaten the final chapter and had that certain boss conversation might understand. Uh, does everyone but Jaka die in chapter 29 slash Holtmeyer? Jaka flees and Mortimer wins. This is what I'm very excited for. Mm. This oh, was that's... The, I this love was that the, in video this games. This was the original ending Mang's planned, and I, I'm really sad that we never got to do that. We could potentially get to do that. We could have Mang's original vision be a thing. <clears throat> this is one where Mortimer defeats everyone. Jaka flees with just the baby. And then you get, like, the Mortimer's victory as he, like, takes over the continent. I would but, love that. But um, here's another one. So, will Mortimer die like in vanilla? Will he fake his death like I planned originally? Or will he give up early and concede the battle to you? All of these and more are fully possible as alternate endings. There's, there's lots of different ways Mortimer's storyline could end. And I'm not saying, like, we haven't decided yet. I mean, like, maybe you make different choices and you get different endings with him. We really want to go hard because, you know... Like, Spyro, I know you've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Chris, I don't think you've been playing it. I no. don't think you've played it. No. But Baldur's Gate 3, I really enjoy. And I like the way that all the different choices you make anything. affect things. Yeah. And I want to, I would like to replicate some of that. I'm not a AAA developer, but I want to replicate some of that in New Dawn. So we'll see. I have see. a question about the Holtmeyer ending there specifically. First, yeah. I need to, I need to clarify something because I can't remember. Is Theodore even deployable in that chapter currently? Yeah, yeah, he's deployable. Okay, I couldn't remember if he was. I, what I was going to suggest was if he was busy taking care of Ilonda and not deployable, as the battle turns against you and you start to lose more and more units, would he become deployable as like a last ditch, therefore leading to the ending where Jaka has to take the baby because no one else is alive to run away? That's kind of where my brain was going with that. Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah, no, I, I see that. Maybe it's like if Jaka is the last one who survives, he takes the baby. If Theodore is the last one who survives, yeah. he takes the baby. Maybe Alonda could be the last one too. So either way, one of those core three, they're the ones who take the baby and survive. That could be interesting. Someone is okay. asking about your um your your uh, split path thing in mind. 
Um, instead of choosing between Tomate and Styxia, could Jaka not just split his army and do both? Have a character go to Tomate, but have those characters not be playable in Styxia until the army converges. Yes, thank you, Roark, for asking that question. That is exactly the idea I had for the third possible route, but I'd need to really think about it because uh, it'd probably be like one of those where you have to send like you have to send um, not Bjarki because um, he won't you won't have Bjarki at that point. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, you would have to send Barrett and maybe Ralph near and other people from Hornheim up north and then people from Styxia or wherever down south. You know, like you'd have to like send people from that region and then you get to pick the rest of your army that goes where. But then do you like, do you play one of the paths or do you like kind of play all three at the same time? Like, you know, I'd, I'd have to really think about it and I'm just not in that headspace right now. So I want to get on to the next one though. This one's where, where things start getting really fun. This is gameplay general alterations. Excuse me. And um, this is where it's going to really start diverging a bit in terms of gameplay from Anderon Saga. So the regalia will function differently. Lightbringer regalia are locked to bloodline. Other regalia will be S rank, but wieldable below S rank by anyone with that house's bloodline. This will make a lot more characters viable in the middle and end game. So for example, Christina can use the Rose Thorn at base. So even at level E lances, she can wield the Rose Thorn. But like if, if other characters have an S rank in lances like Jaka, they can wield the Rose Thorn too. Uh, so, is there a way to program it with this Lux Teleonis thing where any, the people who are not bloodline, while they still can wield it, the Regalia's ability is locked out? See, I've considered that too, but then that just defeats the point, doesn't it? Because the problem that it's we're trying to solve with... The problem that we're trying to solve with this is people with regalia are better than people without regalia. Yes. And if you have like super duper special units with a special bloodline, they get to wield the special super weapon with the special ability and all the stats. And then other people don't. Well, then they suck. And if other people can wield that weapon, but they don't get the benefits of the weapon, then they might as well just wield something else. So I don't think we'd want to. I do can that. understand that. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Ignore that. My. I'm gonna retract my question. That makes a lot of sense. Um, this is more nine, like nine if asks... you are like. Uh, if Christina can just use the Rose Thorn as a base recruit, does she essentially just stop being a trainee because she's immediately good? Yeah, she's just like super busted. We'll think about that. Like, I'm sure there's some way we can make that like not too entirely broken. Maybe there's a penalty applied, like if you're only E rank, D rank, C rank, or something like that. You know, like you're just not quite as strong. And then at B rank and A rank, you become strong enough like to fully wield it. Who knows? Like we can we can do something with that. But um, the, the, the entire thing that we want to do is make sure that people who are, like, really talented with their weapon can wield the regalia. Because it's, like, it's basically saying the weapon acknowledges you as a worthy wielder, mm -hmm. right? I think that makes sense. Moon so, wants to know about Jaka's two unique weapons. Uh, are they still going to be his? I have a follow-up. Is there uh, a reason why he's going to still get two weapons? Because I didn't like that that much. Yeah, I'm not going to really comment on that one too much. I will say that Jaka getting a regalia felt really dumb. I don't like that, so it probably won't be a regalia, but it can still be a PRF forged for him by someone. I would just wouldn't make it like a Lightbringer regalia. That feels it feels a little bit too much like, you know, the last airbender. All of a sudden, 1,500 airbenders come out, and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, Aang, we forged you this awesome orb of fire bending nullification that nullifies the firebender's magic. There you go. Now you can use this to easily defeat the fire lord. Like, I don't know. I don't like that. Xavier so. asks if we're going to get more than one Spear Garden person, because there is literally only one of those that's Yes, playable. Xavier, right. we are, but we're going to get to that later. Let's get to that later. Okay, so let's focus on uh, the, the general alterations next. So, Regalia will only deal 50% damage against people of their bloodline. This is to incentivize using descendants against their ancestors in the final battle. It also means Fred has a better chance against Alexander, Ariel against her father, and so on. The only time in the game... Like, the only time in the game when you're fighting someone and the two units are of the same house and you have, like, a regalia in one of their hands is when the enemy has the regalia and they're attacking you. So it's important that they deal less to you. Really good. Yeah, so in other words, it's when Alexander, you want to defeat Alexander, you send in Fred because Fred gets 50% uh, less damage dealt to him. You can think of this in terms of story as the regalia are hesitant to injure people of their house. Yeah. So. I think like, that works. Uh, it's the it's the it's the Galachad ar argument. Yes, I am. I am going to listen to what you're saying because you're in control of me, wielder versus king. But I am absolutely not going to give this my all because I am Perfect. morally against it. I like it. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so it'll be like that. Um, and there, here's the Luminous Staff, one use per map, auto recharge. I talked about that already. Most regalia will also have some sort of recharging mechanic. Let's put a pin in that. I, I said that here, but I might change that. It may not be like a recharging mechanic. Maybe it's something else, but it's an option. We could do some sort of recharging. Maybe regalia are just like really good at like regenerating charges if they kill strong units. Who knows? It could be something like that. I like that. I like I, when legendary weapons are unbreakable. I could yeah. be wrong, but I think I recall seeing a Fire Emblem game. And again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on this. Where if you did not use a specialty weapon, it regains some of its durability. Is that... Am I imagining that, or was that a real thing that happened at some point? In Three I Houses, don't... if you rest, uh, if you pick that's the rest it. option, the it regenerates, like, ten uses or something. Yeah, that's well, the that's option. pretty cool. So, like, yeah, so if maybe, like, if you d did not deploy the weapon in anyone's inventory it would regain some of its durability. Because you know, you could also do something too, like if someone from, specifically, if someone from that house is wielding the weapon, they can do like a sacrifice, give up some of their HP to re to regenerate a few charges, for example. You could think of it like they're giving their blood essence to strengthen the regalia again. I'm just yeah. saying, like, this is an option that we could pursue. It's something like that. There's, there's all sorts of different uh, things. It's either that or the mastery skill. Like in my last playthrough, I had Aisha with an axe mastery. So when she used axes, no durability was lost. Maybe that would be a trade-off of like, yes, everyone can use this regalia at S rank, but there is still one slight advantage to having a Bloodline user use it, which is it either doesn't lose uh, durability or it maybe like loses it at half the speed. I don't know how you do that. That would be such an odd thing to tie to a character. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm spitballing here because I also like invincible, non-breakable weapons, but they are overpowered as hell when you just focus all on those like, yeah. Bod never had something in his hand that wasn't the Dawn Caller in my playthroughs. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. Okay. So, new items will appear in game that use different type of resources to activate their effects, including chargeable items. We already talked about chargeable items, but to be more specific about this, you could imagine maybe mana being a system. That is something that exists in Lex Talionis. I don't know if we'll actually use a mana system. I, I want to avoid things that are, like, too divergent from vanilla Fire Emblem. I want to I want to use things that are in vanilla Fire Emblem, even if it's one of the more obscure games like Thracia. So maybe something like that, but we'll see. Like, you could have something where maybe, um, maybe like, a mage needs to use blood magic in order to cast their special spells. You could even do learnable spells, like in um, Sacred Echoes, which, by the way, fantastic game. I really love that ROM hack. You guys got to try Sacred I, I kind of like your idea of them using to activate like the ability of the thing. They have to spend HP. It's a risk versus reward system. Well, that's a, that was originally in Fire Emblem 2, which is what Sacred Echoes is based on. That's blood magic. Oh, God, I just praised Sacred Echoes. Kill me. <laughs> or not Sacred Echoes. Sorry, I just praised Echoes. Kill me. Oh, I love Echoes. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. So um, I already talked about weapons and staves don't break. They drop to zero like in Thracia. We know about that. So mm -hmm. armored units are going to get a big bonus of some sort, like in Fire Emblem Engage. So I haven't actually determined what this bonus will be. I really haven't. But in exchange for being weak to armor slaying weapons, armored units will have a big advantage similar to their break immunity in Engage. Uh, I've always felt like armored units are really underpowered, even though they're supposed to be like some of the strongest units that you can get. So this is also because I feel that Garum promoting to an armored class just makes him a bit crappier, and I want to rectify that. I noticed that. that, too. It actually just gives him a weakness, and it doesn't add anything. Although I do think uh, giving armored units normal movement speed in Andoron definitely made Isabel a lot more useful, because I probably would have... I probably would have just benched her without thinking about it. Okay, so now we go to story and lore updates. Yeah. So um, this is this is actually I barely even did anything with this. Yeah, I need to focus on this later, but uh, we you, need to uh, figure out the exact. Uh, no, no, I don't want to give people too many spoilers just yet. Oh, uh, people can't see on my. Thing. Oh, okay. I'm well, I guess I can I can scroll down. Yes, yeah. More. Isabel with only four move would have been pretty unusable in Thank the later you. maps, and that's why I'm very glad they gave her standard movement with the team. Yeah. So we need to figure out the exact dates major and minor story events happened in, determine the characters' exact ages, and fix the hundred or so tiny plot holes which I baked into the script. So when I was doing the script, I got constantly confused about the length of time before the story began when we had the Rebellion, 
how long the rebellion lasted, and what about the plague and how long the plague lasted? I got those mixed up so much. Mm -hmm. I also got character ages mixed up, and this resulted in lots of little minor plot holes that, to be honest, 99% of people don't care about, but I care about. So this is just like, this is for me. I want to make sure this is correct. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a heavy hey, reliance. Next point. Yep. Yep. There's a heavy reliance on FE4, Game of Thrones, and not just those two, but other broad outline story beats. So I'd like to adjust things to not be as reliant on them. Well, so. everyone kept telling me like when they're like, "Oh, uh, Bodyman is the Sigurd character." I had not even looked at FE4 at the time of playing Andron for the first time, so that went over my head. But everyone else was like, "I know what's coming." Like, cool, but. That kind of mm -hmm. takes away from the experience, does it not? It does, yeah. But I, I don't really mind that too much. Look, because here's the thing. Every story is based on another story. You could, like, yeah. you look at Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is an amalgamation of Tolkien and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, it's yeah. not what, that original, or, but what is the, original exe anymore? the execution of a story is more important. You can have Bottomon be like Sigurd and have, like, a Sigurd death and all that, and it can still be original. So the goal is not to just, like remove the influences it's just to make them less blatant or to execute in different ways subvert some things you know do things a little bit more differently and then um this one right here is a little bit wrong it says archibald removed and replaced with ferdinand i actually changed my mind on this we'll probably keep him because ferdinand is not going to be the windlands ancestor anymore we'll just keep archibald and ferdinand can be a lightbringer ancestor like i said he's going to be dawn and zacharias's older brother so we're just going to do that okay uh, now, there where you can interact with Ferdinand while you have Dawn or Zacharias in your party. Because I think it's just the house in Timaeus, is it not? Yeah, there's there's going to be, you'll see. There's 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 some few, there's a few things. We'll just... Game of Thrones is War of the Roses. It. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. True. Um, so this one you can also see is very undercooked. World building alterations. Some of these are just like, I put them here because I figured later on I'll have more to add. Um, so the Mistwalker Mountains should not be a long or should not be a long term base used for centuries by Scotty. Instead, they were once the home base of the Mistwalkers. The mountains were later taken over by Scotty after Bjarki slaughtered the Mistwalkers. By the way, Bjarki, he's gonna have a big glow up in New Dawn. I think you guys yeah. are gonna like it. Sweet. And he oh, already someone, someone said earlier, I forgot to mention this, but someone said earlier, as long as Bjarki keeps his final line in the final map, they're okay with anything you change. And I agree with that. What, fun, what best ending line, is that? line. It, It's something like, oh, I have to kill a god. It must be a Tuesday. Or something like that. Oh, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I remember that. Yeah, I wrote that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah I didn't that see in. that. I like that. Okay. Oh, it's so good. Now, this oh, is yeah, another... Oh, yeah, thick wife. Good question, Snaze. So this is another one. Story, narrative, gameplay, cohesion. This one's going to be very interesting. I think you guys, so specifically my co-hosts here, I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So all characters have plot armor. That is to say, all characters retreat. As long as you recruit someone, even if they die in battle, they will continue to appear in cutscenes and dialogue. The only way not to get their story arcs is not to recruit them. So every character will appear in every Gaiden. Goodbye 20 unit limits. Sweet. So they're going to appear as blue units in the Gaidens. Unless they've died, they'll be purple and you can't move them, but you can still move other units to talk to them. So when you're in guidance how, how does this work for iron man's they're retreated but they physically cannot fight anymore yeah like you're not you're not gonna be able to pick them on your roster or whatever but for story yeah, purposes they still yeah. exist for guidance they still exist so they're all um, soren titania theo etc yeah there's gonna okay. be a lot more cross character dialogue and guidance so long as the characters were recruited and this is the big one all support conversations are removed no more support conversations instead cross character dialogue will take place entirely within guidance Supports will simply activate to give stat bonuses and etc. So if you want to have characters talk to each other, they just talk to each other in the guidance. You move them up next to each other and talk. Or we're also thinking about adding, like, Anna into the guidance, and she's just kind of like, hey there, I'm Anna, and Bottomon's like, who the fuck are you? And she's like, I'm Anna, you can talk to me, and I'll pop up the menu for characters to talk to each other. Bottomon's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Whatever, anyway, I'll just do whatever. So she's kind of like a little wink and a nod, but she's there to facilitate, like, if you don't want to click Bjarki and see, like, who he talks to, and you don't want to click, uh, I almost said Rosalina, <laughs> uh, Christina, you could, you don't have to click Christina and see who she talks to. You can just talk to Anna, and she'll tell you who everyone talks to, so oh. then you can just activate the conversations that way. That's it's nice. The, uh, 
It's like the, the quick jump option in like a Danganronpa game where you don't want to do the walking around thing. Here's a menu option just to teleport to yeah. where you need to go and do that. It's yes, like that, but also I think I think Chris said uh, it's like Tellius. It's exactly like Tellius. So we're gonna have like star ratings for conversations. So maybe maybe oh, there'll be like God. A, there'll be like a I've thing been that says the like Tellius spaces for years Same. and a half. Yeah, so you'll be able to like you'll talk to Anna and then she'll pop up. It'll be like I don't know. It'll be like um, Bjarki X Barrett, and it'll say like three stars, and then there'll be like a tag that says lore or development or something like that you know like there'll be like a little tag there that tells you like what it is or maybe it'll you'll get like five stars item with like glowing or something like that you'd be like ooh, glowing item five stars i better do that conversation of all so, the character names you had to put an x between you had to pick the two that were related so people with their weird fan fiction the just x just means rejoice. they talk it doesn't mean that they fuck they're not they're not <laughs> they're cousins I'll like, you could have picked any other character in the game and it would have been good they're good friends fun. they're good friends guys come on they're cousins, don't worry about it. Give them the Sailor Moon argument. They're not lesbians. And she was a good friend. <laughs> um, I'll ask since it's oh, related. You... Retcon asks, will there be some dialogue changes if they've been retreated? Like mentioning injuries or something? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there will be some of that, for sure. So then we'll continue on. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, all support conversation removed. Chapter 32, Soul Requirement. Have Galahad recruited and Isabel promote... Jesus. Someone just slammed the door down, scared, scared the crap out of it. the hell what are they doing down there anyway he almost finished waiting his 15 turns he's coming for his revenge that's all it is apparently so this is the only requirement you got to have galahad recruited and isabel promoted in chapter 31 the other units will revive even if they died in the earlier story so you still have the full roster of eight so if you completed the alvaro plotline with natalie and jesse both they will appear in chapter 32 instead of coulter and thea because coulter and thea didn't really make sense if you S support Helga and Varg, Varg uses his immortality elixir to save her life, and thus she does not die after only five years. She becomes immortal and she can live forever. Ooh. If you S support Helga and Tendara, she gets another 100 years to live. If Don or Zacharias enter a house where Ferdinand is present, they will converse with him since they're, you know, siblings. Yay! Rourke wants to know if their support conversations on, like, the field are effectively being removed. Are you going to remove the limit of only five support conversations per character? No, um, but it is going to be a limit of six. You can get up to two A ranks, and S ranks are free, but you can only have one S rank per character. Uh, we'll talk about the guys. We have the support system coming up. We will we will be talking about the okay. support system. Oh, it's, it's literally, literally right there. It's yeah, literally it's the next right. one. But before okay. that, I want to I want to talk about chapter thirty two real quick. So you see the sole requirement Galahad, and then if you completed the Alvaro plotline, you get Natalie and Jesse instead of Coulter and Thea. But there's more to it than that, because. Um, Amelia is not actually required for it anymore. She doesn't actually have to appear as a villain. So she might not appear at all. You don't have to have her talk to Alvaro just to get chapter 32. So you can just meet Alvaro and then like try to escape him. And then if nothing happened with Natalie and nothing happened with Jaka, you just escape. But if Jaka turned to the dark side and he became a demon, then you fight him. Or if Amelia talked to Alvaro and joined his side, then you fight her. You see what I'm saying? Like it can play out a bunch of different ways now. A little bit more interesting a bad time to mention that I still have never seen chapter 32, isn't it? I, like, I have a pretty good idea of what happened <laughs> now, but I never got to see that chapter. Same. Shit, I just spoiled it for both of you. No, I don't care. Uh, I, I have a terrible memory. By the time I play it again, I won't remember. Oh, that's good. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me just, uh, hey, uh, Agent J, yeah, I need to borrow that real quick for a sec. Yeah, yeah. let me just, just mm, okay, cool. They've forgotten. We forgot what? Mm -hmm. Who's Agent okay. J? Now, here is the most exciting part of the stream, the overhauled support system. Now, just to be clear, this is a very long section. It, it, okay. it goes, I'm there's not, a lot of thought. That I'm not going to interrupt too much, so we can just, we yeah, can just okay, get through okay. it. Any questions you guys have, write them down in chat as we go, but I'm not going to address them until the end of this part. Yeah, you know what? Why don't you just let me read this and talk, and when we reach the end, we can go back and ask questions, yes. because I don't want to. I don't want to answer questions that get answered later. I agree. Okay, I've, I've got my notepad open. I'm writing people's names down as well, so you'll get credit for it and stuff. Don't don't worry about it. Just keep uh, asking, Rourke, and I'll, I'll get it. Real work did ask, will we be making this Google Doc public? No, because um, it's probably going to change later on, and I do want there to be fun surprises for you guys. This is just like a good initial release where you get the idea of what's going on. So anyway... The project will completely throw away the support system used in the original ROM hack in favor of a much more flexible, comprehensible, and easily digestible support system that retains the majority of the benefits, loses the downsides, and adds even more upsides. So these are the details. 
So no dialogue for supports anymore. When two characters converse, they will simply get a support rank immediately without any dialogue appearing in the same vein as FE10. They might they might be like, hey, Bjarki, how's your day going? Oh, it's going good. And then, you know, support game. You're like, nothing big. So no support boosts when supported characters are near each other. So no more like your affinity determines the, like the bonus that you get. So none of that. These boosts have never historically been communicated in-game and are only known to players who read wikis. So that's one thing I've never really liked about that. I agree. All characters can support all other characters up to six points worth. That's two A's, three B's, or six C's, and some combination of that. Some characters may have a free S rank support option. This is often, but not always, a romantic pairing for the endgame. It can also indicate a deep platonic friendship, brothers or sisters in arms, and so on. This does not count toward the six point cap and may have a unique dialogue for those characters. Characters may only have one S rank support at a time. So if Jaka can get S ranks with like a bunch of different women, he can only S rank one of them to get their final ending together. So as should be evident, this means no more writing three-person chains of dialogue. What will happen to all that dialogue? Won't this reduce the amount of character interactions? What about the loss of character bonuses when within three tiles of one another? Won't that make the pairings useless? Because I have heard these criticisms. So all characters are present on all Guidance once recruited. They appear as blue units. If a character dies, they become a Team 4 purple unit. Their support points disappear from their partners and can be reallocated as needed, but you can still see their Gaiden and story dialogue. They just won't be playable anymore. Now one thing that, um, that isn't mentioned here, um, when they die and their support points disappear, you still get any of the bonuses that you gain from them on the surviving units. So the That's whole, you know... That's what it is now. Yeah, so like, if you kill... Like you if you kill skills. Yeah, if you kill people, you know, just because you got their skills or whatever, that's totally a thing. I actually like that that's a thing that you can do in Anderon Saga, and this is kind of even being expanded upon more, as we'll see. I like that. So, since all playable units are blue, there's no more moving the main character around to chat with all the allied units one by one. Instead, you will have a huge variety of talk conversations to engage in during these guidance. Any character can talk to any other character in theory, but in practice, only the most interesting talks will be prioritized on a per guidance slash chapter basis. So we could have, you know, 50 characters talking to 50 other characters, 3,500 conversations. We're not going to do that, though. There will probably be like 30 conversations, 40 conversations for guidance, and we'll focus on all of the most absolutely interesting conversations at that point in the story. So... It'll be less than you'd get with a support system, but it'll be a lot more pointed mm -hmm. and focused on where you are in the story, which is going to make conversations a lot more relevant. So, for example, let's say you have a choice to have Theodore talk to Elonda on Chapter 6X. Uh, if you do so, that might unlock a talk on a later Gaiden, but if you don't do the talk event on 6X, then the later one won't show up. If some secret event is tied to saying their entire conversation storyline over multiple chapters, you won't get it. This is only relevant most of the time for story slash lore lovers, so this isn't like you're missing out on like huge gameplay stuff. Although, maybe you probably do want to read it anyway because you know I'm putting a lot of work into it. But that's up to you guys. If certain units have certain levels of supports, they can unlock secret dialogue slash events in guidance and main chapters. For example, if Theo and Samuel have an A support, Theo can obtain the Rose Thorn in Chapter 14. We already know about that. Here's another one in Vanilla Anderon. If Jaka and Bottomon have a C rank, they get the Hot Springs scene. Yes. So that's just like an yep. example of what we could do, and we're going to be doing more of that. So this also means that secret objectives, characters, endings, and other such things can be hidden behind support ranks. This is where the vast majority of this project's secret events are going to come from. No more RNG secret events. You'll have to work for them. Okay? I so prefer now, that. So now we're going to focus on the tangible we, gameplay focus We scroll it down a little benefits. bit more than that. My, oh, my like, capture is a little bit higher. Thank you. So let's focus on the tangible gameplay focus benefits this new system adds. So at C rank... Units can give other units stat bonuses based on each character's personality and story purpose. So, for example, Bjarki might give anyone who supports him plus 4 defense and plus 4 HP, while Barrett would give anyone else 2 speed, skill, and luck. You can think of this as replacing the nearby ally 3-tile buff from Vanilla. Instead of a tiny buff when units are nearby, supports give a permanent buff based on each character's personality. And that does, of course, mean that if you give someone 6C supports, they're going to get a lot of stats. So if you want to, like, like stat whore, you can do that. 
So that's but an you option. Get the skills or the items. That's that right. And obviously, okay. skills and items are probably better. So yeah, at B that's, rank, that's a good trade. So at B rank, units can give each other powerful items based on their personality, unit type, and so on. So Bjarki might give someone a heavy but powerful weapon of a usable type. Uh, maybe Zacharias would give out a magical weapon, like a magic axe to an axe user, or a sword to a sword user. So, you'll get special items if you get to B rank. Then at A rank, the benefits become a lot more personalized. You can get powerful skills, new promotion options, or side promotion options, uh, valuable gems, and so on. So maybe Zacharias can teach Slayer to anyone, unlike in Vanilla, when Zacharias only teaches Slayer to, I think, Bjarki? Uh, no, 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 um... It's uh, Emilia who teaches Bjarki Slayer, and Zacharias teaches someone else Slayer. I don't remember. But anyway, the point being, Zacharias has Slayer. Now he can teach anyone in your army Slayer because everyone can support with him. So you get a lot more personalization there. You can make anyone have Slayer if they get to A rank with him. And Emilia can grant her crit boost aura or whatever to anyone who gets an A support with her. Finally, there's going to be a newly designed menu in-game to show off what benefits characters give to their allies at each tier of supports. So using my mouse, I'm going to just visually demonstrate this. Imagine you've got like your list of characters that are scrolling down right here and their support partners. Then on the right side, there's like a little small window right here that says, you know, Bjarki gives this to her and then, you know, Emilia gives this to her. And then down here, you see like the permanent bonuses that you can accrue later on if you get to B in, or, uh, if you get to B in A rank. So it could be something like the, that. Uh, the Anderon guide kind of looks like right now when you yeah. Go to... yeah okay that's a good way to do it. Yeah, and the thing is too because this is Lex Talionis and not a ROM hack, we can very easily make new user interface things. It's super cool. I'm I'm not gonna like go into it super hardcore, but the um the window designer is very awesome. Like I'm I've excited. I've had a look at it and you can do some really cool stuff with it. So anyway. Uh, the problem is, doesn't this add a shitload of dialogue to the guidance? How will I find all these nebulous interactions? So, like I said before, I'll be adding a meta character like Anna to the guidance chapters, or a menu that will allow you to view and activate the, the conversations. So this option will allow you to see, like in FE910, a star rating. Uh, blah blah blah, five star conversation, blah blah blah. So we already talked about that. And if you don't give a damn, you can skip the guidance like before. I'm not going to be putting any special items inside the guidance, any recruitments. However, there may be secret endings and events that are unlocked through specific combinations of Gaiden talks. These are going to be extremely niche, and it will be up to the community to find them and their unlock conditions. Okay? Love that. So, story dialogue is going to get cut way down. I do, I personally enjoy long conversations. I like long-form content. I can sit through a 10-hour movie, but since I get to expand the story and stuff to my heart's content through in the guidance, I'm streamlining the main story. So you're going to have just a lot less dialogue in the main story. This was a major complaint a lot of people had. I've heard the complaints. I want to cut it down. So if we can cut the story dialogue by half, I'd even say that's not going far enough. I'd like to cut it down by like 60, 70 percent, like just really make it streamlined as much as possible. Um, the question, of course, is why go to all this effort? Why not just use the current system? So I have a lot of problems with the current system of supports and guidance. My biggest issue comes in the forced way characters have to interact. So characters in vanilla supports cannot talk about stories, current events. So for example, Helga's C rank convo could come when you first recruit her, or it could come all the way in chapter 29. That can make these dialogues feel very out of place. Mm -hmm. So imagine Thea going through an entire game of growth only to revert to a bratty, pixie dream girl maniac in chapter 29. It could and it does feel jarring when it happens. In fact, there was a really good explanation of this phenomenon. I believe it was um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. And I haven't played Three Houses, mind you, but someone said uh, Bernadetta. Um, there's like a time skip or something. Yes. But if you get like her C support conversations with some characters, she acts just the same way she did before the time skip, and it's, it's really true. jarring. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it makes no sense. Right, and that's an issue, by the way, with all. This is not like Andron specific with all support systems in all the Fire Emblem games. Mm -hmm. I think um, actually Awakening had the best support system because it was unlimited, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, my. So anyway, uh, I. I think I told you my favorite one, my favorite instance of that was there's a character in Three Houses that gives uh, a man her handkerchief, and he, like, in their C support or something, and then in the B support, he's like, yeah, I have that handkerchief that you gave me the other day, and I had done the time skip since then, so I'm like, you held on to that for five years, and now you're just casually like, yeah, by the way, that thing you he's gave me the other day. It, like, oh, my lady, 
I like the Thea uh, example you used in that one because you brought that up while I was streaming once because I was like, this seems weird. And you're like, that example pissed me off so much. It's real I weird. Thea, I think it was Thea and Lilinette or something like that. And you were like, I hate this support. Yeah. So supports are limited in the ROM to between like maybe eight or 10 characters. I haven't counted. So, but here's the question. What if you want Jaka to be able to support with other female characters than the ones presented? What if I want Varg to have more conversation options than merely the ones provided? We did actually run into this issue with Dawn where we could not fit all the exciting and interesting support options we wanted. Now she can have lots of dialogue with lots of characters and infinite support possibilities too. So this was a real issue. Like for example, with the Jaka example, like, surely there's other girls that Jaka might be interested in romancing. And we're going to be making him a bit of a stud in New Dawn. Like, he's... Him and Bottomon kind of replace each other a little bit. They kind of swap positions. It's actually Jaka who's the sex symbol. So he's going to be the one the ladies are swooning over. And Bottomon gets the standard romance because he's more of a PTSD war survivor. So he I gets guess, the romance with Elon. I and Anderon like that in Short Spears, eh? Yeah, well, let's just say this Short Spear is going to be his unlimited use PRF. But I digress. So anyway, um, being forced to write a three-chain series of events is super time-consuming, draining, and because of the lack of ability to reference story events, it leads to disjointed dialogues that only allow the characters to have bland talks about philosophy 101 or their love of rabbits and chocolates. So that's just something I don't like about most supports. Most of them are very boring. This isn't in Andoroth specifically. This is in all Fire Emblem supports. They're just... Most of them are boring. You've got a few, like, actual... Mm, mwah, you know, delicious golden ones, but the rest are crap. So then the final one is, let's be honest, would you rather Jaka have to split an interesting dialogue into three disjointed talks spread out over multiple chapters, or have one to five much more cohesive, impactful dialogues directly relating to that moment in the story? I think I'd take the latter any day. Absolutely. And, fi I agree. and finally, I can write as much or as little dialogue as I want for any given character. Some characters are just a lot more interesting to explore than others. Uh, eight supports with three levels each is 24 dialogues. That is a lot, and yet not much at all. What if I want to write 50 for Don, but only 10 for Zacharias? Now I have that flexibility. Okay, that's the support conversation. Now if people have questions, let's hear it. Uh, Jem Millis has actually just now asked, how often are guiding chapters going to be? Is it between every chapter, like FE9 and FE10 is? So, mm -hmm. Jem, I don't know if you played Andron Saga yet, but that pretty much answers your question. It's it, it's exactly how many there are in Andron Saga. We're actually going to add one more in the end game. In the um, it's going to be before the uh, uh, the attack on Holtmeyer. So we're going to add one more there because I think as that's they're... a good place to add one. That's a yeah, good because one. as they're heading up north. They're going to be passing by House Orion, also known as Ring, which is Haley and Kurt's place. So Haley and Kurt can be like, hey, why don't we stop by our place to rest before we get to Holtmeyer? So you're going to pause there for a little bit. Just sorry, I just had to drink some milk. I, but, um, story replacements and I'm bouncing with excitement right now. I know, I know. We're, get, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay. So we're going to talk about story recruitments, by the way. I'm sure this is where you guys are going to get... Oh, hold up. Did, uh, did Nihil have any questions from his chat? Oh, yeah. Did, did you? About the support stuff? Um, my chat's not asking about support stuff. They're asking things like, why is the short spear heavier than the regular spear? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it's, got a, it's got a fatter base, if you know what I mean. It's, oh, it's the girth. I, I can... Two-inch pounder. I can talk <laughs> about supports a little bit. Uh, I like this a lot more. Um... Man. For exactly the reasons that you stated, that a lot of the supports are just kind of like, oh, yeah, this exists because you had to have it. Um, I and like the idea of the limitations of the story not being influenced in it at all. I, that drives that yes. drives me nuts when you get generic conversations. Although you said one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about, and that's it's going to have um, on the map talks like in FE10. Those are some of the worst options I've ever seen. Like, do you know how many times I've gone to, uh, like, move the character beside someone else, clicked converse, and been like, shit, I didn't want to end my turn here. But now I'm locked Oh, no, in. no. So we're actually making a change there, too. So in Vanilla Andoron Saga, in Chapter 1, you get a lot of talks where, like, Bottom On can talk to Jaka or whatever yeah. on, like the, like, the first chapter. And what happens is you talk to Jaka, you get some experience, and then you get to use up the remaining, like, you get to attack or whatever. But if you press B, it's canceled. We're changing that. Now talks are totally free, and I mean completely free. You can walk up and talk to someone, but you don't get experience for it. 
you don't end your turn or anything. You can just cancel back. It's totally free. And this is the Fexla cool. system, the Fire Emblem XNA system that is used for Fire Emblem 7X by Bewood Yeti. Okay. okay. Now now I'm getting some I'm, questions. I, that's a fair trade, I think. Um, Ghost Rick asks, so you'll only be able to progress supports during limited Gaiden chapters? Seems very limiting. Uh, no, I think you can get supports on main chapters. Too. We'll have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I, like, I hope, I hope I've made it clear that we're thinking very carefully on this. The goal is to improve on the system as much as possible with no downsides. Yeah. But obviously you can build them up. Like, you're not just building them up during guidance. You're building up, um, supports on the main chapters too. As far as I understand, during battles, that's when you build up the number or like the, the letter support. And then... I, I, I didn't explain it well enough. So separately. You can... Yeah. You can build up and you can um, you can build up and you can activate supports on main chapters and guidance. It's not just guidance, it's both. So the idea being now guidance serve as like an extra chapter that counts. If you want to get someone to A rank, this is important because then you get characters that you get in the very final end of the game, like Galahad, or maybe not Galahad, he's like literally the last one, but uh, what's her name? Aubrey. Now that we might be able to find a way to squeeze in three chapters for you to get her to an A rank with two characters, like Mm -hmm. So okay, so I think what people's confusion is drawing from is I think they're still associating the conversations from the guidance with the supports as one thing. Yes. You can't have one without the other. But what you're describing is the supports that give you the skills, the items, or the stats mm -hmm. are separate from the conversations which are now more tied to the story and the time and place they're taking yeah. place. So okay. I don't like supports as a whole. There are I wrote four supports for Andron Saga. Um off the top of my head, I remember two of them involve Varg. It was like Varg and Helga, Varg and, uh, what was it, Darius, and then um, uh, Estelle and Albert, and then Boogie and Isabel. Those were the four that I wrote, all right? And I think those were good supports, but um, I'm not even making a criticism and saying, like, Mengs writes bad supports or the other people write bad supports. Generally, it is very hard to write a good support because there's so little to work with, and they can come at any point in the story. It's very hard to, like, actually write out a support that's interesting, that furthers the character growth. And also, keep in mind, if you do write a really good support, like a really fantastic support, most people are just going to miss it because it's optional. And you have to be using those specific units and keep them close to each other and activate the support option. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris, even when you were playing, you missed a ton of support. Oh, yeah. Just because, like, you forgot to, like, even move units together. You were like, oh, I'm going to get, I don't know, Theodore and Elanda up to A rank or whatever. And then you just didn't because, yeah. you know, you forgot to move them close to together and hit the button. Yeah. So that, to me, is a big flaw in the support system. Dude, even... man, I had to use, I, I went out of my way to get, like, specific supports because I'm like, I'm Iron Man in this shit. I need all the help I can get. Yeah. Related to that uh, exact thing, Morph Ball says, sounds like the new support system will be a nerf to dodge tanks since you won't have void boosts, question mark. No, no, because you can get stat boosts. You can get skills. You can get other stuff. It's not that big of a deal. Stats. You can still get, like... Like, look at Buggy, for example. He's, like, his luck is so high that he doesn't need any other stats. He dodged tanks just off that one thing. So pair him or pair someone else with someone who gives luck, and they be they become that same dodge tank. If nothing else, this new system will create more options for you to turn a character that you personally like into a dodge tank. So or in the base game, they probably wouldn't be able to do that. Genmil Haas in your, in your chat spiral. I'm getting yeah. the impression that you've never played Andron Saga, so you don't know this. Um, in Andron Saga, supports are just like, when you put a unit on the map with another unit, that adds to their support rank. That's it. There's no waiting on turns. There's no more like waiting like an FE6 and FE7. So in other words, let's say someone has a value of three to get to a C rank. They have to be on a chapter, on three different chapters with that other unit, and then they can activate the support. But it, you don't need to have them standing near it. Yeah. And they can still, in vanilla Andoran, like, you still have, like, the, I think it's two or maybe three tiles of support boosts between characters. We're obviously removing that because I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, that's how it works. Like, that's just how Andoran works. And we're going to keep that. So it's still going to be, like, the number of chapters that you're next to each other. Uh, okay. Roar just raised a really good question that's not related to supports, though, but the flag of shame that stops you from getting... Yeah, we're not going to have that. I'll just put a pin in that. We're not doing a flag of shame. We'll Good. do something different. Like, obviously, we don't want people grinding infinitely on every chapter. But you know, maybe if that, someone that, wants to grind, that's that's up to them. Are fine. I don't mind the death armies, but just having an arbitrary number that just said like, because like when 
it hits that mm -hmm. number and the death army shows up the the penalty should be now you have to fight these not you hit this number because they appear across the map so technically your penalty is on its way it's not actually it hit an arbitrary number now you're out of this I so i would like to i would like to direct everyone in the stream to take a look over here you can see bottom on's face in the corner um let me uh, bring that up chris maybe you want yep. maybe you want to flip over to bottom on so if you're worried about death armies well what if i told you that there's a special character his name is godfrey and godfrey could be the guy who hunts you down in between chapters and unlike other death squads he's basically unkillable and he's the guy who comes up sometimes and he he's the one who comes after you like on the river chapter I don't know what justification I'll have for him in the story yet. I haven't put a lot of thought into him. But this is the guy I'm thinking maybe is the specialized hunter-killer squad guy. Okay, so uh, maybe maybe we do something about that. There is... I know you haven't been watching my streams for Bells of Violin, but in the first two chapters, you're encouraged to get your ass moving because you're in a prison. And if you don't, then they send a very high-level guy who's promoted already with a Master Lance after you on those two chapters. It sounds like that's exactly what you're describing, and it is a very good incentive to not turtle up the entire map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and death squads are nothing new. Like, there's several Fire Emblem hacks and games that do it, so, you know, there's there's lots of plenty of fun ways that we can do it. But I, I want to move on now to the to the recruitment. Yeah, go, go do that. I had a thought, but I'm like, you know what? It's not that, it's not that important. Yeah, we're not even halfway done with this document yet, guys. All right, so sweet. We're, we're I'm, ex I'm excited about recruitments. Okay. Yeah, me too. So we're going to go over these one at a time. So the first new playable character is Femke. That's Jocka's little sister. Hey. She starts as a weak level one cleric, but she'll have some cool utility. And it doesn't say what it is, but I can tell you what it is. So here's the first thing. You have three opportunities to recruit Femke. The first one is um, after chapter two, that's when you fight off the uh, the brigands and stuff. Um, that's after that, you go down to the forest, the centaur forest. But along the way, Jocka is going to stop and have a Gaiden chapter instead of inside the forest, he'll have the Gaiden chapter in Holtmeyer, which is on the way there. And he, while he's in Holtmeyer, he can talk to his mother and his little sister can join. And then later on in the game, after the betrayal arc, uh, Jaka stops by Holtmeyer, and that's when his little sister can join him for the second time. And then the third time is in the end of the game when he comes back to Holtmeyer again. Um, there's a way that she can join you there, too. Uh, probably after Holtmeyer, after you rescue her, assuming Woo. you haven't recruited her. 29, level 1 cleric. Let's fucking go. No, no, no. She. Um, the, the idea is that throughout the story... So you know how we had that mechanic where you can send Natalie away and she comes back yeah. later, a badass mm -hmm. hero? It's like this. So I didn't it, think you were actually going to shoehorn us with a level 1 cleric on level 29. I was just being an ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the idea is that Jaka is paying to send her to cleric school. And you can either get her as, at level 1 as just like an extra little cleric. And she does have a cool utility we'll talk about. But if you send her away, she comes back not quite promoted, but like level 15 or something like that by the time you get to chapter 15 so you can promote her right then and there or you can wait until the to the end game she's like a mid-level bishop or something but i tell you what you'd be really stupid like you'd be an absolute imbecile not to immediately recruit her because you know what her special ability is well she has two of them she has activatable special abilities one of them is called uh do i have it anywhere oh, i want to make sure i get this right do, 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 do. let me just let me just check my discord real quick sure do, 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 do. It's fine. It's not like we're doing a live show in front of a bunch of people. I should. I should. I should have scrolled up. <laughs> we'll messing, edit this part out. It's fine. We'll edit and post. Yeah, we'll, we'll edit and post. No, no, no. I just gotta just control F M K. See where she is. Ba, 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 ba. I can entertain with stand up in the meantime. Ahmed walks into a bar. Ouch. Hey, 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 let me put this pole here. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Oh my god, where is it? I'm panicking. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. We're getting to the point of, like, if you've ever had an old relative tell you a story, but they keep stopping themselves to recorrect on okay. when it happened, and it's not even important at all. Okay, I got it. Okay, so she's going to have activatable abilities that she learns as she levels. One of them is called Jaka. So she has a brief but cute conversation with Jaka to cheer him up. He gains plus two to all stats for two turns. The conversation she has with him is different for every chapter. Like, you know, like, oh, Jaka, I'm feeling kind of scared today or something. Or, or you know, like, hey, Jaka, wow, this chapter or this this place that we're at is so cool. He's like, yeah, this is called uh, Angvik's Forest, blah, blah, blah. And then there's they have like a little conversation about it. 
So every single chapter, it gives you a little bit of world building, a little bit of uh, development between her and her brother. And then she has another one called Brother, Help Me. So Femke is scared. Jaka comforts her instead, boosting her dodge and defenses for two turns. The other oh, thing yeah. about Femke is when she promotes, she does not get any offensive magic at all. She's only staves and utility. Okay. Nothing else. Okay. But here is the reason why Femke is going to be one of the best characters to get. She has a special power. She can recruit almost anybody in the game that's ordinarily recruitable, even in some esoteric way. So, you see Isabel standing there. You have to go around Isabel and make sure she doesn't kill herself on your units because she's an idiot. And then you have to, like, beat the chapter and then she joins you. No! You just have Femke talk to her, and Femke is so cute. Isabel's like, aw, and she joins you. Or Ariel shows up, and Ariel will only be recruited by Victoria. Well, what if a cute little Femke walks up, and she's like, hey, and, Fem and Ariel's like, aw, she'll join you too. And this will work for anyone who can be normally recruited. You can't recruit enemies this way, but... That's really yeah. handy, because the amount of times I've lost out on Ariel solely because Victoria bit it right before that is too damn high. Yeah, and we could also use this um, for a few optional events, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, but basically... Mark wants Randall to be recruited by Femke. Yeah, I was thinking, like, she has cute no jutsu. That's what it is. It's talk no jutsu, it's cute no jutsu. That's I, I am curious, are you, are you dead set on those as the activation ability names? Because I, I, I'm not going to lie, people are going to meme the hell out of it in the worst way if that's it's, what they're called. It, it's so I was I literally care. about to type in my chat, like, jotting down the timestamp where a clock moans Jaka. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Jaka, give me your short spear. No, no, people, chat, stop. Guys, nice. quote <laughs> that. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so next we have Hubert the Gallant. He is also recruitable. Hubert is one of the coolest, most badass motherfuckers now. So he has a big glow up. Now he does not have a physical glow up. He's still a fat bastard. He doesn't need a physical he's, glow up. Yeah, he's already pretty awesome. How do you improve so, on perfection? While we have Hubert on screen, I'm gonna direct everyone's attention to the top left. And let's see, where is, do I have, do do? Oh, well this is actually, this is actually a two in one. Yeah, I guess we can show off this ability, right, or this right now. Uh, is this? Wait, that's the wrong video. Let me make sure I've got the right one. Aha, okay. So I'm going to pop this over here to the top left. Hey, hold uh, on, oops, I, gotta, oops I didn't mean to expand. Um, can you make it screen. bottom left? Bottom I don't have, left? I don't have the top left uh, check. Absolutely, brother. Right. I will do it down here. Thank you. Someone's sprited out little targets? Yeah, this is, um, this is Nameless has a, a a special like ROM that he uses for animations for testing the Mafia's targets. So I this love is going to. This is going to be Ferdinand versus Hubert. They have special animations that were never put in the main ROM. Okay? Okay. Wait, unfortunately, you, unfortunately, Hubert I don't think you... in this case is an ogre, is a cyclops. Yeah, you'll see. Unfortunately, there is one small problem. I don't think you guys can hear the sound, but it's okay. You don't need to. Sorry. So three, um, I think we two, can. Three, um, I got two, my one. In case, so. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hubert. Her. Yeah, Hubert doesn't have any attack frames or anything like that. He just has that one still frame. But that's what oh, Hubert's going to be looking like. Will you play oh, it one I more time? So much. Yeah, sure. Let's do it one more. <laughs> He's one fat bastard. <laughs> this ancestor. <laughs> that looks Bigger so good. than you on beggar on the food chain. Get in my belly. Oh, I like this. This looks like he's just got aura glowing out of him. It's okay. raw masculinity. It's all it is. Okay, so let's talk about... Okay, play, it, play it a third time. Let's do it. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, like, looking at uh, Ferdinand a little more now. He's yeah, vibrating yeah. a lot. Yeah, he has... This is actually an animation that I commissioned years and years and years ago. It's called the High Magus, and uh, this was edited by Nameless to give him his own special Ferdinand thing. So anyway, um, Hubert, let's pop back to him. That way we can get a good look at this boy. This this old fat chonker. We got to get down with the thickness over here. There we go. Okay, now we can see him. So Hubert has a special thing. You guys may remember that on chapter, I think it's 16 or the Gaiden, it's the Snow Gaiden. Um, we learn about Hubert and how he's actually a master of pyrokinetic warfare. 
Now, that was not just a throwaway line. That was actually a discarded plot thread that we didn't get to really follow up on, but we will in New Dawn. I don't remember that at all. You don't remember that at all? So so basically, um, Sigrid, she mentioned that she was talking about how she likes to read books, and then Jock is like, oh, what kind of book are you reading? And she's like, Intro to Pyrokinetic Engineering and Warfare, volume written by Sir Hubert of House Speargarden. Mm. You're right. No, I do remember that. I read that. Yep. And I'm like, no fucking way. Yep. It's absolutely not just a throwaway line. We uh, we had an intention, but we never got to follow up on it. We never got to make Hubert recruitable. But his thing is, he's actually a firearms specialist. So he is going to be your introduction to firearms. And this is going to become relevant later, but... The main thing is, Hubert comes with a fucking hand cannon. So he has, like, like a cannon he carries around that he can blast people with. That's going to be his thing in New Dawn. But he is going to have a way to make one, maybe two or three other characters have guns, too. And it's going to be, it's not going to be anything super advanced. It's going to be like a flintlock, you know, a musket, that sort of thing. So it's just going to be that. But that's his that's his shtick. He's really good. I may be out of spells, but I ain't out of shells. Yeah, but he he's got he's got explosive stuff too. So maybe we'll see like like primitive grenades or something like that. It could Bucky be fun. blast indeed. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. Cami asks, "Where is his tattoo?" Uh oh, probably not on the sprite. Yeah, we'll have to add. That I think in. it's on. I think it's on the shoulder that is facing away from the camera. So maybe if they don't just mirror image it, it will appear when he's being used. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. But anyway, that's Hubert's big thing. But he's going to be recruitable. You can recruit him through Lilinette and Femke, obviously. So yeah. that's that's going to be your thing. So then the next playable character is Sigmar. So you, yes! can get, you can get him if you field Barrett in the Jarl arena, either as a Jarl candidate or as a supporting member. Uh, maybe not the supporting member. We'll see. Uh, he will talk to her, and she can reject or accept him. Also, Elmer can talk to him, and Sigmar takes him on as a protege. So... You, uh, Sigmar must Maybe have been left alive on the boat map. Okay. Yeah, so Sigmar must have been left alive on the boat map so he could escape. What did you say? Well, that didn't stop him before. I've can't, I've sunk him on the battleship and he still shows up. That's funny. Yeah, that's because it's a random secret event. Probably wasn't uh, bug tested too well. So I, I know. But yeah, um, that's the thing. So he can appear inside the Jarl Arena. We'll be getting down the Jarl Arena right here, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, um, Elanda becomes the Goto of the Timaeut route. When she is still healthy and possesses a lot of power, she can also stay alive in Hornheim. Excuse me. If you have Zacharias in your party and he permanently breaks the Lumina Staff. Okay, so I did write it somewhere. Okay, I wasn't sure if I would be spoiling this or not, but I guess we are. So, in Hornheim, if she is attacked, there are two ways to save her. The first way is Helga activates her power and, like, attaches their life forces together. If she does this... Alanda is preserved, but she's still dying, and you'll get the original uh, vanilla ending. But if you have Zacharias in your party, you can choose to break the Lumina Staff and kill Zacharias permanently. And if you do that, that saves Alanda for good. Like, it totally revives her, and she's totally okay. So that's an option that you have. I want to point out how much this sounds like the old rumors. Like, back when video games had rumors and the internet hadn't spoiled it. Yes. Of, like, how to revive General Leo. Like, take the Phoenix Magicite and break it, and you get him. Like, that's what this sounds like, and I kind of love it. And Moose asks if we'll be giving Natalie her special centaur companion mount. Uh, Who knows? Maybe if they get to A rank. Who knows? For those who don't know, uh, Moose here, he made an animation for Natalie writing a centaur uh, writing oh. on yes. top of... Uh... I think I saw that on the Discord, didn't I? Wasn't it yeah, it was, she was writing like on Garam's back. It's pretty funny. So, well, who knows? Well, since we're talking about it, we may as well address the elephant in the room. Are you making Victoria a centaur? Uh, no. No, I'm not. Uh, it's not that I didn't think the idea is cool. The problem is that I really like her Claymore storyline, and it just doesn't work if she's a centaur. So, who I knows, though? Like I might add a, I might so add I a different female more. centaur maybe in one of the other routes. Like, I'm just saying. Although, I'm going to give you guys a very, very, very small spoiler. There may possibly, potentially be a female centaur in Rebellion Saga. So maybe you just look forward to that. Okay? As long as they got red hair, that's all I care about. I I don't know. I can't comment on that. So, okay. So, in the Hornheim route, when Elanda is weak and invalid, an invalid, so if if you preserve her life through, um, through, uh, uh, 
Helga's intervention. She's still alive, but she's weak and invalid. Dawn and Zacharias become your go-tos. But if either of them are dead, Ferdinand steps up instead. This is how you get Ferdinand in the final chapter as your go-to. If Alonda's been knocked out, if Dawn and Zacharias are both dead, Ferdinand steps up. That's how you get it. It's the only way. You know, okay, and now this, I don't know if anyone besides, well, I guess some maybe people are familiar with it. If you've ever played the first Advance Wars, the final mission, the characters you get to control on either side of your army are dependent on choices you made throughout the game that led to this. That's what this sounds like, and I very much like this. Yeah, the ending of the game is going to be very, very different depending on the choices that you've made. So that'll be fun. So here's oh, another fun one. Um, wait, yeah. wait, wait. You you said if Don and Zacharias uh, are both dead, but it's written if either of them are dead. Well, because you can only get one of them each route. Oh, okay. So it's just either I, one. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I believe mm, Goto uh, Lori is a is a character in one of the Fire Emblem games I haven't played. Who's probably like your he's like you use he's, he's like jet. he's like Athos in FF Seven. Yeah, he pops I, up I he's super that. powerful at the end game. He's like your crutch to oh, survive. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. He's yeah. your like oh, did you not train any good units for the end of this game? Here's how you win this guy. Yeah, here here's your survival. Here's like here's like the last straw that you can hold on to to survive. Okay, so now we get the fun one. So Crixus has a whole new storyline. He's a completely overhauled playable character. Uh, I do talk about him down here. We'll see if that changes. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about him here, though. I will do one thing. So we're going to flash back over to bottom on here. Okay. So bottom on down on the bottom left. I'll let you scroll down to him. So for those of you who don't know, this is Crixus. So this is what Crixus looks like in Vanilla Anderon Saga. He's just like a goofy character. He makes like a Discord joke. Like you, you have a one percent chance to get him in the prisons. He's just a meme. He's nothing. Yeah. It, you totally. If you forgot about him, that's fine. Likely but you've never encountered him. I still haven't. In I New Dawn, the only thing I'm going to say right now is that he's actually Half Dan's brother, his younger brother. So he's part of the Hornheim uh, okay. section. Is he Quarter Dan? He's Quarter Dan. Yeah, he's 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 like one tenth Dan. So this is what his portrait looks like. But we have another version of the portrait. Boom. Get the helmet oh, taken like off. Oh, I like that. He's sexy. Yeah, he looks good, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks good. I like that. Oh, wait, where's my sound clip for that? <laughs> there we go. I actually need to go for a few minutes. I will be right back. Can you guys just hold down the fort while I'm gone, take some viewer questions? Oh, yeah, okay. of course. Yeah, can you, can you tell some more stand-up there, Nihil? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, um, let's see here. Uh... What does Darius... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I that. like how he said, can you guys field questions? It's like, we don't know any more than you do. No, we don't. And I don't even have, like, a link to this, uh, to this article. No, I can, I can read what's on screen, and that's about it. Um, all right, all right, here, let's go with this then. What do you guys think of the, uh, improvements to the house names? And I'm gonna say improvements because I think overall they're pretty good. I'm just gonna put this on my screen for right Oh, now. you and I feel very differently okay. about that. I don't like it. Uh, there's a couple I like, there's a couple I don't. I don't have a problem with Lightbringer, per se, so Borealis just feels like... I, I can hat. I can show that. Uh, Dark, Home, I, Dark Home, I was indifferent to, so Umbra's pretty... Okay. Henchman 105 Recruitable when? Dude, like... Look at the thing. It's it's literally... Uh, where is it? Right here. New playable character, Minion 105. So he's actually in the list. I'm pulling up uh, the names for my chat. I don't. I don't like uh, the the name changes at all. I think Orion is far better than Ring because Ring is a, apparently a reference to FE4, but it has nothing to do with archery at all. Uh, a Ashburn. I kind of thought Ashburn was conflicting with Flame Guard because they both had burn fire affinities. That said, I don't know if I'm partial to Tauros. I. I would have called it something else, but I can't tell you what it would have been. I just off the top of my head. Um, Saffron, I'm literally just thinking Pokemon right now. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, and once again, Gale and Windlance were hat on a hat. I would have taken either. I am curious about these other ones, though. He's got, like, Magic Commoner and Physical Commoner with affinities, and I don't quite know why that would come up. Um, Just for people that join that aren't part of the houses, I guess. I, I guess, yeah. I do like the symbol for Stixie. I think that looks really nice, like a little skull. I agree with Morph Ball in my chat is saying these names sound more like affinities than houses. I agree. Yeah. Although, I mean, then, they, then you have the question of what the fuck affinity is an arrow? I also, it's that, like, 
you know, it's hard to imagine somebody like Alvaro, you know, that's or his mom, I forget what her name is. Um, uh, Sandra. Yeah, it's hard to imagine somebody really proud like her. You know, I can see her being like House Flame God or House Ashburn. It's really hard to see her being like, oh yeah, House Ember. Like, I yeah. don't know. Honestly, I think I would have probably taken the term Ashburn and made that their house name instead. Over Flame Guard. Because Ash and Burn are two words that are associated with the element of fire, very, very commonly. So it, it does kind of work over Ember. I mean, again, when, like with the Saffron thing, my brain goes right to Pokemon, and I'm like, you picked the weakest fire attack. Yeah, somebody in my chat much earlier said, Ember sounds too cute. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I would, I would agree. I would called it House Fire Spin, and I don't even use that attack. Uh, common Man Regalia might exist, like the Legends in FE7. That's fair. Neo, yeah, I, I know that Ring is a reference to FE4. That's what uh, Clock said earlier. My problem is, is that it has nothing to do with anyone that's in this house. It is solely a reference to something that's not in this game. It's a, it's a reference to something else. At least Orion... Archery name, constellation, has something, it, at least it's tangentially affiliated with bows and arrows, you know what I mean? And everyone that comes from House Ring is an accomplished archer. So it makes more sense. I'm having trouble remembering what house got become House Saffron. Which house was that supposed to be? I, I don't even remember. Is that, is that Rose? No, no Rose, Rose is, is still Rose. Like... I think I think it's Spear Garden, and I am baffled as to how yeah spear garden is saffron i don't get the the thing at all like house rose is also weird but they've always been about beauty at least it's exemplified by lilinet and the milf and the milf i can't remember um in my chat i just started right, that's her name i just started a poll oh uh do you like the changes to house names um so people are, are weighing in Let's see. I, I feel like we're going to get an overwhelmingly negative response to that. We're at 18 votes in, and we're at 61% now. Yeah. I'm very ambivalent to the changes. A lot of people are going to be like, it's not a big enough thing to get up in arms about. But then my argument now becomes, if it's not a big deal in the first place, why change what isn't broken? Oh, you sound... In, in my opinion, of all of these names... You sound like me. <laughs> yeah. Like, if... If you, if you need to change any of these, I would make the argument that Ring and Ashburn are the only two that needed a change. And also, yes, Tauros is the third thing on this list that reminds me of Pokemon, which is too many. Too many things in one list. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, Kornheim being like the diamond, I guess it's supposed to be this is the ice representative as the symbol? I guess. I will wonder, like, maybe they should... I think there's a symbol missing off this list, because you've got, like, commoners, you've got the other kingdoms. You know what's missing? The demons. Do they need... Unless they're all going to be Umbra, the demons don't have a symbol on this list. I suppose. Do they need one? Maybe? I mean, they obviously, when you go to their stat screen, they're probably going to have a symbol of some kind there. Uh, Ashburn, I would make something horse-related to play into the center. Yeah, House of Equestria, I don't know. Equestria? <laughs> We're getting... I think that's a My Little Pony thing. I actually, I think Equestria is... I'm back, and why are you guys talking about My Little Pony? What oh, did I miss? We're talking about the house change names and oh. how some people are not a fan of them. Yeah, I, yeah, I ran no, a poll... I in my chat, and we're at 29 votes in, and we've got 69%. Uh, nice. Oh, 30 votes in now. Um, was that <laughs> yeah, you? That, that 30th one was me. <laughs> yeah. We got 67%. No, but I, total, I, I completely understand if people don't like the new names, and it's fine. Like, there's just going to be some things about this that you don't like. My thing is, I am very much a unified world builder, and I want things to feel cohesive, and the, the original names did not feel cohesive to me. It feels weird when you have a house... That's named Steel right next to Spear Garden. I just, I don't like it. And Spear Garden is also a really long name. And this doesn't seem like a big deal. But when you're writing dialogue and you're trying to like fit dialogue within certain lines and mm -hmm. you have like formatting things you're trying to do. And one of the words that you need to write constantly is extremely long. It gets really jarring to try and fit it in there. Like there's times when the words Spear Garden or Lightbringer just absolutely broke. 
like like the formatting of a line. I just had to give up at some point. Just like okay, I'll just rewrite it five times until I finally have like an alternative that works. I think it so, makes like, sense. On that exact note, I can point out. I can actually isolate an exact thing for this. I have to grab it real quick because I had a clip that popped up not too long ago while playing a different ROM hack where I addressed this exact thing. Uh, Did they have some some character or something with a really long name and it just like led to really weird formatting? Yeah, I'm just going to post it in the chat there. Because uh, you, you were the one who actually clipped it, Claw. Okay, I can't. It was, uh, no, it was during okay. Vision Quest where someone like was not using formatting in their lines at all and you might not think it's a big deal until you're actually reading the text. And you're yeah. like, two words on this line, all this space, and then two more words on this line, all this space. It's like, and that's usually, that, that's not an issue for me because I don't run into that. What I do run into is when, like, the word Lightbringer is in something. And Lightbringer is a very long word. It's two words put together, Light and Bringer. But they're mashed together, and together they are extremely long. It's not like, go fast. Like, imagine if a house was named Go Fast. That's only six characters. That's not bad. But when it's I like love 14... That house. It's, it's, it's Land of Sonic. <laughs> Uh, it's pronounced <laughs> Gofist. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they have a, a hedgehog for uh, their house symbol. It's it's really you wouldn't get it. Your kids will understand it someday. So um, so Krev Krevmix says Orion and Tauros feel so out of place here. Orion is the one that makes the most sense out of everything on this. Tauros is weird. That I defend. Yeah, uh, Tauros is is a little weird. But here's the reason for Tauros. So the first reason is in in, in Andron Saga, Mangs wanted it to be that. Um, House Ashburn originally was descended from a centaur, and this is a big secret of some sort. Like, nobody mentions it at all until the end game, where you find out, oh my god, Ash, he's a centaur, and he's the founder of House Ashburn. And, um, I think that's kind of silly. Like, <laughs> you don't need to make it a big secret. Like, I get, I get what he was going for, but I just don't like it as a secret. But by calling it House Tauros, Tor, as in centaur, Mm -hmm. I'm directly linking them to the centaurs. The centaurs are going to become a much more prominent link to Anderon through this house. In fact, if you look on, I made a world map, which I might show off later on in the stream, but um, the centaurs are located very close to uh, House Tauros's new location. It's right next to a bunch of forests with a bunch of different centaur camps. So it's very clear that they're together if you look at it geographically. Mm -hmm. So Tauros centaurs that's the general idea the other issue that i had with house ashburn as a name specifically so we had house flame guard and we had house ashburn why do we have I two said, like i said that while you were gone yeah why do we have two fire related houses and then you um, also have the dragons who are fire related ashburn to fire. me was it was more representative of them burning down towns that's like the image i got from it more than like the fire i got like the smoldering town image yeah, that's um, true. I, I understand I, that. To, to be in Manx's corner a little bit, I like the idea of them secretly being related to centaurs because it does, as Moose pointed out in my chat, um, it does imply some odd things happening. Uh, you know what's really unfortunate, with... too, is because House Ashburn is related to centaurs, if you wanted to have a playable female centaur, your actual best option is probably like Ariel. Right? Like, everyone goes for Victoria being the yeah. playable center, but Ariel makes more sense, right? It does, I'm but not... they go for Victoria because her sprite with, with, the, with the red hair already yep. looks very similar to mm -hmm. the female centaur sprites. That's totally understandable. I think if I were going to do anyone and make them... Do anyone. If I were going to make anyone um, a centaur, it would be Ariel, and I'm still not going to make her one. Um, there are going to be changes to Ariel, though. We can talk. We can talk about that later. But I'm actually more... Like, when you guys are talking about like the centaur thing being secret or not, all I'm thinking is... is what self-respecting warrior centaur at some point in history went, you know what I want? A whole fucking castle to live in. Like, <laughs> no, it's more, force, man. it's more like the light bringers came. The centaurs were one of the reigning powers on the continent. So they had to be appeased by giving a house. And then you could make extrapolations from there over the, over the centuries. The reason that the other reason that making them a secret kind of bothers me, because it implies that at some point one of the centaurs was so ashamed or something that he was like, no, we're going to give up our name or something like that. We're not going to let people know that we were originally centaurs. Or they were overthrown by humans, I guess. And then the humans wanted to like whitewash history and remove the centaurs. I don't know. It feels it just feels kind of weird. I just so, figured if you were going to rename House Ashburn to anything, it should be what they're most well known for, which would be House One Range. Because nobody knows how to throw a fucking axe in that entire kingdom. Ah, yes. The glorious houses. House Rose. House Steel. House Melee only. 
It's true, at least. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move on from this now. So, where were we last? We were at Crick's. Uh, no, we were. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next playable characters. So Jenny and Lester, they're gonna be playable. And also, this one's actually wrong. Uh, this one says new playable character Minion One Hundred Five. I haven't gotten to fix this yet. This is actually Rod's daughter Penny now. So Rod oh, has a daughter named. Maybe was throwing a fit while you were gone. He's like, it's Henchman One Hundred Five. God damn it! <laughs> there, I'll, I'll make sure that's that's saved in the document now. But the reason that these two are together is because in order to get Penny and Rod, you have to not get Jenny and Lester and vice versa. These are exclusive characters and there's going to be a lot of exclusive characters in my remake. You're going to make choices that will lead to you getting some characters and not getting others. And that's just the way it is. Like even in the route that's split, fine. you're going to get fine. unique characters for each route. So yeah, it's not just Don and Zacharias anymore. So that that's fine. That's replay value. There are other unique characters besides Don and Zacharias. Like, for example, you've got uh, Miriam and you've got Ash. Those are two, they're sisters. I, and it's actually kind that. of unfortunate because they're sisters and yet you, you can't recruit them both and you can't have them both talk to each other. And that kind of sucks. It also sucks because Miriam's just boring and doesn't do anything and Ash gets a meteor. Like, it's really unbalanced. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like Miriam more just because she's such a sarcastic old hag. You know what I mean? But... Uh, while we're on the topic of Jenny and Lester, I wanted to show off the new portraits for Jenny, Lester, Penny, and Rod. Are you guys interested in seeing this? Is Chad interested in seeing these new portraits? Uh, yeah. You guys, do you guys want to see Clock's Rod? <laughs> yeah, you want to see my Rod, guys? You want you want to see it? No, I don't know. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing Chat react too fast. I know that there's a time delay. I'm just gonna pretend like Chat doesn't actually want to see it. That's unfortunate. I was thinking about showing Chat all these awesome new portraits. Here, hold but... on, hold on, hold on. I'll speak for Chat for you. There you go. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Chat sure looks hype. Okay. Well, I guess we're yep. going to show them off. Look at all that hype. Okay. So we're going to start off by looking at their old portraits. So Jenny, of course, is uh, Spire, or I mean, uh, Nihil. Have you already switched to the portrait view? Yep. Okay. So this is, of course, Jenny. She's the kind of dead eyed girl that runs the tavern. She's kind of ghoulish. She talks about like performing sacrifices and stuff. We're very much going to keep that part of her personality because I find her to be a very interesting character. She's just a bit undercooked. Now, it's when I necromancer, I'm calling it now. So, when I write characters, I have a specific thing that I do. And once I tell you what it is, you're going to see it all the time. You're never going to unsee it. And the way it works is like this. Every character that I write has a shtick. When you first get them, they have a shtick. And the shtick can be anything. Like, Natalie is like, you know, Natalie Winters, greatest swordswoman, who's that, my turtle, or whatever. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I kind of get her. And the idea is, you get the shtick, and you either like the shtick or you don't. But later on, I start asking questions to myself. I say, okay, so they've got this shtick. Why do they have this shtick? What caused them to have this shtick? You know, why do they act the way that they do? And that eventually opens them up to other developments. Why does Natalie act so weird? Why does Jesse act so weird? Could they be related? Oh, they are. What made them both so weird? Could it be that they were tortured? Could it be blah, blah, blah? And then eventually you get to Alvaro. Now, the problem with Jenny is that in the original game, Jenny's just an NPC. She has her shtick. And then, you know, you just kind of never see her again, except for like one or two like little minor cutscenes. Yeah. But if we're going to make her playable, her shtick needs to go further. So I haven't actually addressed this at all, even in my document, and I haven't thought about it yet, but I will over time. The question is, what makes her the way she is? And maybe over time we'll change that. So here is her current portrait. You can see it right here on my screen. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see the new portrait. This was made by Tack. Boom. Well, I like it. adding her to the waifu list, got a bang. Yep. Yep. You can see her eyes are a little bit more dead. That's intentional because remember, she's supposed to be a very dead eyed, sarcastic character. She's just not impressed by anything at all. She's just very blank eyed. So that's that's just part of like her kit. She also just generally looks like a lot cuter. She's more original too. She's not just like a basic splice. So that's always I'm nice. a sucker for freckles. What can I say? Yeah, and I, she has freckles in her base design. I just somehow think that the freckles that Tack added were a lot cuter. Uh, yes. Nair. Nair is the Spriter for The Last Promise. Uh, he's the guy who made uh, Kellick. You may remember him. Um, he actually is one of the team members for New Dawn. And he went over and he cleaned up her portrait right before uh, we did this stream, like like an hour or two before the stream. So oh, wow. before this, she looked a little bit worse. And now she looks a lot better. So this is great. Really fantastic work on his end. Uh, him and Tack are a great combo because Tack is really good at like capturing the um, the feel of characters, but sometimes the details aren't quite there. And then Nair cleans up. Can you a button for me? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, this is a cool thing. So let me actually scroll back up to um, Crixus real quick. I didn't get to do this because I forgot. So here's Crixus. He goes, talk, talk, talk. Oh, cool. He smiles. Got a little bit of a smile there. Barely. There's little blink frames. I, I so just cool. wanted to see, see I wanted to see Jenny smile because I want to see if it's as creepy and dead-eyed as I'm imagining it's going to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll go back down to Jenny now. So here's Jenny. She's talking. Hey, guys. Blah, 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 blah. And then she's smiling. She's not smiling. She's smiling. She's not smiling. And here's her smile. I actually think her smile is pretty cute. It's cute. It's not It's not as creepy as I was expecting. This is, this is what Jenny says when you tell her that eating corpses is not okay. She's like, oh, my God, brother. Seriously? This guy? <laughs> this motherfucker right here. Okay, so we've got so we've got uh, Jenny, right? Her thing is that she's into MLMs. She like falls for scams very easily. Funny character. Now we've got Lester. Lester is her husband. Uh, let's go he's also drink. unlikely, just as a heads up. Yeah, he's what? <laughs> it's a really old game called Lester the Unlikely. I didn't um, think anyone um, was gonna get that. Oh my god, dude, <laughs> dated yourself there. Okay, so this is Lester. Lester's shtick is that he's uh, totally blank-eyed. He is unfazed by everything. Um, and what's really funny, so. In the prison chapter, you may remember that you can see Lester in a cell and he talks about and he says, Oh yeah, my wife, yeah, she beat two guys to death with a frying pan. Just kept just kept smashing their faces in. She never smiled once. That's when I knew I truly loved her. Or something like that. Like he's just very impressed by what a absolute monster his wife is. So he's totally dead eyed. You know, here's Lester. He just he just kinda of talks a little bit. Um, he's a good character. I really like his design. Of course he's very basic, he's just a splice. Now let's take a look at New Lester. Three, two, one, boom. Here's New Lester. So he Lester... Looks like the, he looks like the, the gym leader from the newer Pokemon games, the one that hates his life. Yes, he does. From like, Scarlet and Violet. Crazy? He looks exactly like that guy. He does so a this little bit. Guy, I think this one actually... They kind of, So before this, he actually was fat. Like, we had a version of him just before stream that was fat. Then Nair came in and cleaned him up, made him more gaunt. We're probably actually, we can consider this a work in progress, right? We may adjust Larry, him some more. yeah, that guy. Yeah, and this guy, he, he kind of looks like a Giga Chad almost to me. Like, is it just me, or does he kind of have the Giga Chad look with, like, the cheekbones and everything? It's no, just you. not at all. <laughs> it's just you. This looks, like, this looks like what I could become if I just continued to spiral into depression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he great. I love him. Like Moon right here. He looks put together, but not. Oh, Ghost Trick says he looks like he teaches ungrateful school children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's fucking Larry for Pokemon. That's great, and that's that's totally fine. So his thing is that he's going to be a veteran of the rebellion. He's like a, just an old <laughs> killer. Like he was a monster during the rebellion. He's totally dead eyed inside, and we're probably gonna do something interesting with that. So which he's I the work... real Ashburn Butcher, but never got the credit for it. Yeah, and here's the fun thing too. In That's the prison, funny. in Vanilla Andoron, when um, when you see him in the prison, if you actually check his stats, he has really yeah. high stats. Like I he has ridiculous that. stats. I've talked were... about this. I actually, I, I like, I love that you brought that up because I've talked about this on stream, and I'm like, what did Jenny do to this guy? Well, here's the thing. There's there's two high. reasons we did that. The first reason is if he died in the prison. I already wrote him to be in a later cutscene, so it'd be kind of weird, because remember, he's in the cutscene with his wife where she's, like, yelling yeah. at Morty. Yeah. So it'd be weird if he died and then he's there. So then the other reason is, because he has such strong stats, you can make some implications. Like, this guy is totally unfazed by killing and death. He must have had an interesting backstory to get that way. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be we're gonna be exploring that backstory in New Dawn. That I can promise you. Whose okay. hair is that? Uh, I don't know. This is... Uh, I, I think it's a place where I know that hair from. I think it's customized hair. Um, it's probably spliced from something, and then it was cleaned up by Nair. So it was... So um, Tack, he uses splices, but he uses very heavy splicing. So it's not like three little pieces put together. It's like 15 pieces all put together. No, no, together. he does a very good job. I'm just like, I swear to God, I recognize that from something. Yeah. So, but my mod just popped it, popping in to say he looks like a serial killer. <laughs> So I want I wanted also to talk about um, so we've got Jenny and Lester, then we've got Penny, and then we've got Rod. Now I'm pretty sure I showed both of you Rod already, didn't I? Show you both Rod? Yes. You showed me your Rod. Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad you saw my Rod. But for chat, this is going to be the first time that you get to see Rod. So this is old Rod. You guys may remember him. He's the chapter one boss, very memorable. Very Rod French. has Rod has a problem in Vanilla Andron. And the problem is this. When we first started writing Rod, he was comic relief in chapter one. He was just flamboyant. Ho ho. And he, he was like, have his yeah, revenge. you'll never defeat me. I'm Rod the Rambunctious. And that's fine. 
But the problem is, then we made him recruitable later, and he started like becoming way deeper, but he felt like a totally different character. So I didn't like this, and I wanted to unify him in New Dawn to be just one character. Mm -hmm. And that one character is his later personality, where he's much more serious, he's not comic relief anymore, and he's not just more serious and not comic relief. He actually has a big new backstory, which I will get to after I show off all the portraits and everything. But I think you guys are going to like what we've done with him. Like, Rod is going to become a new fan favorite, I'm pretty sure, if he wasn't already. I don't want to be rambunctious, just for the record. I'm standing he is by. actually, he is Rod the Rebellious now, unfortunately. I'm sorry, chat. That's just, that's just the way it has to be. So this is Rod. And this is when you recruit him later. He has an eye patch. He's got some more flamboyant hair. He's really I let himself know. dress that, by the way. I like that. Yeah, yeah, no, he just, he just, you know, his eye got Yeah, I looked up. for it. I'm like, did we do that? Like, nobody says why he has an eye patch. I think, it would, you know, it could actually be pretty cool because um, his new his new sprite does have a punished eye patch too. So here's what he looks like. So here's his base. Now we're going to show you the new portrait. Here's his base and here's the new portrait. Boom. So this is what Rod looks like now. And I've already shown off Rod on the Discord, so I'm sure a lot of people have already seen him before. Is his head too big? He has like, a much slightly? He has a bigger head and a body. Um, mm -hmm. This is not unique. Some of the characters are different proportionally to how they were before. Like, you can even see, like, this square box that goes around him is not able to contain his full power now. So, yeah, but that's not the only one. Like, um, you can look at old Lester versus new Lester, a little bit different. You look at yeah. old Jenny versus new Jenny. Old Jenny was much bigger. Now she's a bit smaller. That's just, you know, some of the sprites get changed like that. Yeah. So this is this is new Rod. He is just, like, a super-duper Giga Jet. He is French. And he hates nobility. The question you might ask is, why does he hate nobility? Well, that's because the nobles killed his wife, Penny, and left him a single father, which we'll get to, we'll get to his daughter in just a sec. But this is Rod, and this is punished Rod. This is Rod when you get him later. Still got the eye patch, still got the flamboyant hair. I dig Pretty it. cool, right? Now we're going to take a look at Rod's daughter. This is a brand new character. This is the first brand new character that I am introducing. Uh, we've never seen her before. I don't... Actually, no, I did show her on the Discord. So here she is, Penny. Penny replaces Henchman 105. So she is just like Rod's actual daughter. She's an archer who appears on Chapter 1. Uh, in order to recruit her, you have to spare both her and her father, and then they'll join you later. If you do this, you will not get um, uh, Lester and Jenny. So oh, the that's chat's the freaking out. Chat's freaking out. No more Henchman 105. I know, I know. I liked Henchman 105. Maybe we'll bring him back anyway. You know, just like a just like a cameo or something. He just won't be like people a main are gonna player. pull a Thea on her, apparently. She's pretty great. I love I love the ideas that we have for Renee. So this is Renee's neutral, and this is her mad face. Okay, you keep Ooh. calling her Penny or Renee. Are you gonna? I'm sorry, gonna it's someone? Renee. I get confused because I'm um, Penny is Rod's wife, so I gotta well, get them mixed up. On the, your document. yeah, the document. Oop. Like, <laughs> I got, like people are like so confused right now. Including I'm sorry, me. guys. I, I'm amateur streamer. I just screw up all the time. Okay. Man, you so change this, is, this, this is... man's daughter to his wife and then back. Like, it's, it's traumatizing. No wonder he's got an eye patch. Yeah, I'm also going to show off his blink frames, his talk frames a little bit. Obviously, only one of his eyes blinks here for no, some crazy he's reason. Print, is he going to come with a, uh, a, a horse slayer? And, he like, said... a hunting bow for her? Oh yeah, they might. Uh, we'll, well, I'm not gonna you focus gotta, you too gotta, much on. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta inject a little pH into your into your game. Oh yeah. By the way, I really like Mad Renee and her smile. She's got like that that kind of wicked look to her. Like she's gonna, she's a sadist. She is going to she enjoy like, cutting you she up. Looks like Shannon. Does it like a little make bit. her angry? Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. That's Shannon. That's female yeah. Shannon. That's she's awesome. not gonna go out and be racist. That's all. That's all she's gonna do. Uh, Jock is gonna get along well with her. Okay, so here is Rod's new backstory. I don't think it's in this document yet because it's fairly new. So Rod's new backstory is he was formerly a member of House Ashburn slash Tauros. So he was originally one of them. He fought during the rebellion and he was backstabbed by his house. So this is Ariel's house. Uh, he was backstabbed by them. They killed his wife. He was going to. He was planning to form a splinter house, kind of like how Claymore is a splinter of ember. Mm -hmm. um, he was going to form his own splinter house off Tauros and make it something else. But he was betrayed. Most of his people were killed, and he was sent to flee with his daughter. So Penny is dead. Renee is all that's left, and Rod and her are together. Like they're taking over the slums of Malthrak. And the reason this is important is because of another new character that we're going to introduce who who Rod correctly identifies as a noble and wants to kill along with Estelle. 
Estelle and this new character appear. So that's going to be fun. I have a question. Mm -hmm. They're part. Of, they're part of the former House Ashburn, now Tauros, right? Mm -hmm. How do you have an archer that only uses one range weapons? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Yeah, so she's just like, that's probably why they wanted to splinter off. They were like, really? Your house doesn't allow us to use arrows. That's fucking stupid. We're going to make a new house called Centaur Arrows, idiots. With blackjack <laughs> and hookers. Now, someone earlier asked about um, a new Spear Garden user. And here it is right here, baby. Adelina slash Alexander's sister. She's going to be a, a new wielder for the Gladiolus if you recruit her with Fred. So you have a new way to get, um, and this character, of course, can be recruited with uh, Femke, too. So, mm -hmm. two ways to recruit her. So, Adelina. I'm going to scroll down and just find Adelina here real quick. Actually, so this... real quick, real quick, real quick. You said Femke can recruit anybody who's already recruitable, right? Yep. Does she have to pay Audrey? Oh. Uh, I don't know. We'll think about that. We'll think about that. <laughs> now, there, obviously, there's going to be some edge cases, because this is a very big, complex game, but... Uh, anyway, this is what Adelina looked like in the ROM. Adelina does appear in Chapter 29, and she's kind of a... Um, she's just nothing. I thought, I thought she was part of House, uh, House she was. Rose this she entire was part time. Of, she was part of House Rose, but originally okay. we were thinking of making a character who would be recruitable on that chapter if you talked to her with uh, Fred. We needed a blonde there character, and we just had this portrait around. We were thinking of making this Adelina. This is her old portrait. This was made by Zelda Crafter. Um, we have replaced it with a totally new one, okay? But this is what this was her original portrait. Adelina is going to be a halberdier, and she's going to look like this. Boom. Nice. My tomboy senses are tingling. Yeah, she smiles at that. She likes it when you call her the tomboy. Oh, she's definitely a top and not a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is Adelina. She's a Halbertier that you can recruit, and she's actually going to appear as early as Chapter 2. So you remember in Chapter 2 when Jocka tricks uh, Fred and Fred rides yeah. off? To instead, the castle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're changing that. So instead, Fred, being a noble, he sees that the village up above him is on fire, and that village happens to be a part of, uh, of um, uh, Saffron's territory. Uh, so he rides off to his house to notify everyone and maybe get some get some guards to come back and rescue you. So I do like that he was tricked by Jaka, but we're trying to be more story efficient. So we're trying to do it's, more it's things. It's a with weird Mercury. thing for Fred, to be perfectly honest, for how diligent he is that he sees what could potentially be a threat and then just dismisses it for his mission. Yeah, yeah it I didn't like that. I didn't like how, that either. Yeah, it doesn't blend with how dutiful he is for the rest of the game. So I like this change. Because mm -hmm. Fred starts off as a character you don't want to like because you stick with for the rules, but then that that one decision almost makes him borderline unlikable because he's letting people potentially die that should be under his protection. Mm -hmm. so, so I here, like the change. So here's here's how the change works. So he leaves, right? And then he comes back a few turns, just like before, just like in Vanilla. But this time, he's accompanied by uh, several other units. So there's two named units. It's going to be um, Adelina, and it's going to be Caroline. Caroline appears much earlier in the story now. So Adelina and Caroline appear, but when they appear, while well, Fred's like, okay, thank you for joining me. You know, now let's ride on and help save these villagers. Instead, they stand still and they're like, okay, well, we actually, we can't go with you because we're under Alexander's orders. We're just here to make sure that those marauders don't come down further south and cause any further violence. And Fred is like pissed off about these. He's like, what? How could you? How could you betray us? We need, we need, these, we need your help. And then... Uh, Adelina. Remember, at this point in the story, she's kind of a villain, so she's like, um, you know, she says something like, uh, uh, you've got Bottom on up there, he can handle it, we'll just stay down here, us and our, like, green guardsmen, we'll just stay down here, but just don't get in our way or whatever. And so Fred's pissed, he joins you, and he goes up and saves you, and then after that, during the, during the chapter, you can have Jaka come down and talk to Caroline early, and that actually gets you set up on the Caroline recruitment quest much earlier and maybe makes it a little bit less archaic for him to talk to her later on. So you see her earlier on in the story, and then when you see her on the bridge, you're like, oh, Caroline, I know who that is. So I have a question. Did you make this intentional? Because um, Alexander, in the introduction chapter with him in Chapter 9, he doesn't move from his spot until he takes off. So now his sister has that exact same mentality the first time we see yep. her. She shows up and doesn't move. It's like a... It's a, it's uh, establishing a character trait, basically. I like that. I, I was like, cool. I don't know if that's meant to be too subtle or not, but I, re I saw it and I'm like, I like it. 
I hope it's intentional and it sounds like it is. Okay. Oh, did I? I think I forgot to mention something, guys. Yeah, did you think this was Adelina's only mug? She actually has another one. I, do we have any Nephany uh, fans in the chat? Any Nephany hey, fans? Hey, hey. Yeah. You like Nephany? You like I love Nephany. She's Nephany great. I told you that we have an. Yeah. I, told you... <laughs> I gotta get my button again. <laughs> Got to hit the Nephany button. Yep, oh, so yeah. she she has another version where she has a helmet. This is actually the version you'll mostly be seeing. She she has this one for her cutscenes and this one for in battle. I like so, that. Yeah. I love it. I wanted to have love like... Your waifu, right here. I really like her... Uh, the um, Like the wings, like the Pegasus wings that we put on her helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, that, like this one, yeah. Adelina was actually drawn by Tack. And she was cleaned up, of course, by Nair, I do believe, and a couple others, maybe. But um, Tack did the base design for Adelina. He also did the base design for uh, Godfrey, which I showed earlier. Uh, he did the base design for um, uh, Lester and for Jenny Bo. So he's done quite a few of these base yeah, designs. Yeah, he's doing some good work. That's awesome. Okay. So that's um, Adelina. So we, need, so, we need to go to the on. most important person on this list. Morph, Morph Ball's the asking, there. Um, is she a pre-promote? Yeah, but um, you're not going to get her in the beginning of the game. You get her much, much later. Okay. So here's the thing. Caroline, you can get as early as Chapter 14. Adelina, you only get her in Chapter 29. Okay. You can't get her earlier than that. So she's your late game recruit. She's very yeah. powerful. But um, she's... um, The story arc that we're going with for her is going to be that she has always been sidelined and abused by um, Alexander, just the same way he does it to Caroline. He treats mm -hmm. everyone around him like dirt, especially women. He thinks they're I inferior. I got the impression that this was not just a Caroline thing. This is how he is. Yeah, yeah. and we get to really further reinforce that. This is a good character building uh, option for Alexander. And later on in the game, she's so pissed off at him because he tells her, you know, just whatever, just go throw yourself at the Jaka and his man, you know, go kill yourself. And she's pissed by this. And if you have Fred talk to her, she'll join you. Or Femke. Sweet. So, yeah. So that's Adelina. She's going to be yes, a lot of fun. Yes, we get more reasons to bitch slap Alexander. Yes. Mm hmm Okay. Now we finally get to the... We're going to switch back over here to the document. I'll Got let, it. Uh, I'll let Chris catch up. Okay. I, I, I'm just excited for the top one there. Mm-hmm. Astrid, baby. Okay, so new playable characters. One character from the Hornheim Arena. Only one. So there's five recruitable characters, but you can only... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's only five of them but you can only recruit one of them. So this is deliberate. This is another one of those replayability choices. And also by limiting which the number of characters that you can get exclusively per Ren, um, it limits the number of interactions you can have, which is just good for game design reasons. I see. So there's not there's not a ton of details here. For people who remember... Oh, what the heck? I got a text. That was weird. Um, so for people who don't remember, Astrid is the very, very popular blind girl. Uh, let me go ahead and just grab portraits real quick. Let me see if I can find her in my vanilla portrait section. Sure. Someone asked this earlier, and since we're talking about the um, the, the recruits here, I can bring it up now. Uh, if you go for Balder, or sorry, Njal, does that not imply that you could potentially have three bards and just completely break the game? Or are uh, you no, it, that's not an issue. You can, just make, you can just make it so that way bards can't dance for each other, and there's other stuff you can do, but We'll worry about those design issues later on. I, okay, I was wondering if you guys had considered that. So it sounds like you've got at least something on the wings. Yeah, um, Astrid, Chris, I don't, I don't know if you're able. I'm just gonna move this into top Chris's left. Just fine. I, I set that up while you're in the bathroom or whatever. Oh, okay, doing. okay, cool. Well, then here, I'll just leave this in the top left. So this is um, Astrid now. So I just opened her up up top, so that way you guys can see her. This is Astrid. She's a very cute Sorry. waifu. We're probably gonna actually redesign her portrait a bit. There's some there's some technical anatomy issues, but she's very popular. Everyone loves Astrid, so making her playable was required, basically. Astrid is recruited by Ralphnir, and we'll be talking about Ralphnir. He's got some big changes in the pipeline, but she's recruited by him, so you have to make him a Jarl. Like, you have to choose him as the candidate in the Jarl arena in order to recruit Astrid. And since he's, like, the canon choice, that's probably what you're going to do anyway. But then Yerma, uh, she is actually... Um, does she uh, have more personality than I like food and am fat? Do you remember what I told you? I told you I write a character who is, um, they have a shtick, and then I explore why they have that shtick, and that gradually opens them up over time. So Good. Yerm is probably going to be the same, and then we'll open up and see mm -hmm. why she likes food. Maybe she has fucking, I don't know, depression or something. Her father was a food. <laughs> yeah. Her father she, was a food. She ate her father. <laughs> her father was the, her father was everything that was written in Vision Quest. That's it. Oh my god. 
Oh no. Oh no, now I'm gonna no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna comment on it. Okay, so Astrid's recruited by Ralphnir, and then you have Yerma. Yerma, of course, is let me just find her real quick. Why, why, why? How can this, you lose someone that big? Zoom in. I think three hundred percent is what I did. Oh yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> well, she takes up a lot more space, you know, because she's so she fat. Does, so anyway, this is Yerma, and she is Tiranar's wife. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly how I'm gonna handle like recruiting the wife by Helga. They're they're like, about they're they're a society that's all built on who's the strongest. So she'd probably just honor Tyranor's like Tyranor has a very honorable death quote. Wouldn't it be funny so, if if they're written like so that way it seems like Yerma really loves him and everything, but then you kill him and if it's Helga, she's like, eh, that's whatever. I guess he's dead. He was just a weak little piece of crap anyway. And Helga's like, huh? She's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, whatever. I'll find a more manly man. <laughs> oh, so like she that. just so she recruits herself kind of like Oliver does in ten. Yeah, like, she's like, but we're like, can you go back and be an enemy? This is weird. <laughs> and then after Yerma, we have Nial, Nijal, Nial. Uh, he's recruited by Sigrid, and that's going to be a very cute conversation. I'm sure you guys can already imagine it in your head. Um, I, I, I can imagine him trying to be like. I actually, was hoping Sigrid would be recruited by Balder, who just wants an honorable death, like half Dan. But then she just keeps being adorable to the point where he's just like, I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> Fine, I'll help. Like, Balder is going to be recruited by Bjarki or Crixus. But here's the thing. Something that isn't actually mentioned here, uh, and I'm going to definitely have to adjust. Boogie is going to be a Jarl candidate. So he can become a Jarl. Ooh. Is that why he's running around stealing? Because he was like outcast? From no, the, no, no, no. Uh, he's just, he's from Hornheim, so he's, uh, he has to. Like, the fact that he's not a Yarrow candidate, it's kind of, it feels like an oversight. It was probably deliberate, but I'm definitely going to make him a Yarrow candidate because it would be so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to be a Yarrow candidate. So maybe Buggy can also recruit Nial or Yerma or something. Like, we'll figure it out. And then finally, Sigmar. Um, he, yeah, Beryl must be the Yarrow candidate for him to appear. So... The funny thing about Barrett is, if you've killed Sigmar and you make her the Jarl candidate, she actually can't recruit anyone. So she's actually your worst option. So that, that kind of sucks, but yeah. Now we get to... Okay, guys, we finally get to talk about a, char a couple characters that I have been very excited about. I have not shown these characters off anywhere. I don't even know if I've shown them to you guys. You have, have not. I shown you guys I, I've looked at the, I looked at this when you were gone, and I'm like, neither of these names ring a bell. Nope. Okay. This is so cool. I am very excited for these characters. Okay, so brand new character with a new portrait is Lena. She's a light magic user you get in the early game. She's an investigator from the old continent dispatched to uncover why the magical beacons inside the shrines have been disabled. This is so interesting. Now, here's why this is interesting. You remember the father and the daughter on chapter one who you have to save? Yes. Yep. They're gone. Instead, it's Estelle and Lena who appear. Okay. So you're going to get Estelle and Lena much earlier in the story. Oh, good. I get to be annoyed on chapter one. Yep. Estelle is leading Lena around. By the way, Estelle gets a little bit of a personality change. She's not quite as uh, retarded. Okay. So we're, we're fixing that. That doesn't mean she's not like Estelle. She's still Estelle. I don't know if we can call her that. Whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if someone's going to cancel me, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, so Lena is um, with Estelle, and Estelle is leading Lena around. And what happens is on the first chapter, Estelle is an expert, of course. So she tells yes. Estelle, it's fine. These slums are totally safe. We can just leave our tomes inside our hotel room while we go out and like walk the streets. And then Rod sees them, and he's pissed because they're nobles, and he hates nobles. So he like he's like pinning them against the wall, and he's telling him he's going to murder them. And that's when uh, Bottomon and Jaka come out to save them. Okay, so hmm. let's take a look at what Lena looks like. I bet they've got some interesting talks with him later. Actually, first, I'm going to load up um, Estelle's portrait. That way people can see, uh, just in case people have forgotten. Oh, uh, sure. H, uh, where's E for Estelle? Here's Estelle. And I actually don't think we're going to be changing Estelle's portrait. We might if one of the guys has, like, a really good design idea. But I personally, I'm a big fan of Estelle. So this is what she looks I like. I like Estelle's look. I just yeah. hate the fact that every third word out of her mouth is the word expert. Well, I have bad news for you because that's still staying. <laughs> She's still. I Pokemon. figured it was because that's why people love her. Yep. So that's Estelle. Now let's take a look at Lena, and boom. So this is Lena. Oh, she's cute. Very cute. She also has a formal dress, a black dress that she wears during the wedding and some other stuff. Oh, cool. Aww. And look at her. She's got like she's. She's like yap 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 yap, and then she smile yaps. Her mouth kind of like deforms a little bit there, but whatever. She's happy. Get some blinking frames in there. She's very cute. 
So this is Lena. She's an investigator from the old continent. And as you can see, she's young. You may actually be younger than Estelle. Hmm. So you know what the like other thing eyes. too? Okay. What's that? Clark. I like her eyes. They're very green. They pop. Like uh, it's hard to do that kind of thing on like a small portrait size. So mm -hmm. to do that with pixel art is always impressive when you can make someone's eyes be that like, um, like presence, you know? And yes, um, here's the other thing too. Lena is a light bringer and Estelle is a light bringer in the new version, but she's one of the, um, she's like one of the offshoot light bringers. So she doesn't have the white hair. She just has the brown hair. Another Xavier thing we are elevating right now because he's been making Estelle a light bringer since like the first time he mentioned his hack. Well, here's well, the other thing too. Uh, you remember the, I got to point out with the hair. If you get rid of like the pigtail kind of things or the ponytails or whatever they're called, it mm -hmm. looks a lot like Anakin Skywalker as a child. Yeah, I can see it, but um, <laughs> it looks regarding... like Big Boy. It does, doesn't it? I don't see it at all. Okay. Uh, t take your hands and just cover up the ponytails, and you can one hundred percent see Jake Lloyd's little mushroom bowl cut. You have yes. To, you have, yeah, you have to hide. You have to get the whole circle in. Uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I don't see it, guys. But anyway, I wanted to talk about Estelle. So I'll Estelle, give you the edit later. You remember that? I, I was just gonna make one. Okay, go for Remember it. Remember that Estelle has brown hair, right? Well, yes. you know who uh, else? You know who else has brown hair? Mortimer. And Mortimer reveals he has white hair and he's been hiding it with illusion magic. Wouldn't it be kind of interesting if halfway into the game, Estelle revealed that she had white hair too and she was hiding it, and this was actually a setup for Mortimer revealing it later on in the game so it doesn't just come out of nowhere? I, I would rather. Okay. The thing and said he was using just for hair men. I'm. Like, I'm gonna say I. Uh, that's another change. I don't like clock. Because that's so weird that it's like, I, as a player, I'm like, does no one have brown hair? Are you all lying to me? Does this exist in this world? Well, here's the thing, though. This is We're a world where the Lightbringers are persecuted, they're hunted down, and they're murdered. And you're telling me people wouldn't disguise themselves? Like, even Alonda is going to disguise herself at some point. Sure. She doesn't, but she's about to. I mean, she wears the robe, but, like, with the hood up. Mm hmm By the way, we have a new Alonda, uh a disguise portrait but it's it's Ooh. work in progress so i can't show it off is it, is it literally just her in a robe claiming it's a proper disguise no, no actually it fully hides her hair it's actually pretty cool but um but yeah this is lena this is estelle and all that uh we're, we're i'm gonna be using lena as like she's kind of like your early exposition before zacharias or before dawn about the old continent uh, but she's not going to be, like, too heavy-handed about it or anything like that. She's just kind of, like, one of those characters that can talk about that kind of stuff. And her relationship with Estelle is going to be interesting. Because Estelle is going to be a little bit more pure, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I don't mean, like, pure-blooded and, like, holy shit. No, I mean, like... Yeah, that might be the wrong way to go with that. No, but I mean, like, she's going to be more of a... Um, less of a joke character and a little bit more serious. Especially about her tragedy with losing, like, her entire church when she was younger. So... Um, Morph Ball says too, it would be really funny to make it so Estelle is actually a light bringer, but no one believes her. <laughs> yeah, that could be a fun thing too. That could be fun. Um, so anyway, we'll move on from them. So the next new character is Kaya. She is a former Styxian slave, <laughs> in quotes, struggling with depression. Similar to Aisha in background, but more directly applicable to the Styxian continent. She is your early game gateway to Styxian world building, in the same way Barrett and Ralphnir are for Hornheim. You'll notice I said Barrett and Ralphnir, not Barrett and Bjarki. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. weird, guys. Are you also taking the idea that I think Xavier did of putting Ralphnir on Chapter 2? Uh, sort of. So originally, I was going to put Ralphnir in the prison with Crixus. And I, I kind of nixed that because I liked Ralphnir and Crixus, but I also rather wanted to have Ralphnir and Barrett early game because I want to put Bjarki in the mid game. And Bjarki is going to come to you fully promoted as the Mist Slayer with a special axe that is effective against all humans. He's got the Human Slayer axe because he's the Mist Slayer. So. Real quick, I'd People love to. That earlier, like, how do you justify Bjarki being a, such a low level when he's like this experienced guy? Yeah. Gameplay. That's another one of the reasons. <laughs> Um, so what's the, what was the question? Thiago throws in that so brown hair equals light bringer now. Elmer is a light bringer. Nah, it's not that brown. That's why I'm saying, like, if she is a light bringer, she should have white hair and she's disguising herself. Um, otherwise, we keep her. We could say that she's a light bringer, but she's from, like, an outer sect, so she doesn't have the pure white hair. And outer sect characters can have, like, weaker. Like, they can still use light magic, but they're not as powerful as the inner sect or the mm -hmm. royals. I like that that's more. A, 
Yeah, we could probably go with something like that. I'm just saying, like, if she were, like, an actual Lightbringer, then she should be using a hair disguise, I feel. I do yeah, like the idea of... Take, take uh, a look at the screen there, Clock. I do like... You don't fucking see it. Super Saiyan uh, Lightbringer Elmer. Oh? Huh? I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I... I... I fixed the hair, and now it, it's a, it's totally Anakin. I what, I can't see anything, dude. What are you talking about? Oh, you mean like I, on your stream? I don't have your stream open. I don't either. Oh. I have just chats popped out because I don't I don't have enough screen real estate for all that. I'll, I'll just have to take your word. I'm just going to leave this up for a while. Yeah, okay, I guess I'll pop it up and take a look. Um, uh, spiral. Let's have a look. Oh my god. Well, why'd you, you you made her look so weird? That's what you, the hair, that's what we're talking about. She doesn't look like Anakin to me at all. She just looks like some kid with a bowl cut. That's what Anakin is. I'm opening it real quick too. Let me see here. <laughs> it looks pretty silly though. I'll give you that. Yes, that looks like Anakin. No, you guys are lying. No, that looks like Anakin Skywalker. I'm giving, I'm being gaslit by my co-host. What the fuck? No. <laughs> Okay, so I want to talk about Kaya though. So Kaya okay. is your is your link to Stixia. Okay, so here's Kaya's portrait. You guys ready? I'm ready. One, two, one. Here's Kaya, baby. Oh, she's cute. Very cute. Yes. Hold on, gotta get my button again. That's Kaya happy, by the way. But this is normal Kaya. She's depressed. Very, very depressed. She's this a former. Like the fourth character I've heard you say is gonna have depression. Like Yerma has it too. That's why she eats. Yeah, it kind of takes away from being Sham stick to stick too. But um, I'm no. just thinking about some a friend introducing me to somebody the way that you just introduced her. This is Chris. This is normal Chris. He's depressed. Like, <laughs> got it. Oh, her chin low. Her little chin spot disappears right here. It's kind of weird. Whatever. It's just, it's a missing pixel. It's very easy to fix. Yeah. And then we've got, uh, this is her when she's uh, happy. This is her when she's kind of distant, kind of staring off into the horizon. Uh, probably looking at the viewer, probably looking out at the horrors of the cosmos. And this That's is her when she's looking. Colette from Tales of Symphonia after she loses her humanity. Yeah. So she's got lots of different portrait variations. She's going to be a very expressive character. She's a former Styxian slave, so she has a lot of backstory about, uh, you know, being a slave and the horrors that went along with that. And she's going to be your, like, you know, it was one of the things that was really missing. We go to Styxian, and it's like, why? Who do we even know that's from Styxian? I can name one character, mm -hmm. and it's Aisha, and she's, like, barely even from Styxian. She's <laughs> she doesn't mostly even from want to go back to Styxian for yeah. a while. Yeah, so it's like, why would we go to Styxian to help? We don't care about you. You're just a bunch of friggin' necromancers. But this is Kaya. So here's the way this works. We, we moved Estelle to Chapter 1 to be more economical with the storytelling. But with Estelle gone, now Kaya can join you at the start of chapter three. So um, Kaya will actually join you probably in the Gaiden, like on the Gaiden chapter when you're in the, uh, you're inside of Holtmeyer before you go down to the forest. So she'll join you then. And then as you go into the forest, uh, she'll be there to help you fight. And because she's going to be, I believe a, what is she going to be? She's going to be a sword user. She might be- okay. uh, I was about to ask that. I think she's a... I don't know if she's a Myrmidon, because that would be competing directly with um, Thea. I don't think she's that. I think she's something else. She might be a mercenary, or she might have some other new class. Or she might be a thief? Uh, no, I don't remember. We'll have to think about it. But she's going to have some special class. She's actually going to be pretty good against the centaurs, okay. unlike Estelle. Estelle's better with her dazzle uh, against the um, the characters in Chapter 2, the uh, brigands and barbarians. But anyway, yeah, that's Kaya. So she's really fun. She also has like her little pointy ears, which I think is very cute. Mm -hmm. I like so, the ears. I like the hair color too. Yes. Yeah, she she and Lena are just they're, they're freaking adorable. And by the way, both of these were also made by Tack. So my Tack chat is, really... is just like she really looks like a Tellius dragon. It's an, the Anna we have at home. <laughs> like I I do see Tellius dragon. I like her more than Eno. What are you talking about? I I do too, but that's not a high bar. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got story slash gameplay characters. Now, I want to preface this by saying I wrote these all a long time ago, like months ago. Okay. And then we, we found out that um, we have to replace half the cast uh, due to a dispute. Zelda Crafter doesn't want his um, characters in a game that uses AI. Some of the portraits that I've shown off used AI as a base for their generation. And then we did a, like a bunch of cleaning and stuff. Mm -hmm. I won't say which ones. Maybe people will guess. But, oh, yeah, uh, it'll be I'll, fun I'll, I'll say... 
I'll say when the game comes out for sure. It's it's ironic that you mentioned that because just before we got started and I was looking for images to touch up the layout with, like when I was looking for that gif I asked about, mm -hmm. I saw that someone did every single character as it like with, done with AI in the Android. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot. That was a that was a few months back. Yeah, that, that I know, was a I know, but I haven't gone. I haven't gone through all of them before. I was just looking for that one gif, but I saw them. So like the fact that you're like, no AI from this one person. It's like, oh, that's hilarious. Someone already did that. And Zelda Crafter made about half the portraits, so mm -hmm. we have to replace half of them. And then, of course, if we're replacing half the characters, maybe we should replace all of them. I don't know. Like, earlier in the stream, I showed you guys Bod. Yeah. So I guess I might as well take a moment to show you guys a couple mock-ups that we've done for a new Bod. I'm probably not going to use either of these, and we need to keep uh, we need to keep thinking about, like, what we're going to do with him. So this is the I first think, one. I think you showed me Runa at one point. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Runa and the other ones Ooh, later. So I haven't seen Runa yet. This is vanilla bod. This is a bottom on made by Nate. It's totally different. Mm. I don't really, not really doing it for me. But I, it's the eye. It's the eye on the right side that's throwing me off. No, nah, it's the, the, it's right the whole face. I don't like his attitude change. I agree. But you know what I do like? So let's first talk about the things that I don't like about vanilla bod. First off, I like his face. I like his expression. He just feels like a good main character. Yeah. I like yeah. his hair. What I don't like is everything down here. I don't like like this huge pauldron looks kind of weird. He's got like this massive body and like this kind of basic blue shirt. You know what I mean? Like he's just kind of, he doesn't really feel like he's wearing main Lord material. Then you get this guy, but what if there was a fusion? Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. That's better. I now, like this, that. This fusion is a little bit weird because you can see like this little dippy part right here. That doesn't really make sense. Like you can that, see, that's like, fine. That could be removed very easily. Yeah, we could fix like, that. But you can see, like, what's going on. Like, you've got the yeah. vanilla face. Uh, the hair kind of changed, which I don't really necessarily like. I like it's his. Not bad. It's very detailed, which I'm. It okay kind of with. cuts in a little bit deeper. It gives him like a feral kind of almost like a bearish look. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe that's good. But I really like the armor that's down here. He feels more like a prince. Like let me let me, let, like... Me make a, let me make an argument for the bearish look because I'm looking at your description here. He drinks to drown his sorrows. When you are depressed and you are falling into bad habits, and I can speak speak, speak for this right fucking now because it's exactly what I'm going through. You kind of just let your self go a bit. You know, you take less care of yourself physically. You don't care because fuck it, the world's screwed anyway. So mm. it actually does make more sense that he would be growing that stuff out because he wouldn't be trimming it. And yeah. it's Bod's, if it's Bod's personality, besides this extra bit of depression, he's not going to be letting like royal retainers touch him up or anything. He's going to be like, like back off. Like, so it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So we might as well get into the characters since you've already started getting, doing that. So Bottomon is no longer a womanizer. I already said that before. Jocka yeah. takes on Bottomon's womanizing. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. The main reason is. Jock is going to have a lot of female support partners and a lot of paired stuff in the end game. You might as well be economical and say that he's really good with the ladies. Why not? And you already got the spear jokes. It practically writes itself. Mm -hmm. So you could go with that. And then bottom on also being a womanizer is a little bit awkward because in the early game, who does he have to womanize with? Thea? Uh, let's There's see. with Thea, and that's more Thea teasing Coulter than yeah, you've got, you've got Thea, and that one feels a little bit autistic almost. And that's, you know... But mm -hmm. Thea's also I'm actually very... wondering, if you're taking this away, what is Theo going to have to bitch at Bot about? Because <laughs> there's not going to be a lot oh, of Oh, no, that. no, that's no. So the thing that's not mentioned here... So, okay, so we're doing another thing, too. So Ariel is known as the Butcher, right? Ariel the Butcher, the Bloody Butcher, yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of taking that away. We're going to do something new with that. Instead, he's bottom on the Butcher. Because during the Rebellion, he was known to be, like, a serious killer. He killed a lot of people. Uh, maybe those rumors are unearned. Maybe uh, people exaggerated a little bit too much, but he's known as a butcher and that really has like affected him. So it's not just like he's drinking to drown his sorrows. It's that he has like a lifetime of regret from what happened during the rebellion that's weighing on him. It's also well, you're why you're taking that away from Ariel because you can't really get the same impact as the Ashburn butcher with the Tauros butcher. It just means you hate Pokemon. Yeah, yeah and plus... I also kind of like the alliteration, bottom on the butcher. Like I, I feel... do worry that it's going to change things a little too much in that I, I think that the thing that makes him and Elana's relationship a little bit more special even is that he is a womanizer and stuff. And so it's like, oh, he's been with, you she know, changes him. dozens, hundreds of women. And then he meets Elanda and it's like, oh. So here's like, the problem that I have with bottom on the womanizer. And this was a problem that a lot of people commented on, is that Bottom no, on feels like a, 
Bottomon feels like a self insert. He's too good at everything. He's a he's like he sleeps with the ladies. He has the sex. He drinks. He's really funny. Everyone he has likes a charge him. Glitch. Yeah, he has the charge glitch. He can instantly kill well, the demon king. I'll, like, I'll disagree because not everyone likes him. He is like you know there's a lot of people that are like you really should grow up like yeah you do all these things but you're horribly irresponsible you're kind of immature like someone just wrote lol manx yeah there's a lot of people who said it was a manx self-insert but if that's the case then i guess jocka's a clock self-insert yeah you know, i don't because I don't of the short that. that's, if that's the if that's the manx self-insert then explain buggy magnus and manx himself appearing in the game <laughs> <laughs> the the entire game is actually if you look at Estelle, kind of like a Mang self insert if you think about it. Go ahead, I'll let you justify that one. <laughs> She's a Mang self insert, guys. Estelle? Actually, I'm, I'm more I'm more distracted. Xavier just wrote all kinds of small rod confirmed. So we're actually gonna you guys can ban Diego for me, right? You can just ban him real quick. <laughs> um, oh, okay. uh, Dewitt is asking if Mengs is still a part of this project. Uh, no, because Mengs is off making Rebellion Saga. I'm not a part of Rebellion Saga. He's not a part of New Dawn. We're doing I thought, I thought that was the case, because you explained that before stream, and I was like, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's going to get asked, but I thought that was going to be the case. Like, there's two different projects happening simultaneously. Yes. It's also the reason why this is not a remake of Andoran Saga. This is a re-envisioning with me as the director. So I'm going to do things differently from Mengs. Mengs does things differently from me. You know, some people are not going to like what I do. Some mm -hmm. of the changes that I make are absolutely contentious. Like, for example, we're talking about Bottom on no longer being a womanizer. I can totally see why you wouldn't like that. Yeah, I've, I've openly I said I don't like some of the changes, but... Yeah, like, um, even with the uh, the house names, I know that you don't like the new house names. And there's a lot of people who don't, but there are people who do. There's quite a few people who do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like 50 you're, you're addressing the main thing that people always seem to forget when they're making something that is going to be seen by other people. And I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. like, I'm a game maker myself. I understand this. You cannot please everybody. And by trying to please every single person, you are not going to be making the thing that you set out to make in the first place. You are going to lose it. You are going to lose sight of what mm -hmm. your your original goal was because you're now trying to make everybody happy. And it's not a possibility. No, it's yeah, not. And I'm so not... You're, 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 you're steering into that, and I approve of that. Yeah. Yeah. I would rather make a decision that is a strong decision that has logic behind it and is contentious and gets people talking than kind of a wishy-washy decision that makes as many people happy as possible. So, you know, there's just going to be some things I change that people aren't going to like. I'm going to I'm going to move on with the characters though. So, we've got um Jaka. Now that I we're on Jaka, we can finally we can finally talk about Jaka's new portrait. Have I shown either of you Jaka's new portrait? I don't believe nope. so. I think you only showed me Runas, to be honest. Runas and Rods. So you guys have not seen Jaka's new portrait? Okay. I've seen Rod very... and Ayla. I think that's it. I, I'm wondering how much Riz this is going to have. And I just want to remind everyone, this is Bottomon's, this is not Bottomon's new portrait. This is just like one of the examples. We're probably going to keep remaking it. Uh, I want Bod to be perfect because he's the main character of the project. He needs to look really, really good. But I am very happy with Jaka. So this is Jaka's original portrait. Now, the issue that I have with Jaka's original portrait, aside from it being a pretty basic splice, it's just kind of like he's just like a dude. He's just a dude. And there's nothing wrong with just being this, a dude. I would, I would describe this as serviceable at best. Yeah, it's serviceable, but is this really, like, the future main character material? Even when he glows up into a tier two and he gets, like, better armor, his face is still kind of bland. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on, for a second. Hang on. I, Does I, this I, fucking portrait change when he promotes, and I've never noticed it? I did not notice either. Oh my god, you guys didn't know that? Nope. I've never- I gotta fucking- oh my god, I feel so stupid. I've never noticed that. I didn't either. Dude, he addresses it with his mother. She's like, oh, you look so good in your father's art. You didn't even notice. No. Nope. Not at all! Not even a little! Yo, man, chat, I'm- 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 I'm, I'm VCing with some stupid people today, man. I got fucking some chat, dummies. Chat's agreeing with me. Xavier said it. D uh, DeWitt just said it. It's funny. I thought we I drew attention to it. now. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. So let's talk Oops. about new Jaka's portrait. Are you guys ready? Hit it. Uh, yes, I have the Ferdinand theme playing in the background. All right, three, two, one, boom. New Jaka, baby. His hair makes a heart. His hair makes a heart. Literally <laughs> the first thing I noticed is his hair makes a heart. <laughs> that's so cute. Well, I mean, he is popular with the ladies, so what yeah, can we say? That, that's, where he, that's where he stores his riz. Yeah, and he's got a lot, by the way. He's got a lot of portraits. So this is his base one. Here's his mad portrait. Here's his rage portrait. Arr, I'm pissed. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you have to have a hot springs portrait. What? No, we there would never. Is. Yeah, there <laughs> it is. 
Bod, why are you... <laughs> this is... Bod, why are you sitting six feet away? You should get closer. Bod, why are you sitting six feet away? <laughs> Yaka! So that's... So um, this is his, his normal portrait. This is his new portrait that we're going with. We love this. I mean, this is my... Okay. This is not my favorite. I, I want to but... jump in because Toko literally said my thought. Um, I like that... Toko writes, I like that he just looks like a dude. Because the whole point of him is that he's some guy who becomes the protagonist by chance. I, I totally I do, agree with I that. am a partial to that opinion. It does make sense. But this also doesn't change so much that he's suddenly unrecognizable. I don't know. That said, the writing might do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, I don't love this one. Mmm. Uh-oh. So, one thing I will say that I don't like about the new portrait... And maybe not. Maybe not don't like is too strong. But the hair is kind of noodly. That's like that's like the one thing I'd point that's, out. That's that's not but my really, issue. My issue is the I face. I really like his ad. No, I just like his attitude and stuff. I think it'll grow on you, honestly. And I'm not gonna write it off. Um, <sighs> that said, okay, what's his promoted portrait look like? Because apparently I need to know that. That's Boom. Thing. I notice it's different. I feel like I'm still not gonna notice this when it happens. I mean, like you got he got jacked. Like he turns like absolutely <laughs> monstrous. Oink. Um, but yeah, his the, eyes are different, but like he has more of a piercing gaze. I don't think that's a bad thing. That fucking scar got bigger. Well, when, when so you when Bodhi Man asks about it, it makes more sense now. Let me let me put it this way: when you rewrite him, it will probably make sense, and I'll probably feel like this fits better with your version of Jocko. With the current so should... iteration of Jocko we have, I don't think it fits that iteration of Jocko. Yeah. So the issue that um, I guess I guess you would have if you were like comparing their personalities. So Vanilla Jocko, kind of a dope. And yes. the reason I wrote him to be kind of a dope is because he looks like a dope. Like, yes. He just looks like a schlub. And he's also jokes around a lot. Like, he jokes around maybe too much because he's just some dude. But because well, those jokes are a little bit jarring in a lot of cases, him also having this new portrait really helps sell the idea that he's less of a jokey guy. Like, he's still mm -hmm. going to tell jokes. Like, you know, when you see that when you see that smile on him going, hey, baby, you want to hear a funny joke? I mean, you're probably, you're probably going to buy it. But he's not going to be as jokey as he was in Vanilla. Yeah, I, I think, like, I don't know. I, I think it loses a little bit of that, like, surprise, you're the protagonist now, you know? it. I think the slice of life equivalent would be, like, somebody who maybe their, like, sibling has a kid, and then their sibling dies in a horrible car wreck, and suddenly you become the parent. And yeah. you're just like, I'm a Was that the ball. first example you could think of? Yeah, because that is kind of what happens to him, is in that, like... He, what? Oh, okay. That's, that's Amon as a baby. By the way, this is a slightly new portrait. He's been rotated 90 degrees. So instead of just like holding the baby upright, like you're wrapping your hands around the baby's neck. What is this? I don't know. I was going to ask you that. I guess the baby has talking frames. That's weird. Um, <laughs> oh, it's because he's, he's, one, he's one pixel too low. Okay, well, we can fix that. But yeah, anyway. it was just, that. that's what came to me. Because to me, that's kind of what happens to Jaka is that like, you know, um, Bodimon takes on this massive responsibility, and Jock is like, yeah, you know, I can watch the kids sometimes, I can help as your, you know, your right hand, um, but healthy distance, and then Bod dies, and it's like, oh, your responsibilities have become mine, huh? Like, I, I have wasn't... A uh, question about that, did that. you not piece anything to get, like, I didn't see Bodimon dying when he did, I figured it would happen at some point, solely because Jocka is the one with the convoy access, I thought and I was that, like, something's that, gonna happen here. I thought they were just doing a unique, like, you know, this guy is the one that has the convoy because he's the one that, you know, keeps the books. You I really fell for it, didn't you? You yeah. fell for bottom on dying. I did not think yeah, bottom on was gonna also, die. Like, you also don't have to feel Jaka for the first half of the game. You can actually bench him for most of it and just lose the convoy access. Oh, I didn't so notice. Like, something is weird about this. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, I was totally unaware that Bod died. Oh, I was also just scrolling through. Um, <laughs> I was scrolling through the Anderon New Dawn chat on the main Discord. And I noticed there's a bunch of comments I haven't read yet. I'm just going to ignore them for right now, though, because there's there's too much to go through. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we got through Jaka. Um. Yeah, I guess we have Coulter next. Okay, so <clears throat> Coulter. So I'm going to be swapping his recruitment with Jesse, as it says here. Um, the reason for this is that Jesse's arrival in Chapter 12 feels tone-deaf, considering the seriousness of the plot. 
So instead, you recruit Coulter in the prison as an elite assassin, not a, not a thief. He's an assassin, and Jesse is a thief when you get him. Um, he will have a unique utility comp compared to Aubrey later in the game. not going to tell you what it is, but um, Coulter has a unique thing that sets him apart from Aubrey. So this this just goes into, like, tone of the story. is one of the biggest reasons why I want to do the swap. Um, be, you also, getting Jesse earlier on in the game means he can interact with Natalie earlier, which is kind of nice. But Coulter being in the prison means you're not going to have Jesse joking around. Uh, while Clark, you're while like, you're explaining this, I'm going to run to the bathroom real fast, so don't show a new portrait or anything for a second. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so I'll just continue saying what I was saying before. Yeah. Um, so, Jesse is just very tone deaf, and it's not a bad thing. Except in the one chapter where you recruit him, I made him too funny. And he shouldn't be funny in a chapter where you're about to see, like, a grisly murder scene. So I just... Uh, counterpoint to that, that actually does help sell the fact that you're not about to walk into a grisly murder scene. My first playthrough, I was con like, I was like, okay, something bad's gonna happen, but we're gonna get him out, and then he'll probably, like, get killed in the next chapter or something. I was fully expecting to open that door, and either he wouldn't be there, he'd be somewhere else, or we'd get him and we'd rush out. In no way, shape, or form did I suspect he was dead in that chapter. And the comic relief definitely helped uh, helped set that up. Because I'm like, they're not going to do that. Roark? Roark? Roark has a comment where he says, dang, less Coulter. And I completely disagree. And let me tell you why I disagree. So in the vanilla game, you have Coulter. And then in chapter 14, he disappears. And Jesse takes over from that point on. Because Coulter has no presence in the story except for chapter 29. Where he can, like, recruit um, Aubrey. Right? Yeah, and there's no me, other cutscenes that have him. And to me, that is a big flaw in the writing. That It's just like with Theodore. Mang's, like, totally forgot Theodore and Coulter existed, and they just disappear from the story. So what we could do instead is we have Jesse from the beginning of the game. He's got all those scenes. When we get Coulter, Coulter gets a bunch of new scenes leading up into the end game, along with Jesse. Like, it should be clear by this point, I'm trying to make these characters have as much story presence as possible. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make it so that way everyone gets an equal amount. The Guidance are going to let them all be fleshed out plenty. It's not going to be an issue, trust me. You're going to have plenty of culture to go around. Especially with I'm, some of the I'm unsavory stuff. I'm looking the list, and I'm going to have some words once we get to Sham, but please keep going. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to wait uh, until... Um, let's just answer some viewer questions until Chris gets back. Let's see, as long as Aubrey still has higher con than Coulter for the jokes. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, because con Dommy represents... Mommy needs the Dom. Well, con represents breast size and fire emblem. That's what it means, so. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's but... like a, it was a running joke in, um, I was part of a Final Fantasy Tactics group ages ago. And the running joke was, if you had higher constitution, it just meant you had fleece. <laughs> I never got it, but it was, it stayed as a staple joke for years. Also, just do it in your Discord. He says he loves a new Chaka. So, you know, there's an example yeah. of someone oh, yeah, who no, loves... Do, do it's been uh, promoting, like, just propping it up since since you showed it. <laughs> yeah, he, he just really likes it. But that's what I'm talking about. These changes are You're going gonna to be... You're going to find people who love and some people who don't. That's it. And it's just like, you know, I want to make everyone happy. I would love it if everyone looked at new Jaka and saw him the way I did. And they were like, wow, this guy looks awesome. And it's not just like... You know, I was I was watching a video that was talking about the new um, the new Avatar live action thing, and like how it seems like the creators just fundamentally misunderstand Avatar. They don't know what they're doing, and it's really Did they not watch the movie be beforehand. It's really infuriating how they make like simple basic mistakes about characterization and like what the goals, the obvious goals of the story were. And I don't want people thinking that I'm making that. Like, I'm just like, oh, man, Jocka needs to look cool. I'm back. Man, Jocka looks, Jocka looks, like, lame and gay, and now he looks cool. Like, that's not why I did the change. Um, I had a lot of reasons for the change. Probably the biggest reason, I would say, honestly, is just, he just looks so basic to me. Um, and I'm not saying basic like he's a simple guy. I just mean, like, he just looks basic, like a very basic splice. If I can look at a, sp uh, at a sprite and I can see the pieces that make them up, it really distracts me. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, 99% of people don't do that. I've been in the spriting community long enough that it does bother me. And there are some characters that it doesn't bother me for, and I figure if it doesn't bother me, it won't bother 99% of 99% of people. If that makes I, sense. Okay, the more you go on about New Jaka, I have to ask a question that's been bugging me now. Yeah? How big is the framed picture of Jaka over your bed? Because it has to be huge. <laughs> I mean, 
he's pretty handsome, you know? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's my yeah, self-insert, guys. Today. It's slightly it, smaller than the one on your ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every night before I go to bed, I think of Jaka, then Jaka bends me over and goes inside me. <laughs> Whoa. Just like Shrek. And Rod's there, and it's just weird. <laughs> Do it. I would buy a framed picture of new Jaka. Yeah, and so um, Roark brings up another thing. He says, I think I would still want to see Ch Thea chapter one. And yeah, you're going to still get her. You're going to get her and Jesse. Uh, the new thing is that Thea and Jesse are kind of... He, so it says right here, Jesse will join you in chapter one, and he claims to be Thea's boyfriend. Thea denies this. Jesse will also have unique dialogue if he recruits his sister, Natalie. So Jesse claims he's Thea's boyfriend, and he's helping her find Coulter. The reason they come to you is because they Thea receives the letter that um, Jaka sends to Coulter. Because remember... Jaka is Coulter's friend, and Coulter is Jaka's friend. Um, Coulter obviously knows Bottomon, but the, but Jaka and Coulter are much closer because they were both poor, born in the slums. Mm -hmm. so... I never got that impression. I always thought that Coulter tolerated Jaka, and he was Bod's friend. Agreed. I oh. never picked up on that. Yep. Yeah, I could I could see it being the other way, but um, so the idea though is that they go that Thea is looking for Coulter. She wants to find him. She doesn't know what's happened to him. He's a, he's now a high rank. It's just like with Bjarki. Coulter's swap makes him a much more powerful character later on in the game, which improves his importance. So he is, a, he is a much higher ranking assassin in the guild. So that means that he's doing Aubrey's dirty work, and he probably got caught doing something, and that's why he's in the prison. Or maybe if Jesse dies, then we do the thing where... Like in the vanilla game, if Coulter dies, Jesse joins you. Uh, yeah, in the yeah, you just don't early. have anybody in the cell. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we swap it out. So this time it's Coulter who joins you because he like escaped early or something. He's Schrodinger's like cell or something like that. Okay. So um, okay, so because you're the writer and you know more than anyone else, is Jesse actually banging Thea? Um, we're gonna leave that ambiguous for right now because I haven't decided. <laughs> but it could be. I mean, hey, who knows? Because he's like, swinging way outside his wheelhouse if he's nailing that. I mean, hey, you never know. You never know. Like, she's probably been with her a while. But um, I'm going to say off the top of my head, probably not. But you never know. Like, things could develop differently. Okay. So you've got Jesse. Now we've got Thea. You'll notice this star right here. So whenever yeah. you see a star, these are characters that Zelda Crafter sprited. So they have new okay. sprites. And I'm going to be showing off those new sprites. So actually, oh, so does that mean Coulter and Jesse both currently have their their existing sprites, and they're not actually? Convenient? So Coulter, we are going to be redesigning him, and the reason for that is mostly just because Coulter is a very basic splice. Like he's literally three pieces stacked on top of each other, and I mean that in the most literal way. It's like Rutger's face. Uh, there was something else, and then something else. Like three pieces stacked together. So we thought we could do better. Now I'm going to go ahead and show off something. This is not. So this is Coulter's old portrait right here. Yeah. Okay. This is what he looks like currently. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's literally Rutger's face. Uh, I do believe it's um oh what's the uh, the hero from Holy uh, shit that is Rutger's face. I never noticed that. What is the hero girl from FE6? Echidna. This is Echidna's hair. Yeah. And yeah. then there's like this 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 uh this is from something else. I forget I forget the character. And then this body is from I think it's just Matthew. I think this I is from Matthew actually. And this bottom part right here is from uh, the other thief uh, in FE7. Um. Uh, I'm bad. Oh, uh, guys. yeah, yeah, the purple-haired dude. Yeah, I forget the Can't name. Remember his name. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Chat will tell. It's not me. important. Who cares? Legault. Legault. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so anyway, it's four pieces, literally stacked on top of each other. So this was a beta portrait for Coulter. We're not going to use this, but this is what this is one of the beta portraits oh. that was considered. I don't like it. I don't know. So we're gonna be redoing it. Yeah, he just he yeah, turned into no, a Giga no Chad. With that. It's a it's a completely different portrait. Like he's got a weird angle going on. I'm not gonna insult it. It's a good portrait, but it just I, isn't. It, that, it's not that is a throwaway joke character if I ever saw one. He also has a mask. <laughs> he also that, he's irrelevant. Image. Throwaway joke character. Yeah, I, this was actually made by Nair. I think this is a great portrait actually, as far as. Well, hold on. Flip back and forth between the mask again. Has anyone yeah. seen that meme from Thor Ragnarok where he's just like, I'm in disguise? It's exactly that meme. Yeah. You also notice his, his like thing changes right here, color. That's just, yeah. you know. Oh, we, yeah. We were beta testing different ideas. Since we're not going to use it anyway, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But um, I don't think this is a bad design. I think that if we were to take this and rework this into a new character, like a, like a, just a goon for Aubrey, uh, that would be pretty good. But we're definitely going to remake Coulter entirely. So this is not the Coulter that we're going to use. But I do want to talk about Thea. 
Okay, so where is they? Where is she? I hit her somewhere. Oh, yeah. This is either gonna this is either gonna make a lot of people really happy, or it is going to piss a lot of people off. So I before I sh wait. before I show off new Thea, I want to talk about Thea for a second. I don't dislike Thea except for a few things. I hate these little pink pixels right here. I don't know why they like the spiders insisted on doing this, but when she blinks, that's her that's her pupil sticking through her hair. Yeah, and it looks so janky. I've never liked that. Uh, this either. bottom part, do you guys know what this is from? Because I do. I recognize it instantly every no. time I look at her. It's um, it's Selena, right? Selena, yeah. It's it's the Selena from FE8. Okay. So, the only reason I, I remember that is I just Iron Man FE8, so. Yeah, it's very obvious to me. I actually like her hair. I like her attitude and oh, personality. Oh, I, lo I love her hair. I love her hair. Yeah, yeah. she's doing, she's doing great things with, like, mm -hmm. the hair and personality. But, you know, very basic splice. So this is Nuthia. Hey, someone that looks closer to the official art, doesn't it? Hmm. It is because a we lot, based like it a directly. Lot closer? In fact, can I just go ahead and pop up the official art real quick? Like I, I was looking at the official art earlier today while looking for background stuff, and yeah, that looks so much closer to it. Uh, I need to find the official art real quick. Uh, <laughs> new, new Thea looks too friendly. Uh, she's gonna get a little bit of a personality change, but we'll talk about that in a second. I need to find the official art. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where I is know it? it's on the Discord near the top of the Anduron art. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling for it. I'm in the. Here it is. Here we go. Okay. Wow. Jesus, did I get dial-up internet? What is yeah, going that's on? That's pretty slow, huh? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. This is like that. Uh, means... This is like the comic book guy meme where he's downloading porn and it just keeps slowing down even further. <laughs> This reminds me of a meme I saw in the past where it would slow down and then rise and got to the boobs. It just stopped. And then it was like a troll face. It was like, oh, you that. got trolled. Yeah. Um, Jesus. People wanna, okay, so people actually just want to know if Thea is actually good now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to um, we're gonna work on improving Thea. Um, Mang's deliberately made her bad as a I joke. remember that. I don't know. I, I, remember, I remember this too. Yeah. I thought it was and funny. I, I don't agree with that choice, so we'll be making her. But good is relative. You know, how good will she be? Keep in mind that in a game where you can theoretically get two A ranking supports that each give, like, powerful skills and you get lots of other items and stuff, I mean, any character can become good. So define good, really. Mm -hmm. But imagine she gets, like, the Slayer skill or something like that, and then all of a sudden her utility shoots up, or she gets, like, some crazy crit skill. Like, you could make her good pretty easily, even with, like, her base stats. But, yeah, we'll probably give her, like, some new stuff. I'm, I'm just not going to get into it right now because I haven't thought about it too much. But this is her new It portrait. says you're just turning her into Lynn. This is her new portrait, but I want to show you guys some other portraits. So there's okay. this one, and then there's this one. So this was the original Ow. portrait made by Nair. This one is kind of closer to, like, you can see over here on the right. You can see, like, her official art. I, I disagree. I think the new one actually looks closer. This looks like a dude. Yeah, one thing I didn't like is that her eyes are very small, and she kind of lacks, like, that expressiveness in her eyes, whereas she has it here. The reason I want this, and I, I, we may not even necessarily use this exact portrait, but the reason I like these eyes more than I like these eyes is because there's a certain cattiness there. There's a side of teasing kind of attitude. Like, she looks like she wants to, like, step on you, I guess. And I'm sure a lot of players are going to enjoy that. So I'm not necessarily saying that either of these are better than the original. I mean, on a technical level, I think they are, but... You know, I or would totally detail, understand but that it. That doesn't necessarily mean better, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I would understand if people definitely preferred this and they made, like, a mod. We could actually do a mod, by the way, where you can pick, like, because this is Lex Talionis, mm -hmm. you could just pick to keep the original portraits over the new ones. That's totally a Hold thing on. we could do. That might not be able to do because you said that Zelda Crafter specifically does not want his mm -hmm. work yeah. in this game. So having a yeah, toggleable option wouldn't work. For Thea specifically, we could, just because that's not a Zelda Crafter. Right, is it? No, no, it's got the, it's got the. It's oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. It is, but, but like, um, that the, wouldn't work, unfortunately. People could probably make their own mods or whatever. I, you know. Yes, and you can't me. control the modding community, so that is valid. There, there'll be someone within a day of it coming out who goes through and just puts the original Anduron pictures back into the game. I Dude, I can't, I can't wait for it. They're gonna be like, I fixed Clockinator's shitty choices with his shitty mods. Now we get the original portraits back, not these crappy knockoffs made by shitty spriders. Like, oh, no, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the people who are like, I fixed his shitty writing and I put back in the original script and everything, <laughs> and it's not going to make any sense since you're adding so much new. Like, it's going to be just conflicting, but they didn't think that far ahead. When you get the Nihil cut, 
Ahmed will be in every single cutscene, and he will voice every single line. You get Nihil at the very start of the game. He's like, "Hey, hey, fuck off! I'm the main character now." He just fucking stabs. Oh, so it'll, it'll be uh, it'll be Dorcas Emblem, but with Ahmed. Yes. And Morphball asked why does Zelda Crafter not want it in ND? Um, it's because he doesn't like AI, and we were using AI for some parts of New Dawn, so that's just the way it is. He doesn't that's... want to be involved with that project, and that's that's his choice. Yeah, that's a that's a. Uh, I know quite a few artists. A lot of them are like that. Um, that's why I respectfully, if they if I know they don't care for AI. I don't share anything with them that is made by AR that I know it is. It's just a, it's a respect thing. I don't want to degrade their craft or anything. I would also like uh, to while point I'm, out... While I'm thinking about it, someone asked about Angelus earlier, so let me know when I can bring that up, okay? Well, we'll worry about Angelus when we get to him. But yeah. I also I also want to mention that um, Mangs didn't actually pay Zelda Crafter for the portraits, so Zelda Crafter made them all for free. Mangs doesn't have, like, any... Like, he didn't purchase any rights to them. Yeah. So I think Zelda Crafter's perfectly within his rights to do that. Mangs did oh. pay Chelsea for some of her portraits, and he paid a few other people for portraits, but not Zelda. So if Zelda wants to pull them, that's on him. And I also yeah, think no, that's, Zelda... that's totally valid. I think Zelda should have been paid personally. In this project, I'm paying all of my spriters, at least to some extent. Like, you know, it depends on how much they've made or whatever, but mm -hmm. everyone's getting at least something. And I don't even have, yeah. like, YouTube money or anything. I'm just working, like, a crappy minimum wage Walmart job. So I'm just paying what I can to try and yeah. help out There's, the art I community. mean, for a project of this scale, whether or not it is a fan passion project or not, if you are paying some people for their work, that should be universal. You're either paying everybody or you're paying nobody. Because yeah, otherwise, I don't, I don't... it is it, it it's a ba it's a power balance that just completely goes to shit. Where the, what the? I don't know your your thing disappeared, but the portraits. It, I literally did nothing. It just turned off. Did I bump yeah, the escape? Luck Palion is closed. That that was stupid. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me just readjust this. That was really weird. That startled me. I was like, what did I do? I think. Oh, I think I bumped the enter button with my pinky. Stupid. Okay, so oh, anyway. and it and it hit OK and it just closed because of that. Yeah, stupid. Okay, we'll fix it. So anyway. Uh, where were we? We were on Thea. So we got, and by the way, this was an alternate version of Thea. This was a fusion of this Thea and this Thea into this one. So this is like the mm. fusion Thea. You can see her eyes are a little bit less catty and all that. So, you know, maybe some people would prefer this one. Um, I would be more than willing to provide all three as like an option for people if they want one or the other. I like so anyway, all of Thea. these. I like the original uh, as well. But or, I, I it like doesn't matter if... It doesn't matter if Clock now pays Zelda for the rights. It's because a uh, Zelda crafter specifically does not want to be associated with a project that uses AI artwork. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with being paid for their work. It's a it's a moral thing. So that that's why that wouldn't work. And it also is not Clock's job to pay debts on things that w was not his doing. You know, like yeah, he and have to I'd like and to mention too that I did actually consider offering to pay Zelda for it, mostly because I think the work that he did on Andoran Saga is good. Like, don't get me wrong. I I've said that these sprite, these these uh, splices are basic or whatever. That doesn't mean that they're bad. They're serviceable. They do the job. You know, like, that's Thea. Everyone people sees that. Love, people still love these designs. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I yeah, do. and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So, I think he should have been paid for it, and I would have been willing to pay him for the rights. But ultimately, I mean, I kind of feel like we needed to redo these sprites anyway. So, that was just, like, a personal decision I made. Okay, so we're going to move on from Thea. Yeah. Okay. So we got Samuel. Samuel's the same. He's exactly the same character. There's nothing changed about him. We might, like, alter his gameplay mechanics slightly. Like, very basic stuff, but it's not really worth People mentioning. People now always impale you. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the impale mechanic might get changed just mm. because I've never been a fan of it. But remember, there's different ways to mitigate it. And we can probably make those ways a little more obvious. I am going to point out, not... uh, Clock, if we keep going at life. this rate, we're going to be here till like, midnight. <laughs> Yeah, what time is it? Let's see, it's 3 o'clock. How long have we been streaming? Three hours. Uh, three hours and 15 minutes. Let's see. So we are on 7 of 15. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to speed run this. I'm going to cut down on the questions a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've got Lilinette. She's pretty much the same character. She has more happening in the narrative. She's good at diplomacy with the centaurs, for example. So Lilinette was underutilized. I'm going to over I'm going to more utilize her. Okay, so Sham. He's a bit too note. I need to expand on him being more than just depressed and angry slash gay. So, Agreed. I just feel like he needed more. And I remember one of you said you had an issue with Sham. Was that it? Um, I, 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 have I never liked him. I have an issue with what you wrote there. Because I one of the reasons why I rated Sham so high on my character tier list for this was because of how subtle it was. He wasn't just, I'm the gay one. It was actually something layered you had to go into. Like, yes, he was depressed from Jump Street. But you had to work to find out why. And I really liked that. 
I, I wouldn't I, change a thing about Shams writing. I yeah. highly okay. disagree with that. I he didn't like shout it from the rooftops, but it was kind of like a that is the only character trait he had. He is depressed because his boyfriend died or husband died, and that's that was it. So I I like Shams from a gameplay perspective. Um, I like the Sham Sheer and stuff. Like I like that you can take him different ways gameplay wise. But as a character, I just was kind of meh on Sham. Well, while we're talking about Sham, there. while we're talking about Sham, so I'm going to zoom this in real quick. So this is what Sham's current portrait looks like. Mm -hmm. And today I was given a few different alternate portraits. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be using any of these. Okay. But I wanted to make you guys aware these are work in progress. Very work in progress. I literally got them this morning. So don't be surprised if these get huge overhauls and changes or whatever. So you so have anyway, to this is something right now. Fuck. Okay, so anyway, here's Sham, and here's new Sham. Oh, God, that's not zoomed in very far. That looks like um, that Archibald guy. Yeah, he kind of yeah. became a lot older, so... Yeah, yeah, um, like yeah. a lot older. So in order to talk about Sham, we got to talk about, like, the things I don't like about Sham, like his portrait specifically. His portrait, if we look at the original portrait, which i got to go back now, PQRS... So if you look at the original portrait, we zoom in in about 300%. His eyes are a little bit wonky. They've yes. always been wonky. It's been a real issue with him. Otherwise, I'm totally fine with his design. The one thing to mention, though, he's using Binks's eyes from FE8, and he's using Binks's hair. That's like literally just Binks from FE8, and it's very obvious if you've played FE8. Mm. Yeah, so... Um, I would like to change that up. So he's probably going to get a new portrait at some point. We really, really want to make sure that he looks just as depressed as... Uh, uh, who's the gold standard here? Kaya. We want him to look... That's not the right one. Oh, yeah, it is. She's just not supposed to be smiling. You, no, you, have, to, you have to cloud the eyes. It's that. It's the other yeah. eyes. I want to make sure that he's on par with Kaya in terms of looking depressed. Him and her are kind of competing for like the same personality spot, which isn't necessarily good. But there'll there'll be different like themes of depression. It's not like depression is only one thing. There's different ways you can do it. That's true. Okay, but let's move on. Yeah. So, um, Estelle, I want to totally overhaul her character to make her an actual expert practitioner of the Lightbringers. Instead of being a brain dead trauma victim, she will be someone focused on restoring the Lightbringer legacy. Perhaps she even has a stash of historical tomes she carries with her. Um, I wrote this three months ago. I might change it a little bit now. Um. She is going to be an actual expert, though. Like, that is a thing. So okay. she declares she's an expert. She is an expert. As far as being a brain-dead trauma victim, I think her trauma is important. It's like a core part of her character. So probably going to keep that. Uh, Lena, we talked about her earlier. Yes. Yeah. She's so led around by Estelle. Fred. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on from her. So Fred, he gets a choice of weapon on promo now. This is going to be a really interesting option. So I'd like to make his Guide and Talks meteor as well, but the choice of weapon is like when he becomes a paladin, he has lances, and then he can get swords, axes, or bows. Hmm. So that's you know, interesting. A little bit, a little bit of fun stuff. Uh, Ralph Near he joins in Chapter Two alongside Barrett now, giving him the whole game to grind max. So getting Ralph Near to become like a Yarl is actually going to be pretty easy now. Like, yeah, if if you, if you get a uh, what do you call it a pre-promote a uh, uh what, what's a, what's a tier zero called I forget. Oh, uh, training. Yeah. If you get a trainee in Chapter 2, it's going to be pretty easy. It's just like with, um, uh, from FE8. Uh, That's why I don't use Ewan, because he's too late. He's a yeah, you get Ewan too late. too late. At least with yeah. Ewan, you're, it's an FE8. You can grind him up in the arena, yeah. but you can't do that here. Ewan, so, yeah, anyway. Ewan is uh, one is of my Ross. favorite characters in that game. Yeah, this is just Ross now. But like I said, this is a change that Xavier put in his hacks ages ago, because it, you're right, it's too late to get a trainee. Plus, you get mm -hmm. Sigrid, the same map, who also needs just as much babying. Yeah. So you're going to get Ralphnir in Chapter 2. And because you get him in Chapter 2, um, you obviously get Bjarki later. But Ralphnir being in Chapter 2 is going to open up some other options, which I'm not going to go into. Okay. But let's just say, if you think about all the characters that he can interact with, there's a few really interesting options that he would otherwise miss out on by appearing when he does later on in the game. Like one of them, for example, being Sigmar. Or maybe there's some other ones. Okay. So I Barrett, send a um, Discord message real fast. Nope. So I can't like look at things at the same time. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you meant you were sending me a message. Oh no. Okay. So we got Ralph, and then we got Barrett. Barrett is fine, but she could have, she could also have some more interesting character development to at least match Bjarki as a unit. She's also not as good as her cousin either. This is less important now that okay. you're not getting her and Bjarki at the same time in the same class. Yeah. So not so much of an issue anymore but as a character she's just kind of boring she like cooks and that's 
you know, like we'll she's, figure out. She is the no, I, no. Okay, so I can I can counter that a little bit, but it was when she was with the Arky that this is relevant, so it may not matter now. But she yeah. was like the two sides of the coin of coming into a different culture. And, ex and having to effectively make your peace with it. Bjarki was the standoffish one who kind of drew the comparisons in his own way, but kept to himself. Yeah. And Barrett was the one who embraced the new culture and tried to be like, this is different, but also I'm not opposed to that it being different. Mm -hmm. But with Ralph there being her now companion for this, that might not be important at all, so... I want That's to answer. I want to answer some things mentioned in chat. Uh, Toko okay. the Gecko says, "I think most of these portraits make the characters look older." Completely agree, and that is a deliberate yes. choice in most cases, especially with Runa. We wanted to age Runa up a little bit, and there's some good reasons for that. We're literally about to get to her, but there's a few other characters that we aged up, like Thea. Um, because of how the rebellion thing works and how long ago it was, it's a little weird when Bottomon was like. 14 when he first joined the rebellion i don't know if i like that so we're aging it was an a lot anime of decision. how many anime characters are in high school when they have no fucking business being in high school like it's it's a problem that just anything with an anime aesthetic will have so yeah. aging them up is a smart decision yeah so um, there, there's gonna be i do think historically there's basis for bodymon being that age though because they're you know that is no, what I agree we with used that, to do I'm you just, know people used just to like lie a... to go to war about what yeah, it's just was. it's just kind of like an executive decision. Mm -hmm. So um, Morfall says I'm very excited for new Runa. Her new portrait and idea for character is awesome. I'm assuming Morfall already saw it because I've already posted Runa before in the Discord. Yeah, you haven't so. shown it off to the stream though, so we definitely want to see that because new yes. Runa was good. So um, Roark also asked, will Barrett be like a mother sister figure for Ralphnir? Yes. Not going to go into it too much, but yes, they are going to have a special relationship. And uh -huh. I don't mean like I don't mean like sex, but like yeah. they are going to have a relationship. And you remember too that. <laughs> Barrett actually mentioned uh, Ralphnir in the original game. She mentioned how he was like a son of the former Jarl who she cared about. Mm -hmm. So, god damn it, chat. Stop talking about mommy. This is disgusting. <laughs> okay, we're just going to move on to Runa. Okay. So she's extremely bland and needs more going on than just magic daddy stuff. This is an old comment, obviously. I wrote this entire character section three months ago, and a lot's changed. Runa's changed, so it's time to see the change. Okay, let's scroll down. Where's Runa? Get ready, guys. This I The new Runa portrait, okay. I'm in favor of. Okay, here's old Runa. And remember, Runa is just Ronan from FE5. That's it. Yep. She's just, just Ronan. There's nothing extra going on there. And then she has, like, her daddy, and then she kind of, like, something about magic. Bleh. But now we're aging her up. Instead of being like 14 or 12 or whatever it is. The class now... promotion music from Anduron started playing. <laughs> well, she it's promoted, so baby. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. Like that. She's much I'm older now. Button. I'm getting the button again. Now she pops. That's, so a, this... that's a glow up right there. Yeah, she has one of the hardest, sickest glow ups in everything. Like, mm -hmm. Runa almost solely justifies her existence. However, she's not the best new portrait. Uh, that's for Alonda, who I'm saving for last. Okay. So we're going to save Alonda for the very end of the stream. Okay, guys? Alonda is the best new portrait. So, but Runa, second place, probably. Okay. So she has um, some new stuff, but I'm not going to talk about it because we're kind of like, we're, we're taking a while with this stream. So we're just going to move on. Uh, you get Femke in 2X, you get Femke in 14 and 25. I already talked about all this. Yes. Uh, she's enrolled in clerical school. She rejoins you later. So that's pretty cool. She also gets a healing skill later on in the game that she cannot get by leveling normally. This is your incentive to not use her to recruit all the characters easily. If you get her in the late game, she's like really extra super powerful. So um, I did uh, keep a question for when it was going to be on topic, and now it's on topic. Uh, Max the Mage Lord asks, are you adding more staves? A staff locked unit like Femke won't sound that useful in the late game with a lack of cool staves like Sleep, Fortify, etc. And yeah, there's and barely a, any a, more a, units to recruit. Yeah, that's a Ming's design decision. But remember too, so first off, we don't just have staves that we can use. We have activatable skills. And she already has two. We could easily add more. She could be like the skill unit where you activate like special skills to like, I don't know, stun lock enemy units. And these don't even use staves. She doesn't necessarily have to use staves. Or we could also do a thing, which is she gets like the sleep staff or the warp staff or something. And they're locked to her specifically. Like, I don't know. She went to cleric school or something and she learned how to use it. It's just a Thracia those. thing where like you want this all powerful staff. You have to use this unit for it. That's fair. Yeah, and she's it's a, way, she, it's a good way to rein in the power of it. And one of the reasons I don't mind making her so crucial to the story and giving her things like recruiting characters, she's Jaka's sister, so it's okay because mm -hmm. Jaka's going to become the main character, and you want his sister to have some presence. 
and her like recruiting characters because she's so cute like first off that's an adorable mechanic but also um it, it just kind of gives her more relevance to the plot and keeps her relevant as Jaka's sister okay so we're gonna move on from femke though we've talked about her plenty uh we've got kaya so kaya i showed off before do, do, yes do, do, do. That's uh, the just, uh the, pe- the one that this... people think is a dragon yeah, this is well. She's uh, she's from Styxia, but I guess yeah. we originally actually considered making her from Timaeus, so maybe we'll change this to a normal ear. I don't know. I think you we'll should if you them. don't want to communicate dragon, because yeah. yeah, yeah, also yeah. from like, he... like I said, all of my chat was like, "Oh, it's a Talia's dragon." Okay, so she's a supposed <laughs> there it is again, a supposed Styxian slave on the run. She seeks shelter with Bottomon to evade her pursuers in Angrix Forest. Okay, maybe she joins you at the start of the forest instead of inside the Gaiden, whatever. However, she is actually a Styxian... Oh, I, I, I did spoil it here. Okay. She is actually a Styxian spy sent to keep an eye on the Northerners and infiltrate their ranks. Okay. She is a strength-focused sword unit, so as to stand apart from... That. No, it's fine. It's fine. I've, the way I see it is anything I put in the document, I'm willing to spoil. If it's if I wasn't going to... Sp- if it's not in the document, I won't spoil it. Okay. Okay? So, it's whatever. So, she's a strength-focused sword unit, so as to stand apart from Thea, Victoria, and Natalie. Okay. That's her, that's her shtick. Let's move on. Victoria, she needs better endgame potential. Maybe swap out Brave Lion for a slightly less OP skill that will allow her more weapon types than just swords. Also, a Regalia would be nice. Um, this is regalia. also this is also an old one because now, you know, you could just S rank and then you can use Regalia, so probably not too big of a deal now. Um, Garam, he will remain pretty much the same except that armored units are going to get a big buff of some sort to offset their armor slaying weakness. I really just like Garam. He's just well balanced, so he's just a good character and he's got good dialogue and everything. I low-key don't want him to have a helmet when he promotes, but that's just me. Natalie. Natalie's going to be very exciting. So Natalie will receive a unique skill based on whoever recruits her from her village in Chapter 4. Ooh. Pretty cool. Later on in the game, she'll get access to a Tier 3 Flame Guard class that allows her to use most weapon types. Also pretty cool. Yeah. So here's another fun thing that's not mentioned in this document. At some point, I imagine people are going to make randomizers of this if I don't myself because I want to. I mean, um, yeah, gonna... having it drop out with a randomizer is like a feature in the game built in would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would love to. I mean, like, let me get this. Let me make this absolutely clear. I fucking love randomizers. So if I can, <laughs> I will. But if I if it's like too much work, you know, I'll have to wait. But anyway, if you randomize the game, I'm already going to have it pre-made. So Natalie can have, you know how she has a unique dialogue in her house? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's going to have a unique dialogue with every single recruitable character in the game. Like, even if you can't get them. So if you, like, randomize characters around, and I don't know, like, uh, uh, Bjarki, like, visits her house, or maybe that's not a good option because she already has a dialogue with him. Uh, like, if Darius visits her house because you randomized him, he'll have a unique conversation with her. So, so you're going you're gonna to write extra dialogue and extra skills in on the that will only ever appear during randomizers. I think yeah, that is a beautiful that's attention awesome. to detail. Yeah, because I've always, you know, I've, one of the reasons I wrote Natalie the way I did with her house, I hate when you do the FE6 Lou house thing where you visit the house and the character talks to themselves and recruits themselves. Like, mm. why do you even have this dialogue? You might as well just have them stand on the map and have only one character talk to them. Well, so, what you're doing is you're also modifying it for not just people who play this casually, but people who play this and do content for it. It's why a lot of games nowadays that are platformers come with a, uh, a speed run mode. So you're actually you're actually future proofing yourself to make your game have more lasting appeal, which I think is a great idea. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to Alonda. You'll notice a star here. Alonda has the new portrait. We are not going to show off that portrait until the end of the stream. That's the final thing we're gonna show off in the stream. So Alonda comes with E rank swords so that she can use Dawn Collar at base. Um, this is actually a little bit different. We're going to make it so that she has E-Rank Swords, and she cannot gain any further EXP. She is locked to E-Rank Swords. She can only use Dawn Color and, like, an Iron Sword or whatever. So okay. that's her thing. She has Light Magic, she has Staves, and she has E-Rank Swords. So she can use Dawn Color at base, and that's just, that's, like, her big change, aside from the portrait. So that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, we're also going to make her more relevant in the story. She got forgotten after Chapter, like, 15, 16, 20 or something like that. That's not going to be a thing in my version. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alonda Hype. <laughs> Morph Ball's mad because I didn't show off Alonda's new portrait. Sorry, guys. You gotta, gotta wait. Wait till the end of the stream. Okay, so Theodore. Um, 
we're going to give him anima and lances instead of swords. He can get swords through some story means, but he's going to have lances at base so he can use the Rose Thorn. That way it's not just like locked to a support. I like this better because the other house Rose Regalia is anima magic, which is good. And honestly, who the fuck cares about Theo using swords? You have sword users already. Yeah, and that way he's also not competing with like, you know, Thea, Kaya, and the other sword users. Natalie, yeah. Okay, so he can get swords through some other story means, like perhaps an A-rank support with bottom on. So, yeah, he also needs a lot more story presence in the second half. We've talked about that. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. he, we need more Theo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Zacharias, there's something that's not mentioned here, but I'm going to continue. Uh, we might adjust Zacharias' stats slightly. I've always felt he's a little bit worse than Dawn in the stats department, like the killing department, but he's a good unit. Um, he can save Alonda's life when Skillin nearly kills her by breaking his Luminous Staff and dying. But there's Wait, another does thing. That mean this, does that mean the Luminous Staff is now a guaranteed get and you don't have to do the wedding to get it? Yeah. No, you don't have to do the okay. wedding. Yeah, you're going to get the Luminous Staff. Okay. The wedding, the wedding, the wedding bonuses are going to be changed a little bit. Ferdinand's actually going to give you something pretty cool, but I'm not going to go into that. So, um, Zacharias and Dawn, uh, they have a new plot twist, which I'm not going to tell you but there's a very, very cool plot twist. And they're not the only ones who are getting, like, a big plot twist, too. There's one other person. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, who was it? Uh, who else gets the really cool plot twist? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Tendaris. Tendaris, Dawn, and Zacharias all get some really seriously cool plot twists. Uh, it's going to completely recontextualize certain things in the game. So look forward to that. That's going to give you some real content. Ooh. Okay, so then we've got Amelia. Amelia... Uh, we have a new portrait for Amelia. I'm going to show that off in a second. Actually, you know what? Let's just do it right now. Okay. Amelia. Amelia, where is she? Oh, I didn't mean to... Okay, whatever. Well, here's her old <laughs> portrait. Yeah. Here's her new portrait. Okay, I like it, but I have one request. Can oh, you yeah. not fucking take away her little giggle before she crits when she promotes? That was like the best thing about her. No, we're going to we're gonna keep that. What would make you think we got rid of that? Good. I so yeah, she's. I, I, you'll I, notice. I you'll notice she's. She's. She's a lot older here, and she's a little bit younger. She's kind of younger, actually. I think she's probably about the same age. She just has a very different, older aesthetic to her. Yeah. It's, it's just the hat not covering the face. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. And due to GBA limitations, we had to angle the hat downward in order to fit inside the hat box. We don't have to do that with Lex Talion, so she gets the full hat, and she can actually like look at characters. So. Another thing is, I really don't like this particular portrait style. I do believe this is Cyrene from FE8's body. So mm. Zelda Crafter likes using this portrait for a few different other circumstances. And he uses it a little bit too much. It's very recognizable to someone who like pays attention to that stuff. So now she has a more standardized portrait. And I also like, okay, so I kind of just really like her like little frills that she has down here. Mm -hmm. These little frills, they're really cute. Yeah. And she's got like, she's got like the little mage glasses and studios. Yeah, she looks less sexy, more like a bookworm, but some guys are, you know. Some guys are kind of into there it. There are people who love Velma from Scooby-Doo. I don't get it, but I'm not going to degrade them for it. Yeah. And also, by the way, here's a fun fact. For you. you actually cannot insert this portrait into a GBA ROM hack. It has like 24 colors because of her glasses. Every single mm. pixel in here is a different color from the rest of her body. That's the only way to get like that semi-transparent look. So, I see. Huh. If you wanted to put this into a ROM hack, you'd have to remove this and just give her like standard eyes. It would look like she has no glass inside of her glasses. Mm. Kind of like the old Amelia. Yeah. But anyway, so that's this is new Amelia's portrait, and she's also got one where she's holding her little book. That's very cute. I like yeah, that. People so, in chat are freaking out about how perfect she looks. <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, yeah, apparently, yeah, those, blah, apparently blah. those frills are called the uh, Apollets. Oh, very nice. By the way, if we actually... Oh, I noticed there's a little pixel error right here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fire the spiders. Uh, again, very, very easy fix. Fire the spiders, dude worthless no i'm just kidding so if you actually half close Hate your eyes, them then. if you half close her eyes which i can't show it kind of looks like she's looking down at her book which is going to be useful for certain cutscenes. like imagine jocka walking oh, in yeah, on her and she's looking down at her down book here. and not paying attention to him while he talks it could you be can fun get down here in the in the like underneath the moving sprite you can yeah see yeah right here mm -hmm. yeah there you go yeah okay. just imagine so it's that it's it works so, um, Amelia only has dark magic, so she feels underwhelming. Might change her to be a generalist instead of a crit specialist. Perhaps a skill related to terrors. This does feel... I put this in because it feels like she, like her archetype is fighting against her story role. And remember, her story role came later. We added that later. So, mm -hmm. it's one of those, like, maybe... Wait, no, if no, no, no. Looked... Hold on. Hold on. Don't go offensive with it. Go defensive. Like, maybe she takes less damage 
from terrors that she's yeah because she, she's familiar with them so is she like exactly she gives like an anti-terror radius and anyone within the radius like takes 50 percent less damage or something something I mean, like that yeah we'd have to think about it yeah. okay so but they let's have talk to be about... like specific terrors that she's studied not like ones that she's never seen hmm. okay let's go to buggy next remember we're trying to we're trying to speed this up a little bit yeah so um buggy is too much of a meme unit we'll give him a skill that randomly steals gold from his enemies based on his stats okay so We'll make him just generally better, and he also has like, this cool I, that gold makes me steel. Sad. I like. I only like Buggy because he's a meme. If he yes. wasn't a meme, I wouldn't use him. To be clear, I'm not talking about his story role. He's still going to have the same personality. I'm just talking about oh, like his he, gameplay. He still punched his wife in her face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, we're not going to change that. Uh, Jahira, perfect as is. We're not changing her at all, uh, even in the story. Just keeping her the same. Uh, Kurt, why doesn't he get swords on promo or anything of use? So yeah. Um, he's going to get swords now when he promotes to ranger or whatever. That just felt like something that was missed. So it's also weird because Natalie gets the same promo and she gets swords and bows. So mm. uh, Elmer, uh, a star here. We don't have a new portrait for him, but we are going to be making a new portrait. Uh, he gets access to Ferdinand's class in the endgame, which is a tier three class wielding all magic and staves. Yes. So you finally have a reason to level Elmer up. Yes. He's going to become an absolute badass. And remember... Remember, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Natalie gets a tier three class. Yes, uh, you did. Elmer mention. gets a tier three class, and then um, Christine uh, is uh, going to have a tier three class. Yeah, probably. I think so. And then uh, uh, what was the other? Ralphner. Ralphner could become Jarl, which is a tier three. Can, class. can I can I roll it back to what you just said a second ago when you said now we finally have a reason to use Elmer? So you're saying, as the writer for Anderon, there was never a reason before now to bother putting up with Elmer. No, I mean, the problem is just that he's, like, weak gameplay no, no, no. You get him. No, 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 we know what you're saying. I just wanted to hear you say it. Yeah, no, there there was no reason. Like, he was crap. Thank you. That's all. That's on the record. That's official. Yep. And we're okay. moving on. Okay. So we've got Haley, Shay, and Mortimer, perfect as is. But new portrait for Haley, new portrait for Shay. Let's have a look. Oh, hell okay, yeah. so first off, we're going to look. Here's old Haley. This is what she looks like in Vanilla Andor. Let's go ahead and move that yeah, box she's, down. She's girl Robin Hood. Yep. Yep, she's... Uh, I actually would describe her as female John Wick with a Robin Hood aesthetic. And oh, then, okay, yeah. Personality-wise and aim-wise, yeah, sure, John Wick, but I meant look-wise. And then now we've got her new her new sprite. So this is her new sprite, and this is a little bit of a contentious one. Some people really don't like it. I now like it a lot. like Shrek Robin Hood. <laughs> like, specifically the one from Shrek. The thing that I like about this sprite, so I should talk about what I don't like about this sprite. This hat looks like it's sitting off kilter, like it's barely on her head. This one looks like it's snugly on her head. Now, the one thing I don't like about this sprite necessarily is the red, because she's a hunter. She's in the woods. Would she really yeah. wear eye-catching red? No, she know. would not. I don't Unless know. Unless she's but... hunting bulls and trying to piss them off. But at the same time, this one's very subdued. And this one just kind of like, it just kind of like grabs your attention a little bit more, which is not good for a hunter, but maybe she's not a hunter. She's in the army now, so it's okay. I don't know. But I like the little feather up here. The old feather was fine too. I didn't really have a problem with it, but I just like the way that the new hat and the stitching and everything looks. Kind of hugs her head. It feels a little bit better. Um, I understand if people don't like this one. But we've got Haley Stern. Let's go ahead and take off her smile. And we've got Haley with a smile. Why did she jerk all the way over to the side? That's we don't weird. question why Haley jerks where she oh, jerks. Oh, 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 so these are actually two different portraits. One is made, uh, the frames down here are the only thing that's different. They're the same portrait, but one of them was made by Tack, which was, uh, this one was made by Tack, and this one was made by Nair. So if we actually do her talk frames, I uh, probably can't really oh, see Oh, yeah, it, you do see it. Okay, no, when she wasn't talking, I didn't see mm, it, but you, yeah. she's got a slightly smaller face on the one that's far to the right. Yeah, if you look at this one, so I have her smile frame activated and she's talking. So if we look at the one made by, by Nair, she's got a really wide smile. If we look at the one made by Tack, got kind of a fainter smile. You see? Wider, fainter. Yeah, Wider, fainter. So they uh, actually... Guys, they... If you put a hood on her, you can't put a feather in it. It would look ridiculous. Yeah, but basically these convey slightly different emotions, so, you know, maybe we'll use them. So anyway, um, other than Haley, we also have Shay. And Shay looks like this. This is what Shay looks like. Yeah. So, you know, um, one thing I notice if you zoom in, her mouth is really weird, like the way it, like, pops in. I, I, it's, it's always bothered me. This is just, like, an <laughs> issue with Shay. Like, <laughs> it's like she's, yeah. like, growing lips. Now here's new Shay. Oh, Aww. she's cute. I like I like, the, I like, I like the prominent hairband on yeah. her. Yeah, the hairband is very cute. Because it looks less like you're, you've just combined two different pieces of hair together because it looks like it just flows naturally. Yeah. 
And um, some people I, don't like these these, these hair bangs because they're a little bit less detailed. There's more of a blobular color right there. I, oh, I like this more. Her, it works for her. And here's and the, the other thing too. Look at look look, look a at, lot nicer on her. Look at the outline of her eyes. She gets uh, like she gets uh, eyelashes. Yeah. Um, I had also, a question this, for about up? Shay earlier, so I saved that for now. Um, sure. Retcon asks: Will Shay now not kill the squad she leads in cold blood, like in vanilla? Yeah, yeah, that was really weird. They're gonna turn green and just kind of help you out. Okay. And then fly away afterward. I uh, played the Chris cut. He did a thing where. Uh, one of the sisters, I think it was the dumb one, I can't remember her name, if you talk to her with Shay, no, not Shay, if you talk to her at all, I think, she backs out, oh, I used Madeline, that's what it was, she backs out, and then they send you reinforcements in Holtmeyer later on, led by her, and I don't know if any of that exists in the regular Anderon, but it impressed the hell out of me. That is pretty I cool. Because I never saw it coming. I might, I might nick that, I don't know, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it's a really good idea. Okay. Well, we'll really move. Need it done. We'll move on to speed things up. Okay, so we've got Mortimer. He's perfect as is. We're going to move on to Christina. Um, she can possibly gain access to the Dragoon class by perhaps supporting with the Timaeotin. This is yes! one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons why we've added Kaya. Now we have an early game unit that Christina can support with. Wait, uh, not Kaya. Sorry, uh, Timaeotin would be like Jahira. Yes. So maybe if she supports with Jahira, she can get the Dragoon class. I she wanted can the Dragoon to. for so long. So that's that's like a thing. Other than that, Christine is pretty much the same. I will show off one thing really quick. Do do do. Let me just find it. Uh, New Dawn stream stuff. Uh, ba 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 ba. Where is it? Ash blast. Ferdinand stomp. Here it is. Oh, do we have another uh, clip coming up? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put it. I gotta, I gotta I gotta mute my media. There you go. I don't think you're gonna be able to hear it because I don't think you, the audio transmits over it Discord. Does. But it's not. Important. No, no, it, it it did. It did before. Oh, that was gorgeous. That yeah, that looks great. That looks fantastic. I love and again, I've always loved the rose effect when they crit with it. So this animation That's was made awesome. by Nameless, but I need to state right off the bat, this is not a full animation that he made. It doesn't have all of her weapons or anything. I would need to commission it for her, but that's what it could look like. Okay. If the demand is there. Okay, and by the way, he made that just barely in time for Anderon Saga before it released, but we didn't have the room to insert it, so it never got added. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, so let's move on. Harriet, it just says more useful utility. Harriet is a replacement character in Anderon Saga. She has very little story presence, and she's just overshadowed by all the other staff users. She's not very good. Yes. I'm going to make her better. I'm not going to say how, just we'll make her better. Worry about that later. Okay, let's talk about Hubert. Um, I already talked about Hubert before. So Hubert is Alexander's illegitimate bastard son. He's a noble of Spear Garden, which that should actually be Saffron. Sorry, people. He is overweight <laughs> and insecure about that, so he fled his house not only to escape his father's notice, but to try and become a self-made man. He's a great inventor, and he even creates a crossbow. A bolt bow, he calls it, which he later applies pyrokinetic engineering to make variants that have explosive bolts. Is oh, yeah, that so why he's... he hates men? Because of Alexander? Could be. I can make it a thing. But he makes the bolt bow first, that's what it is, and then he gets the hand cannon later. So it's not like something he has right off the bat. And we've got Rod. Um, he joins you in Chapter 10 like in Vanilla, but is now a level 1 hero. I'm actually going to change this. So he's not a hero now. And now that we're on Rod, and I've already shown you guys Rod's portrait, do you think it's time for me to show you guys Rod's new animations? Yes. Yes. Y you sure you want to see? I don't know, guys. Do you want to see his new animations, chat? Guys, can we get a nut in chat if you want to see these animations? So let's talk about what Rod is specifically. Rod is now a uh, a lord class, like Elliewood. So okay. we're going to start with his basic lore. Oops. Let's go ahead and just zoom in. It's going to be up here at the top left, Chris. Yeah, I see that. I got to do the thing. There we go. And God. Now, the reason why we made him a Lord class, first off, he's a former noble. And secondly, you'll notice because he's got the French thing going on, he has a rapier. He's got, he's, yeah, he's got the rapier. I thought it was I thought it was honestly just to be ironic. Like, he hates the nobles. So now he is one. Kind of like what they did with Ike in FE9 because he fucking hates nobles and then they made him a Lord. That also reminds me, I need to find, where is it? Hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Let me just scroll down, grab this image, open in browser. 
Yes, guys, this is this is really a thing. I swear to God. Oh, this I is forgot actually, about this. This is you actually gonna be this. in the ROM, guys. Hey. Hey, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He showed yeah. me this before, and I was like, why? Not really. It's not really gonna be in the ROM, guys. But it is funny. Him wielding a baguette. <laughs> okay. Um, so that could be a support conversation where he had a dream that he was wielding one. Yeah, maybe. Oh no, my daughter. I had a terrible dream last night. I don't know why he's like talking like that, but whatever. So this is him with his rapier. Now, what if I told you that after he talks to Hubert later on in the game, he can get something else? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> and God, you filthy swine. And. <laughs> He also has this. He's got the rapier. And what about when he crits? Boom. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. I cast gun. gun. Now, w when he wields thin swords, because he's going to have a variety. He's going to get the rapier. He's going to get the flamberge. He's going to get a few other ones that are all notable thin swords. He has the rapier animation, but he also has a broadsword animation for slashing weapons. All I can think of is the from the first Pirates of the Caribbean where he goes to draw the sword and fucking Jack Sparrow's pointing gun. He's like, you cheated. Pirate, <laughs> you cheated. French. All right. There is one other animation for Rod. I don't know. Do you do guys want to see it? Do it. I mean, you, pr you probably don't want to see it, though, do you guys? You, you realize sure? that every time you tease us like that, you just don't, you extend the stream's time, right? Yeah, okay. Here it is. Three, two, one. One last animation. Oh, the rifle. <laughs> oh, with the <laughs> All twirl. of these were made Better by Better than nameless. a flintlock pistol. These look yeah. so good. These are, this is his long range weapon. It's probably going to be like three to five range or something like that. Just something absolutely ridiculous. So, I like the, uh, smash, yeah. the smash quotes in chat. For his neutral B, he wields a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's Rod for you guys, man. He's got lot. This is him in tier one. By the way, he has a tier two. I'm actually not going to reveal it during the stream. You guys can get I, to find can I, out. Can I call the? Can I name that particular animation? What do you mean? We're out of frog's legs. Oh my god. We're out of frog legs. No, I cast a gun. Okay, we're gonna move on now. Yeah. So that was that was yeah. Rod. Minion 105 has changed. That's obviously Penny now. I mean uh, Renee. God damn it, son of a bitch. Um, Lester, we talked about him. Uh, if you didn't recruit Rod, Lester will appear in Chapter 10 instead. So um, I've not decided what class he will be. Yeah, I have. Uh, Lester is going to be... Um, okay, so he's called... It, he's like a Myrmidon, but he's like the FE10 Myrmidon, and he promotes to the uh, FE10 Swordmaster or something like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a special animation where it looks like a samurai with a shield. Um, I'm not going to really show it off here, but just trust me, it looks cool. We'll make a version that looks like it fits Lester. There, there okay. is a Myrmidon uh, animation out there in one of the games I played recently where they effectively do, like, the draw cut thing. Mm. Like, it's kind of like a mix of, like, a Myrmidon and Lin without it being as feminine. I don't know I don't remember which one it was, but I, I know it's out there. And Grayside asks, do enemies also get gunpowder weapons? No. No. And the reason for that is because Hubert is the gun's expert like he's the guy who invents guns mm. so will this change the future of warfare for the sequel ah, maybe who knows but uh, for right now the new house house boomstick and i approve of this but for right now it's just hubert who gets a hand cannon and rod who gets a musket but who knows maybe other characters will get guns if they uh if they uh get some supports with hubert who knows so anyway, we've got um, we got him. Now we got Lester. So Lester, you can recruit him with any Mouthrack adjacent character like Coulter, Thea, Jaka, mm -hmm. except not Coulter because Coulter appears later, but I digress. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, you can only recruit her in Chapter 14 if you recruited Lester. Otherwise, Lester will be in prison with her, and you can only free them to let them go on their own way. So you recruit Lester, and then you can take him into the prison to recruit his wife who is inside one of the cells. Probably the same cell where he was in Vanilla. Okay. Is there going to be an indication that you should lead him into? Because the cell, don't forget, chapter four, or the, the prison chapter is Fog of War. And for a new player, they would have no indication that they need to field Lester for Like, maybe some kind of... Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll think of something. I, we're yeah. out, obviously, gameplay transparency is, like, a big issue for me. So you we'll want, Yeah, you that. want to be fair to your players when they're going in blind. Okay, so then we've got Isabel. She's much easier to recruit. You can either recruit her directly with Femke or talk to her with Bottomon or Jaka to get her to stand down and step aside. So this is a new thing. So now you can talk to her and just get her to move. Then if you end the chapter without killing her, she is also recruited. So okay. you have to. she has to survive the chapter to be recruited or Femke can recruit her directly on that chapter, which is a good way to get some experience. You know, hey, pretty mm -hmm. cool. 
Um, but having her, um, you, if you just miss talking with her, as long as she survives the chapter, you recruit her. Otherwise, she's going to be pretty much the same. She's the best character in the game, without a doubt. Yeah. Will we, will we hit her with the nerf stick? Probably not. So yeah. Albert, pretty much the same as Vanilla. That's all we have to say on that. Albert's great. All right. He's a little, he's a little fragile, but he's really good. So He dies to a 1% crit, though. I can confirm this. So now we've got Crixus, and you guys remember I posted Crixus's uh, new portrait right here, which yes. you can see this in the is, bottom this is left. Dan. Yeah, this is Quarter Dan now. And Crixus originally he had the helmet. This was the meme unit that you get in the prison chapter. Now where you'll actually get Crixus probably isn't in the prisons. This was written when I was thinking about putting him in the prisons with Ralph near. But anyway, uh, he is now Half Dan's younger brother, a former warrior turned mystic who saw visions from a Lightbringer shrine that turned him away from the path of bloodshed. His exact recruitment chapter is still up in the air. So he's going to be like a quiet, introverted sort of fellow, someone who's very thoughtful, and he's not really into the path of blood. I mean, he'll still fight and kill, but he's not like as warlike as his brother. Okay. Uh, Don, big new story, Rel. Hmm, no, no comment on that. Mm. Uh, and then we've got Caroline. So actually, this is wrong. We're totally redoing this. Uh, I was originally planning to just remove Armand. Um, we have new plans for this. So instead... I think we're going to make it so that way Caroline was betrothed to Armand through an arranged marriage, and she didn't truly love him, but he was a good man. She acknowledges that. She just didn't really love him. And then she fell in love with Jaka during the war, and then Armand was killed. And then um, then after she went back, and uh, then he was killed, and then she went back and got with Alexander through perhaps another arranged marriage, and she doesn't love Alexander either. By making it an arranged marriage, it makes her a lot more forgivable than if she just cheated on a good man that she was supposed to love. It really just sounds like you're trying to justify cheating here. Like, just let her be a villain. Who cares? Yeah, I agree. Uh, let I her be know. a villain. I never liked her. She's just a real piece of shit. It. I just yeah, thought she's a real piece of shit. Some people are like that, and you can still find redeeming qualities without actually liking everything about them. I don't think you need to change her right. I agree. I don't Although know. I, I just I never I, bought her. You can give her a lot more character because she also is kind of one. Well, yeah, note. she doesn't. She just appears. But what I'm saying is for this part specifically. I I'm not. Know. I'm not talking about that. I just mean she kind of talks about one thing, and that's it. Yeah, that's true. And she's just like my husband Armand. Yeah, I mean she can absolutely have more than that. So we'll just say that Caroline's still a work in progress. All right. No portrait so to got, share for her yet. Nothing new. No. no. Uh, we've got Aisha. Uh, she's the same as Vanilla, except she comes at level 18, more use for story purposes in Stixia. She's kind of she's kind of really fragile on the boat, and I almost never get to use her until I get to Hornheim. Yeah, like, but Aisha's, she's Aisha's, pretty much a, Aisha's pretty much a good character. She just needs more story presence, more guide and talks, and that should solve that. Then we've got Sigmar. So if you talk to him with Barrett, blah, 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 he will have the same base personality, perhaps an arc where he grows out of his Sigma male ways into a female respecter. Who knows? Yeah, so... He's still up in the air a little He'll bit. Become, his, his promotion is feminist. <laughs> oh my god. I don't yeah, know. This, yeah, this one reads that. also to me as a little bit maybe too meme -y. Yeah, who knows? Um, but Sigmar was always a meme. Like, we made him a Sigma male. Now that we're making him recruitable, maybe we make him, like, a little bit different. I'll have to think about that later. Um, Sigrid, she can promote into a druid, harrier, or a summoner. I think this is a pretty important change. Yes. Um, Sigrid is... So, she's, like, half of a... Uh, uh, like half of a recruit, I'm not recruit, um, a trainee. A trainee, which is what people were saying earlier too. Yeah, so she doesn't get a tier three like the other trainees, but getting three promotion options is pretty good. Most characters don't get that. So, Also, I think well, it's hilarious, way, just to jump back for half a second, um, in Warhammer, like the god of men is Sigmar. So I just think this is funny. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, um, Sigrid, she, most characters, by the way, are still, like Vanilla Andron, not going to get multiple promotions. Yeah, so that, earn... that's a good way to make Sigrid feel unique to the yes. game. Yeah. Like, they just have, like, some kind of a minor cutscene that explains, like, her potential is that. I always, I always disliked that she could only become a druid, because her I sister's a harrier, and a summoner would feel pretty cool, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like, then she'd be competing with Darius, I suppose, but yeah. So. It makes sense, too, because she's so young that, like, she still she has all these paths. <laughs> She still has all these paths open. Okay, now we've got um, Helga, same as Vanilla. Oh, half done, sorry. Pretty much the same as Vanilla, but he gets a way cooler death scene in the finale. You guys know how I feel about that I, I, I agreed with everything you fucking said about that. I, and I disagreed. I thought it was all right. How about this? There could be a way to get either death scene. I like it. You it, could get the original, or you could get the new one depending on supports. Yeah. It should be based on supports. 
Now, I think that would satisfy the most people. It's like, if you like the original, okay. The If you want a new one, then maybe you get, like, the support, and then, like, he respects himself, and he goes out like a badass fighting, like, terrors or something. But yep. we'll move on from that. So, Bjarki, he joins in the Hornheim arc now as a badass warrior everyone fears. He will be promoted and be a proper Mist Slayer. So there's not Big a up. lot of um, additional details here, but at my current moment, at the current moment in time, I'm thinking Bjarki and um, Crixus both join at the same time as, like, brothers in arms. Okay. Like, Crixus was helping Bjarki, and they join on the chapter where you get Sigrid. They, like, come in from the north... And Halfdan's, like, scared. He's like, brother, why have you brought the Mist Slayer? And they're, like, he's, like, shaking a little bit because, like, Bjarki's that scary. He's the guy who wiped out an entire clan. And remember, we're talking about a clan on par with Scotty and mm -hmm. with uh, the Icebreakers. Like, he wiped out an entire clan on his own. So he should be really freaking scary. So we'll try and give him that sort of story gravitas when he appears. If you don't opt for that chapter, having him appear in the... Uh... The cave chapter with Skyla, like later, like a few chapters or a few turns in by himself, no less. Like you want to give him like a pent intro could also work. Like he felt like there was some kind of monster disturbance in this supposedly wiped out cave. What the fuck? I'm gonna kill this. And you'll remember I said Crixus. He had a vision from a Lightbringer shrine that made him yep. sort of a mystic. The reason that I'm thinking of pairing him with Bjarki is because Bjarki is just, he's just chilling up north. He's just grieving over his wife. You know, he's just been up there for, like, years, just, like, eating, like, probably raw antelope or some shit. And then, like, Crix has come to him. He's like, brother, listen to me. The continent needs you. And he's like, oh, I don't well, do that that's anymore. That's why I'm suggesting Bjarki and Crixus uh, show up in the monster chapter to cleanse that and make Halfdan playable in the chapter that you get him as a guest. Because I'm assuming the reason he was only a guest and didn't join till later is you already got Sigrid and Ralfnir in that chapter, they didn't want to throw three units at you. Ralphnir joins sooner now, so you only get Sigrid in that one chapter. Yeah, you can justify fair. You could justify it, and that way it makes a little bit more story sense that Crixus would be trying to lead Bjarki away we'll, so much from the monstrous path of blood. We'll to have be, to think like, about it, but also remember that, it, that the sooner that you get um, Bjarki and Crixus, the more likely that you can make them into Jarls, so that's kind of important. True, too. true. Clark, uh, nameless and I guess access. this chapter would be right after yeah, this chapter would be right after the Arl thing, so there's also okay, that. Yes. And Nameless says show his animations. Yes, I was yeah. getting right to that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna show off Bjarki's animations now. It's gonna be right up here on the top left. I just uh, want him to have his beard. That's all I want. Actually I'm wrong. It's not gonna be because no. Where oh I have to scroll up. I was like, where are they? So here's the Bjarki axe. Yes, this he was has not, the beard. He has the beard. This was not in the vanilla ROM. Oh man, look at that slow-mo. Do you see that slow-mo? Dude wanted a fucking bullet time to catch his axe. That's crazy. So Boom. happy. Oh, he did. He fucking shows off. <laughs> That's he cool. flexes on them. <laughs> okay, then we got the bow. Boom. I'm so happy that he got his axe. Like, that was my biggest complaint when I promoted him. I was like, I almost don't want to use him now. Where's his fucking beard? I'm so happy. And, and let's also, just real quick, where is it? Do, 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 do. Boop, boop. Oh, do you uh, have a... Okay, hold on. You got a audio one I got to turn up. There you go. Yep, here we go. Okay. Five, oh, four, he's going to kill these guys. They're dead. They're absolutely meat sacks. I love that it says okay, it's, Erica. It, so the, it was slow-mo only in the GIF. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> I was afraid it was going to show off another one. I was afraid it showed off one of the other secret ones. We're not, we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Okay, so that's Bjorki. He's really cool. And I wish that that animation had been in the base game, but we just didn't have enough time to add it. Actually, no, we had time, but we didn't have room. Yes. Okay, next we've got Yerma, Astrid, Balder, and Njal. These are the ones you get from the arena. Obviously, they don't have anything extra added. We're not going to talk about them. Um, I will say Astrid, definitely going to be focusing on giving her a good personality. Not going to say much more beyond that, because she's very popular, so... yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, these, the other three, Balder, Nial, and Yerma, they're going to take more work because there's just not much for them compared to Astrid. Okay, Miriam. Uh, he gave a, Balder has a, like enough personality in his death quote to justify his existence as an enemy, not as a player. So, yeah. But he does have a good base to start with. Yeah. It's just so half got, and light. <laughs> so we've got Miriam. 
Um, she needs more story presence. This is, by the way, she's the uh, wyvern in Timaeut. Yep. Uh, she needs more story presence and feels a bit underwhelming compared to Ash and Jahira as a unit and a character. She's just Agreed. weak and she doesn't have a lot of presence. Like, just need to make her better. And this is more just an issue with Timaeut. We're not going to really talk about Timaeut characters because that's the Timaeut route. And we're not mm -hmm. going to be seeing much of the Timaeut route. Okay, Leonora. Um, recruitable only if she survives Chapter 7. This is Leonora, by the way, who's not usually yeah. recruitable. Recruitable no. only if she survives Chapter 7. If you talk to her with Jahira, and if Jahira lives without dying at any point all the way up to Leonora's appearance in Timaeut, uh, you can recruit her and Miriam both. In exchange, Ash will gain a, po a few powerful new abilities to make her solo recruitment more interesting. Okay. So you can either get two Wyverns, or you can get Ash. But Ash gets some powerful abilities, so it's more of a trade-off. That's cool. Yeah, and because you'll have three wyverns... I'm trying well, to figure out, like, Leonora's personality fusing with the team, and it doesn't seem like it would be compatible, but... Well, here's the question for you. What happens when you have three wyverns? Three flyers? What is that? Oh, oh you unlock the triangle attack. Yeah, oh, I... there it is. The triangle attack, baby. I see. I, um, I pick it so, Roark asked, wait, was Astrid Ralphnir's mom? No. That's an interesting angle to go for, though. I have to think about that. So we'll move on to Ash. Uh, already a fantastic unit in base Andron Saga. Might give her a few special abilities like a meteor you can conjure once per chapter. Dig it. That might be overpowered. I, sounds I, like I don't Sturm. know, maybe. But it sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> it's just um, Sturm. Okay, so Tendaris, you remember what I said earlier? You remember when I said there might be a little bit of a, little bit of a plot twist with him? Well, you knows? did. Uh, he's going to be the same as Vanilla, but perhaps a bit more ambitious than at present. I don't like that he's super passive in Andron Saga. Hmm. Wonder what, wonder what that I, means. Okay, so I, I'll say I didn't mind that his, he became passive after becoming king because we were immediately dumped with Darius right after that, who is the exact opposite, and yes. I didn't trust from the get go. Mm -hmm. Like I heard uh, the Hills or Nee Hills earlier say that he Darius is his favorite, oh, and I was Darius. sitting here going, "I fucking hated that guy." I was so happy when we didn't have to deal with him anymore. <laughs> well, I also I like used the... Darius to get Ahmed. That was it. It makes sense that Tendaris is more passive to me than Darius because. Tendaris is a dragon, and so Tendaris's attitude is like, I got time. You know, I don't I don't have to be ambitious. I, mean, I don't Derek have to rush. Lit, so. I got hundreds of years. <laughs> He's got time to chill. Okay, so we've got Varg. He's identical to Vanilla. I'm probably going to change his stats, though. I always felt that he was a little too weak, especially okay. considering I... like how powerful he is in the story. So, he's, so actually, Varg is going to be the most dislikable person in the whole game, then. Why is that? Varg is not a good person. From what I was finding out in uh, in my last run. Oh yeah, no. But uh, define good person. I do I like. I like his character a lot. He's very cool. No, no, I'm not saying he is badly written. I'm saying he is a fucking asshole in yeah. like every every relation with Runa and talking about like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see. What I was you're like, saying. he's a, like I had no idea in my first playthrough. He's an asshole. So here's, okay, Darius is going to be interesting. So a potential big story change is that Darius's claim regarding Mortimer hauling slaves down to Styxia still happens, but it's false. It's a lie. Okay. He gets Darius on his side via deception, Chocolate. which in turn really helps play up the future villain angle he has going on. I fucking knew he was going to be a villain! <laughs> Oops, spoilers. <laughs> okay, Zari. Okay, we get to show off Zari's portrait. Yes. So she is extremely Ooh. bland in Andron Saga. I will need to do a lot of thinking to make her a better character. Well, you know what really helps with making a bland character a better character? How about a good portrait? So let's go ahead and scroll down. Make some before, harder. Before we show off her new portrait, we got to show off her old one. So this is her old one. Now let's talk about what I don't like about her old one. First Everything. off, it's just got Tethy's dancer body. But the biggest issue that I have is the angles. Her hair is facing directly at us. Her face is looking off to the side a little bit, and her body is facing all the way off to the side. Yeah. It's like up, up, right, left. I mean, uh, up, right, left, Congratulations, you've left. just ruined this portrait for everyone until the new one is out. Yeah. Now let's talk about what I like about the new one. Boom. Big glow up. So much better. Uh, the lines under the eyes make her look old. I disagree. The, li the lines under the eyes are like like little cat marks. Like that's um, what they I, I, look I'm like aware. I, yeah, I'm aware they're not supposed to, but that's how it looks to me. But she looks fantastic beyond that. Now that her her body is rotated to face us, we also get a glorious view of her personality. Her personality yep. is really radiant, as you can see. She's smiling very cutely. She's got a lot of personality up here. A lot of personality. She's also holding I, I, onto the string. I, I watch Sorry for the plot. Yeah, this string is attached directly to her personality, as you can see. So. 
Yeah, very good. I really like this new portrait. And I'm going to be doing a lot of new things with her. Um, it's not written down in the document, but she can obviously be a lot more playful. She's kind of bland in vanilla. She's just like, yes, I like money. Because if you look yeah, at her well, portrait, well, she just looks bland. She, her personality dies as soon as she joins you, effectively. Because she shows more personality in her dialogue with the slaver dude than she you. does after she joins you. Yeah. Yeah, and she does like that weird thing on the guide where she like dances for Jock. And he's like, wow, that was really great. Well, that's because Jack is operating on basic bitch riz, so. Yeah. So anyway, she's going to be, like, fantastic now. And you're going to get to see lots of her because Stixia is longer now. So. Sweet. Yeah. I so like the tattoo Zarya. as well. Yeah, you the like tattoo's that? Nice. We're actually thinking, this also, is called a... a brand. This is like, called it a, like a tattoo. So this is called a henna tattoo. Yeah. And this is traditional in um, Indian society. Mm -hmm. um, it's oh. actually temporary. You can t yeah. you can remove it, it removes over time. We're thinking of making variants where she has different tattoos as the story progresses. Oh, that would be cool. That, that's oh, an and, idea. and henna is yeah. I, I even I know what henna is, and I live under a rock. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. We were on Miriam just a little bit ago. Miriam has a new one. Okay, so this is old Miriam. Um, my main issue with old Miriam is that. Well, actually, I kind of like Miriam, but the problem that I have is, like, this huge, bulky area down here looks very busy, and it just, I don't know. Um, up here, this is very splicey. I can tell I just this realized she's backwards rod. rod. Yeah. Long hair, eye patch, opposite eye. She's backwards rod. A little bit. No, I see it. I see it. Okay, but let's show off new Miriam, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not perfect. I think we're probably going to make some updates, but here's new Miriam. I, I like really, this. really like this. Yeah. So the new portrait is great. There's only one thing yeah. I don't like. She's lacking personality. This old one, mm -hmm. she's a sarcastic bitch. She's like, you know, she's always she cares about money. This is just kind of like a standard old woman. Yes. That's fair. Uh, try it. Try the smile. Try the smile. That is the smile. Oh, okay. Yeah, the smile and the eyes need to be slightly adjusted. And when but... she talks, you can see like part of her mouth doesn't move. That's just like a little error that we can fix. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I like this much more because she doesn't need to be, like, conventionally attractive to still have some appeal to, like, people who, like, like the aesthetic uh -oh. and everything. Nope, nobody look at that. <laughs> that, one, that one pixel. <laughs> you also didn't do uh, Zari talking and smiling and all that. Oh, good. Yeah, let's get on that. So, go ahead and have her talk. Blah, 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 blah. And then she smiled. I like her smile. Oh. Her smile's very cute. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The smile is, like, a little bit too turned up, it feels. Yeah, you gotta turn it down for what? <laughs> That was terrible. I'm, I'm going to kill myself now. I think that might have been the worst joke in a four-hour stream. Woo. Okay, so anyway, well let's done. move on. So we've yeah. got Zari. We've got Kepri. We don't have a new portrait for Kepri. Um, she does Kepri need a new portrait. Yeah, Kepri needs a personality. You're right. Yeah, she, Kepri has the same issue. She's just a very boring character with a cutesy personality. I love I Kepri, boring, but talking, you're so right. <laughs> when I talk about Kepri and I say she's boring, I'm not referring to her personality. It's fine. My issue with her is her story presence and her impact on things that happen, which is nothing. And she has no development. So she. Oh, just... no, no. I'm not talking about, like, her, her appearance is fine. No change is needed. It literally, she doesn't do a goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. I use Kepri for the abilities you get if you give her that ring and nothing else. You may recall I said that you could get Zari, Kepri, or Darius, maybe even, I don't even know, maybe even Ahmed, uh, much earlier in order to serve as the guide that leads you to Styxia. So maybe it'll be Kepri and you get her much earlier in the game. So that way instead of getting that her would like... Help. Yeah, and then you get her earlier and then she can talk to you about Styxia. Maybe she has conversations with Kaya. So that could be a thing. Like she's the one who leads you there. Um, yeah. Then we've got John. Uh, he can now grant Jesse the usage of staves via their A support. He has effectiveness against Harbingers specifically, but not ordinary terrors. And Cyrus is the same. He can teach Natalie a unique skill or ability of some sort. He has effectiveness against Harbingers specifically, but not ordinary terrors. So these two I, are I, both great to bring on the on the next chapter. That's not a bad thing by any stretch, but I look at them both and I'm like, I don't remember a goddamn thing about the personality besides the phrase, I failed my house. If you were to bring oh, John or Cyrus to the um, the Alvaro chapter, they have lots of dialogue with Alvaro. Okay. It really okay, fleshes them out. Try, I'll have to try that sometime. Yeah, I think you missed that. If and it's fair if you missed that because they don't get I, I did. otherwise. I didn't. I I never used John after the joining chapter, and I took Cyrus to Holtmeyer as a backup in the finale, but I didn't take him into the dungeons. <laughs> Roark says Kepri and Zari could have been the same character. Yeah, they kind of feel the same, hey, sort of. Not really, but they, they they feel like they have about as much impact on the story. They, combined, okay. they would have had the impact of, like, half of a character. 
So we have Madeline. She's pretty much going to be pretty much the same as Vanilla. She's fine as is stat wise, but she's going to have more story presence, especially in Guidance. There you go. Yep. That's pretty much it. And then we have Aubrey. Now Aubrey's going to be so exciting. Okay, so let me just go ahead. So she has a unique class called Executioner that wields swords, daggers, and possibly magic. The magic's up for debate. So do you guys know what the Executioner is? Like what an Executioner does? What the animation is. Have no. you guys ever seen the animation? I don't think so. No. Okay, and you get to see it for the first time ever. Let me just find it real quick. Dark type. Do, 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 do. Should be right in here. Jojo wants to know, will Madeline still look angry? Uh, yeah, she's going to look very angry. We'll still have resting bitch face. Okay, I'd like to direct everyone's attention up here to the okay. uh, the Bjarki. And okay. boom. Boom. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. I don't know how I feel about this as a playable character portrait. This looks like something that you'd see. She's uh, going to get a brand new portrait, by the way, and it's going to be hooded. But uh, okay. I don't I don't have anything to show about that yet. Her entire. So when you first see Aubrey, she's going to be wearing a mask that hides her entire face on a hood and everything that covers her body. She's going to be like dark and evil and sinister looking. It's only in conversations with Coulter or other people where she takes it off and reveals her face. We're also probably, I'm probably going to commission Nameless to make a variant of this that better fits whatever her new portrait looks like. Okay. So this is, she, this is like the tier three for Assassin, by the way. Yeah, like this looks badass. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it, this yeah. looks This is This like... is the magic animation, by the way. Ooh. That's cool. I actually thought when it came down, it was going to just fire off a fucking beam. Boom. Yeah, that would be pretty. Uh, sick. Yeah, Crim Crimblade says it is a bit long-winded. Um, it, yeah, it's important to remember, Crim, that these are a bunch of animations combined, but the hook swinging one does look a little bit long. You also have to remember too. You get her in like the final chapter of the game. Final chapter. I guess we're not going to be seeing it that much. Yeah, you're not going to see much of it. This is like I wanted to make her different from Coulter because Coulter's going to have his own thing, which I haven't told you guys about. But he's going to have his own thing that makes him really special as an assassin. She's going to be like the executioner, the head honcho. We obviously need to make a variant of this animation that better reflects what she looks like, but it's going to look good. Please trust me on this. It's going to look good. We uh, have a lot of ideas. I'm a little bit torn on the idea of her getting access to magic, but we'll like that. Yeah, the, the, magic, the magic's me. optional. If we were going to do it, it might be like dark magic maybe, but I don't know. We have so many dark magic users. It, do we it, really need another one? Shape. Like honestly, a, a really effective like insta-kill knife user is not a bad thing to have, even if you have Coulter with the same shtick. Like, really? having two of those for the final chapter where there's so many of those fucking hmm. shadows is not a bad thing. My chat seems to feel the same way. that They're all like, it's a little slow. Mm, okay. I'm seeing, I'm seeing conflicted opinions. Okay, we'll think about it. Um, then we'll move on. So we've got um, Aubrey, and then we've got Adelina. I already told you about Adelina. So yep. she's unhappy because Alexander treats her like a pawn. So you, oh, you can speak to her with Fred or Caroline. I forgot about that. Fred, Caroline, or Femke. All of them can recruit her. Caroline makes a lot of sense, though, because they would have absolutely had to work very closely together. Yeah, and, and Caroline literally is beside Adelina in Chapter 2, so. Yeah. And then you got Galahad. Exactly the same. No changes. Okay, then we got Fred. Oh, yeah, again, how do you improve on perfection? Yeah, we got Ferdinand, new go-to who appears if you lost Zacharias or Don. Uh, it says right here, can join in Chapter 15 or later at any point if Zacharias or Don are dead, depending on your route. The earlier you get him, the lower his stats slash better his growths. If you don't have him recruited, he has a badass cameo in Chapter 29 where he wipes out one of the enemy armies. He will also be one of the ancestors you fight. Everything with Ferdinand is still very much up in the air. There's a lot of ways we could take it. So maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do one of the other things I said. Yeah. There's definitely been some contradictions with him in this document. So. You'll, you'll, well, that's the thing is Ferdinand is going to be going from a joke character to someone of some actual relevance. So you'll have to go very carefully with that. Mm -hmm. Next, we have chapters. Um, because we've been on this stream for four hours already, um, I'm thinking we just we're just going to speed run this. As okay. fast as we can. Yeah, I can yeah, just uh, sit back and let you read it. So chapter one. Um, these are I've already talked about a lot of the changes throughout these chapters, so I don't want to focus on them too much, okay? Bottomon's a depressed war veteran. He puts on a strong face, but inside he's battling depression. Jaka is still happy-go-lucky and speciesist, but now he is the ladies' man too and good with women. That's why he gets the nickname Lord of Lances, because he's good with his lance. Haha, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, Jesse swaps places with Coulter to keep the vibe of chapter one relatively lighthearted. He's the comedic relief... Uh, the father and daughter of Chapter 1 are gone. Instead, there's Lena and Estelle. They are accosted by Rod because he sees them as nobles that need to be killed. 
Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Unfortunately, Rod spotted them and they didn't have their magic available. I'm um, probably going to make this so that way it's uh, Estelle. Like, she fucked up and she told her, Oh, it's the slums. It's fine. We don't need magic to protect ourselves in the slums. Uh, Rod is now Rod the Rebellious, and more dialogue will focus on his hatred of nobles. Um, if you get the Rod recruitment, his eye is injured, and he curses at Coulter, who says he lost an eye this time. But if he finds Rod... Coulter? That should be Thea. Okay. Uh, he curses at Thea, who says uh, he lost an eye, too, but if she finds Rod hurting innocence again, he'll lose his life. Okay. Uh, you recruit Lena and Estelle at the end of Chapter 1 if you saved both of them. That seems like a lot of units really fast. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, someone in chat just asked, and I was wondering this too, you didn't mention Angelus at all. Yeah, that's true. There was no mention of Angelus in that document. Yeah, you're right. I, I must have forgot to include him. Oh, well. And um, thought... someone asked earlier in the, in the stream, and I, I let it go then, but I wanted you to explain. They were wondering yeah. if there was a reason why Angelus says he knows everyone and they don't know him. I know you've gone on the record and said what exactly that is. Yes. But I'm wondering if you want to tell people that in case they have not heard it before. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, Angelus sees visions of the past and the future. He thinks he was a part of the rebellion, but he wasn't. And he's gone a little bit crazy as a result. So he saw himself like alongside Bottomon, but he really wasn't there. So everything that he says is a hallucination. That's why nobody remembers him. It's really that simple. And you remember too that's that That's the he... canonical reason in Anderon of why yeah. nobody remembers him at all. And I think that's a great idea because if you could see I like that. the past and the future and couldn't actually fully control that, you would go a little squirrely too. You remember too, he sees a vision of Amon like destroying the continent when he's on the boat and he talks about like Alanda mm -hmm. dying. Yeah. And Jock is like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? And then he leaves and then he's like, and then more blood shall fall or something like that. And it's very mm -hmm. ominous and it makes you realize he can see the future. What if he can see the past too? And that's what's basically going on. Yep. It's very subtle in the game and I'm, I'm assuming you'll do a slightly better job of indicating what's going on provided you want to actually pursue angelus and like get more dialogue out of him okay so here we're gonna we're gonna get on chapter two chapter yeah, two has some right. fun stuff okay so instead of getting a silver blade if you reject dawn color you would get a completely different sword with unique utility and infinite uses so this is not going to be dawn color Love it's it. just going to be a cool prf blade that only bottom on can use it's going to be cool i promise you it's going to be cool so instead of Bjarki and Barret, you get Ralph near and Barret. You get Bjarki, the legendary Mist Slayer, much later in the game as a powerful warrior. Cassandra does not appear at the top left anymore, because frankly that never made sense to me. Instead, Bjarki does. He will be a powerful warrior who simply watches in silence then leaves. He stays at the top left for a while, and several people can talk to him. You cannot recruit him here. So if you if you recruit Barrett and you get her over there or Ralphnir, they can talk to Bjarki. You can get like Bottomon talk to him, maybe Jaka. So a bunch of people can talk to him, but he doesn't say much and then he leaves. This okay. is just to like hint at who he is. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And I will say this. I like that Cassandra appears in the sense that it introduces Cassandra, which is good. But it's just an FE4 reference ultimately and it doesn't really add much to the story. Yeah. So that also means you're not going to get the silver sword from her. But it's also weird that you have the option to get a silver blade and then you get a silver sword immediately. I after. thought that too. I thought that was very strange. Yeah, so kind of feels unnecessary. Okay, so Fred gets to choose a second weapon on promo when he becomes a paladin. Uh, Fred leaves at the start of the chapter. I already told you guys this. And then he brings Adelina and Caroline along. Um, this doesn't mention Caroline, but whatever. It's there. So chapter 2X. At the start of this chapter, Bod and the gang travel to Holtmeyer instead of the forest, where Jaka will meet with Femkin. You get a chance to recruit her. Afterward, Jesse will meet with Aubrey, and Theo will sneak into that meeting. This effectively replaces the Chapter 8 scene of Coulter meeting with Aubrey. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and post real quick, because I did save that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Andron Saga. Where is it? Scripts. Aha, cut Thea combo. So this is I'm going to put this inside the Andron New Dawn chat. This is the um, cut Thea convo for as chapter eight and you can actually just uh, there's probably people talking about it there but i'm not reading their messages okay you right. guys can watch that on your own time if you join the Anderon saga discord um this is the original dialogue that we had if the uh, um got to have a t it was still alive she got to have a talk with aubrey and then mang's cut it in like the final week so we can have this and we can have the conversation play with jesse instead of coulter and we'll probably change the context, obviously, but it'll be her and Jesse talking to Aubrey, who will, by the way, now be wearing a mask. So, 
yeah, going oh, into the execution. Xavier brings up a good point. It's stranger that you can get a silver blade, but if you pick the Dawn Caller, Chapter Five Shrine just gives you a silver blade too. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, that's another thing too. There's yeah. like three yeah. silver weapons you can get in just a few chapters. It's very yeah, it's strange. Dumb. Okay, so move on. So, um, the, uh, the uh, finally the gang will travel to Angvik's forest where the rest of the chapter plays out normally. Estelle no longer joins you in the Gaiden, but Kaya does. Kaya is a Styxian spy. Blah blah blah. We'll skip that. Chapter three. This chapter is basically the same as in vanilla. Uh, Kaya is skilled in swords and comes with a scimitar. Her growths give her high strength, so she occupies a similar niche to Victoria, making both of them great at killing centaurs. Okay. Victoria no longer has Brave Lion, but come some other skill, and she gets to choose a weapon on Promo, like Fred does. Sweet. Okay. Uh, chapter four. Elanda starts with an E in swords. She cannot gain further levels. Theodore does not use swords anymore, only lances and anima. Okay. Natalie gains a unique skill, and there's unique conversations for every character in the game. We already covered that. Yeah. Chapter 5. Uh, the story for this chapter will change. Instead of bringing only Bod to cleanse the shrine, Elanda asks him to bring a few of his strongest friends because the shrine is in danger of collapsing. This is a big one for me. I've never liked that it's only a two-person chapter. And plus, you get more chances to, like, exposit about, like, the terrors if you bring more units. Mm -hmm. So if I think that's more if fun. If the shrine's in danger of collapsing, are you adding a time limit to this chapter? Like, you need to beat it before X amount of turns? Well, I think that just the fact that there's fucking terrors spawning up there means Elanda wouldn't be like, let's only the two of us go up there. Yeah. Oh, like, 100%. I agree. And also, it's a boring chapter because it's all, it's two pre-promotes, possibly three with Zacharias, and you're getting dick all for experience for the most part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's actually, kind of no, her and her and Bod get some good levels. Like, I you can usually get six or seven levels between the two of them. But anyway, um, the rest of the chapter will remain relatively the same. I may greatly increase the enemy difficulty and density. The steroids will give random items weapons that change each playthrough significantly. You will find powerful artifacts with infinite uses that can substantially play change how you play the rest of the game. That's going to make this chapter a lot more exciting. Yeah. Because when you play through this and you, you're visiting like these ancient ruins, finding like an elixir inside of a stairwell or a hammer, so boring. But what if you find like really cool PRF weapons? that only certain characters can use, and it's like, ooh, it's that character's so much more interesting this playthrough. Mm -hmm. I can see Chapter 5 being the bane of Speedrunner's existence now, because you're, you're going to be, there's going to be an optimal list of what these items are at some point down the road. Nah. And people nah, are going to be I disagree, like, because right. Speedrunners are interested in beating the game fast. That doesn't necessarily mean you need, you need the best items. Yeah, they probably won't grab any of them. It's more like a min-maxer's bane, which I'm a min-maxer, so I don't mind it. Okay, yeah, you'll so, have to bring, uh, Krim brings up a good point. You'll have to make it so Sam Samuel can't be a part of this vision, otherwise he'll have a lot less reasons to be, you know, to hell with... Well, I mean, uh, it's still just bottom on an Alonda at the end, having the vision talk. The others are probably, like, off, you know, fucking chilling or something. Like, they're not going to be a part of that. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, so chapter over. six. Chapter six is in the caves with Amelia, so it's pretty great. I see no reason to change it much. Buggy will be substantially more interesting as a playable unit. Seal random amounts of gold, blah, blah, blah. Chapter 7, uh, effectively the same as Vanilla. Chapter 7 is basically like the perfect chapter, so I'm not going to adjust it much. Kurt gets swords on promos. Uh, and then the Leonora recruitment that I mentioned before. Yep. So chapter 8, uh, could recruitable Robert be a thing? Perhaps a way to spare him and fight him later only to have Isabel or Femke recruit him? Hmm, maybe. Mm. That could be fun, but probably not. Um, we'll see. At the very least, what I really want is a way for Isabel to talk to Robert. I think that would be a cool thing, and it's sad that she doesn't yes. get to talk to her father. This should be like an optional, like super elite secret strategy. So it's not like like something that you're really going to be able to ever do realistically. Anyway, um, Shay will perform just as well as always. You know, let's go ahead and make this. Um, Shay's squad turns green when you talk to her. Gafreen. Shut up. Shut up. Gafreen. <laughs> okay. Elmer is getting some big buffs. He can promote to the same class as Ferdinand in the late game, and promotion to War Monk is now an unlockable option by supporting with Zacharias only. However, he will gain Slayer this way. Cool. This was something that was so big with the beta testers. We wanted, we didn't want War Monk to be just playable. We wanted it to be like support with Zacharias to get it. I like that. That makes sense. And then Haley comes with a unique PRF weapon. Oh, by the way, something I didn't mention. There is going to be one change to Samuel. Samuel gets a PRF weapon, and there's a very specific reason for it. Can you guess why? Um, on my head, I can't, no. Okay. Yeah. So later on in the game, when you fight inside Alvaro's chapter, if you didn't get Rosethorn, it's on Samuel. 
But what if you already got Rosethorn? You don't have that hint that the Harbinger you're fighting is Samuel. So instead, it'll have his PRF and or I, Rosethorn. Nice. I was actually kind of curious. I was going to ask this earlier, but I was kind of curious. Um, a lot of people like to mod in, like, p portraits of the people you're fighting. Are you going to be doing, uh, like, getting someone to make custom portraits for their quote-unquote zombie variations I would or not? love that. What do you mean, zombie variations for, like, what? Well, like, you're fighting, you're obviously fighting um, a terror or a harbinger that is Samuel. The portrait is still just the generic harbinger. Thing. Oh, yeah. No, I, we're not going to do that because Samuel is inside the armor, so you can't see their face. Right. I, I And I was thinking that, too, but I was wondering if you were going to do variations on the helmet or something to possibly do. I know it's a lot of extra work, but I also know it's something that people love to fuck with in their hacking. Mm-hmm. Nine, are you yeah, just I, I are you just now realizing that that was Samuel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nine is like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. oh, she didn't know about Elmer and the War Monk. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, okay, or so even like if they had helmets with like the the crest of the house they were from on it somewhere. That would be a very minor alteration, but it would still be something. So chapter nine, um, because of the changes to Regalia, Gladiolus deals half damage to Fred, giving more of a fighting chance against Alexander. We went over this earlier. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps Caroline can be instantly recruited through Femke. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I'm debating it. Might be a little bit too overpowered getting her on chapter nine, but uh, chapter ten. This chapter will play differently from vanilla in certain ways. So chapter 10, of course, is the Malthrak one, where your Malthrak is burning. Yeah. If you can reach or rescue staff Isabel before she leaves, Femke can recruit her on this chapter. It's going to be a big change, right? Sweet. But remember, she leaves like turn two, so you have to move over there quick. Uh, Bod and Jaka can talk to Isabel and soften her resolve if they reach her before she leaves. She will still leave, but you can recruit her just by talking to her with them on the next chapter. So that's another way that we can make her a little bit easier to recruit. You talk to her once, then you talk to her again, and it's immediate. Okay. If you spared Rod, he, re he reappears here as a level one here. No, we, are, we already went over this. Yes. Recruit yeah. his henchman. That's wrong. Um, if you didn't spare Rod, then Lester will appear. We, we went over this. He's a cutthroat sword fighter who uses, ah, the Awakening Myrmidon animation. That's what it was. Okay. And recruiting him will allow you to recruit Jenny later. The dialogue in all of the houses will be heavily rewritten. This is a big one. The dialogue in that chapter is really meme and kind of bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just in a rush when I wrote it, and I didn't have time to go back and fix it. So there's just, like, some... some yeah, just literally shit. a fucking criminal in that fucking chapter being like, man, I wish I was out there burning houses. Here's an act. Yeah, it's, it's really janky. Okay, so... There will be far more enemies in the city to represent the chaos in Malthrak, and to attack Isabel's troops, player unit slots will also increase. Saving all green units and visiting all houses could result in a big secret. Ooh. That would mean you'd have to remove the warp, uh, the warp staff, and the fact those houses get destroyed on turn one. Then, otherwise, it's yeah. physically possible. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. We'll but I mean, out. I think actually replacing the warp staff rescue trick with the recruit Isabella a chapter early rescue trick is a lot more fair to the player and a lot more balanced, really. Okay, so like chapter you're eleven. For one chapter early, so chapter eleven is the one where you're inside the castle and you get Isabel. Yeah. So I've never been the biggest fan of this chapter. It's extremely long to play. Not much happens story wise beyond get to the throne room. It has a death squad that kind of mixes things up, but is also the most easily killable death squad in the game. You know, Mister One Range, and is otherwise just okay. The sole redeeming thing I like about it is the music choice. It's very good music. So I'm um, debating the I, complete map. I also appreciate that if you kill the death squad, uh, what's his name? Ariel's dad doesn't show up later. Like, yep. that's just so different than other games. It it's is. really it's very, cool it's to experiment with that. I was kind of hoping the same thing would happen if you got rid of um, Alexander and whatnot, but apparently that's not the case. It'd be pretty cool if, like, if uh, if you didn't kill him, he just kept showing up throughout the game because he's still hunting you down until you kill him. That would be, be kind of cool. Maybe, maybe that guy that you said, like, this is going to be one of the guys who hunts you down. Yeah, yeah, like it's the two of them. Well, no, no, I was thinking, because, like, there's no death squads, really, once you leave the Anduron primary continent. When you go to the north, there's not. So you could have Godfrey be the one that pursues them past Anduron's borders, and Joffrey is the one that tr actively hunts you while you're within Anduron's kingdom. Because as That's soon right. as you come back, it seems like those death squads start coming back again. Oh, okay, so I did spoil it here. Okay, so chapter 12. This chapter will have lots of potential new mini-branches available based on supports that may occur between Bottom on Mortimer and Samuel. 
Uh, if Bod has an ace apart with, Amul with Samuel and Mortimer both, and if Bodamon is level 20, and if a few other conditions are met, instead of Samuel and Mortimer betraying Bodamon, he can overpower or outwit them, proving himself worthy of being the king while also seeing through Mortimer's plot. It might Everyone be that knows Bod being level 20 makes you smarter. <laughs> well, he's certainly stronger. So it might be that Bod only needs an A support with Samuel for this to occur. If they are at A, then Bod can face off against Mortimer, Flameguard, and Spearguard in the next chapter as a final Bod's last defense mission. Winning this battle will grant the player the good ending. However, if Bod has an A with Samuel and Mortimer both, then they can both join him in the battle against Cassandra and Alexander's forces. I love this. So this is chapter 13. This is chapter 13, all new. This is the Bod wins mini route. This is one chapter. I, I, I'm, so someone said in the in the chat that it sounds like a joke ending. I'm saying it's an early Chrono Trigger-esque ending, where yes. it's still a valid end to the game. But like, if you really think about it, the, all the major houses have now been dealt with. Bod is on the throne and can cull the rest of them. There's no one left to summon the demon to the Lightbringer Shrine, and Bod has Elanda alive and well, so they can begin the rebuilding. There is no more contest besides... The other nations and we can deal with those later with a yep. unified yep. Anaron. i love it okay so, it, so it works as, perfectly so assuming you obtain the bod winning route via the secret objectives this will be a defense chapter that takes place on the same map as chapter 11 albeit in reverse so you start at the top of the map and enemies flood towards you yeah, since cassandra exactly. since cassandra and alexander are extremely powerful bottom on receive a powerful promotion to king in this chapter yes. you may also be joined by randall now humbled or perhaps not Either way, Bod's promotion will give him huge stat boosts. Galahad will also join you, as will Kaiden of the Steelborn. You remember Kaiden from the Gaiden chapter, the final yes. Gaiden? He's the yep. burned guy? Yeah, well, Kaiden joins you too. However, they will only be blue units if Mortimer is on your side. Otherwise, they will be green units, but refuse to help you in fighting Mortimer. An so important it's distinction. Flip, it's the flip side of when Randall ordered them to attack you. Yep. Mm. Yep. They will help you. They will only become blue and playable if you have both of if you have Mortimer and you have Bod on your side. So it's very important that if you want to not have these two just like just kind of dicking around, you have Mortimer on your side. Okay. I, by the way, before you get too much farther from it, I think I have an idea of how you could do the Randall thing while it's still making some story wise context sense. The fight with him in uh, the Long Live the King chapter. You, you have to continuously attack him with Bod to trigger more and more dialogue without actually killing him. Oh, that could be cool. Yeah. But, you so, know, like, kind of like how the Shaw Madeline thing works, but that taken to an nth degree where you literally do have to go out of your way to fight him, not die, but also not kill while you are prevent while you're talking him down. Yeah. Okay, so also, if you spared Ariel's father and brother, Geoffrey and Henry, they and the Knights of Ashburn will join you but only when Mortimer is your ally. Otherwise, they will be your enemy. So that's a pretty... That's another way to bolster your ranks. And I'm then finally... Henry, I don't care. Yeah, it's true. And then finally, beating this chapter unlocks the best ending where Bottomon takes the throne rightfully, either killing Mortimer if you failed to A, support him, or Mortimer bending the knee if you did. So I think that's just... Like, this is just yeah. something that we thought about. And I, it was I, like... I love what-if scenarios in video games. It's one of my favorite things. Like, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi games do them, yes. and they're fantastic. This is great. Yes. No notes. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the normal game. So, Chapter 13. Yeah. In this chapter, you can recruit either Jenny if you recruited Lester, or uh, we'll make this Renee if you recruited Rod. Okay. Coulter is here to be recruited instead of Jesse. He has special dialogue with several characters. No more Crixus recruitment, at least not for now. Is the Weird Sage remaining, or is that too meany? Uh, the Weird Sage is literally just DS Noon's insert. I might keep him in, I might not. It just it kind of depends. I, I don't think I, it's I like weird. It as a concept. I like it as a concept, but it's a little um, meta. So You, you, know, know, what we, you know what we could actually do? This is kind of silly, but because Crixus is now like a kind of mystic character, he could become the Weird Sage. We give him a hooded portrait. And then you see him later on in the game, and you recognize him if you took like the the hood off. I'm just saying this is an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that could. I was you thinking that, or you said you're gonna make Anna a Gaiden character chapter. It could yeah, also I'd... just be Anna. She's like, hee hee, it's me. And then Bob's like, wait, don't I know you? Nope, you have no idea. You must be yeah, thinking of my you, sister. You, you met my sister. <laughs> the Anniverse. There's so many of us. Okay, so chapter 14. Samuel will have a conversation with Estelle this time and all other characters. No more limits. This is a big issue with GBA ROM hacking. We couldn't give him talks with everyone that deserved it, especially yeah. Estelle. Her her entire um, plot line got, got fucked up because of this. So you, the only way you can get the resolution is if you have her uh, support with Albert. That's, that's the resolution to her plot line. 
if you talk to Caroline... Ooh, yeah. I was looking at that. I was like, I wonder if he's going to notice it. If you talk to Caroline with Jock on this chapter, she will join you immediately. This only happens if you talk to her earlier in the game, possibly on chapter two. If she comes with Adelina, yeah. And if you talk to her in chapter nine, having her join you immediately removes the rather awkward convo at the start of the Gaiden, and it allows her to immediately converse with Alexander in a battle dialogue or a talk convo on the map, which is something I always like. A, a battle dialogue on. on that chapter between those two is a good way to get Caroline immediately fucking killed. True, true. Okay, so chapter 15. This chapter currently feels a bit fillery. We'll add more dialogue to it via optional talk convos to set up the route split. Chapter 15 is where the route split happens. It's on the boat. I really <laughs> like the boat chapter. <laughs> so the main boat will be one to two tiles wider to accommodate many more units for the 14x Gaiden chapter. Because remember, all your units are blue units on Gaidens now. Yes. So. Yeah. At the end of this chapter, you will decide on whether or not to go with Helga or continue on to Timaeut. This will put you on one of two distinct and fully unique routes, each with unique characters and dialogue. So this is another thing. We're going to have, like, I don't even know. Like, what are we going to have? Like, 80 or 100 characters or some shit? It's going to be a lot. But yeah. most of them are going to be unique to each specific route. And then, of course, you've got stuff like um, you've got Lester and Jenny versus Rod and Renee. So mm -hmm. those two are unique from each other. And we're going to have other unique characters. So Brent, it's not Brent as many. I a really good point about chapter 14 when I said, like, if you talk to Alexander with Caroline, she's going to fucking die. Because there would be no no real way without cheating to actually make her survive an encounter with him. That mm -hmm. could be where he reveals the, the truth. Like, mm -hmm. literally, she, he's about to kill her anyway. There's no way she survives. Might yeah. as well. Yeah, he could reveal it early. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so we got chapter 15. Now, from this point on, we have only the Helga route, a.k.a. the Hornheim route. And you'll notice yeah. it's not finished. It yeah. stops at chapter 25. Words, 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 words. Yeah, so I already know what's going to happen after this, and I can give you a brief description when we get there, but we'll worry about that later. Sure. Okay. So for right now, let's focus on chapter 16. Uh, this chapter and much of Hornheim will be the same as Vanilla Andron Saga. Story details... About skill, it will be smoothed out, but it can result in skill and nearly killing a Londa, like in Vanilla Andron Saga. Since you get Ralph near way earlier, we may add Crixus in this chapter along with Halfdan. Crixus is Halfdan's brother now. Uh, most likely, this will be the chapter where Bjarki finally appears, so I've already talked about all this. So. Yeah. Uh, only Barrett, Sigrid, and Femke can recruit him, the latter two because they remind him of his lost daughters. That's kind of sad. Chapter 17. This is the Helheim chapter and where you can first recruit Varg. Only Dark Ooh. Homers can recruit him. You do, do you notice what that says? First recruit him. Yeah. yeah. There's a very specific reason I've used that wording. So uh, only Dark, Dark Homers can recruit him as he is on an important mission to locate, locate the Void Flare Tome. Mm -hmm. This means Runa can recruit him too. There's going to be a lot of secret events tied to this chapter. This is a major chapter. And you'll notice I'm not going to tell you about any of these secret events, but there's going to be some. That's big... why I actually think it'd be really interesting if Varg was here, but he was not fighting, he was just passing through. Mm -hmm. And like, that's your, so, like, your, that's your window to get it. So I'm going like, to tell you this. So I'm going to tell you this. So there's two routes, right? One of them is the Hornheim route. And the other one is the Timant route. Yeah. Right. So on the Timant route, you don't go to Hornheim and Scotty is killed. Now it's not in this document, but the idea that we're going with right now is while Jock and the others are down there, um, Tyranar comes to Scotty. And remember, there's a six month time skip between 16 and 17. That's still going to be a thing. We're still yeah. going to have yeah. that. So there's a six-month time skip. And then um, we can say that while Jaka is down there in Timaeut fighting his war or whatever, uh, Tyranar marches on Scotty, and he kills a bunch of Scotty. It's like he just murders these women. And then he goes for Scylla. But Scylla is crafty. She's sneaky. She opens up a portal to Helheim and slips through, leaving her daughters behind. Her daughters are terrified, but they're captured by Tyranar. And he's ready to kill them, too. He's like... Your grandmother is a monster. I know who she is. We need to find that that evil creature and murder her or something. So he's thinking about maybe sending uh, sending one of them in. So he's like, okay, Helga, you go in after her. You catch your grandmother and bring her back. If you don't, I'll behead your little sister. And so Helga's terrified. She comes in. She's like, okay, I got to go do this. So she goes inside and she meets up with Varg in there. Because remember, you didn't go to pick up Varg. So he's yeah. actually in Helheim. And then when she tells Varg what's going on, he's like, Really? Hmm. So he comes out with her, and when he comes out, Tyranar becomes scared. He's like, oh shit, that's the Dark Sage. And he's like, hey, listen, we don't want to start any trouble here, buddy. And his warriors are like, come on, boss, we can take him. And the boss is like, listen, 
We can we can probably kill the Dark Sage, but I'm going to suffer some serious injuries. I might even die. So I don't know if I want to fuck with this guy. I mean, remember, he's got, like, that awesome tome, like the Void Flare. We don't want to mess with him. And they don't know that he doesn't have the Void Flare, but he can still fake it. Like, yeah, yeah. I found my regalia. What are you going to do, Oh, yeah, do, no, bitch? Varg is crafty. Varg would know to lie, and he'd, he'd have the cunning to, to back it. He also, he's just, even he's if like... he doesn't have Void Flare, he may have anything else. Yeah. yeah he came and... from hell just now. <laughs> they're like yo this guy came from hell and he's like he's got like blood on his fingers he's licking off he's like yo what's up you guys want to start something and they're like hell no we don't want to mess with this guy so anyway Varg basically scares the shit out of them and they leave so Helga and Sigrid survive and Skilla she's at large somewhere who knows maybe she shows up in the final chapter or something alongside the demon emperor mm. who knows that would make a hell of a lot more sense than Morty you're draining too much of the shrine's power yeah. There's well, to be fair, thing. this is the Timant route, and the Timant route's probably going to have a different ending chapter. It won't be the same because we're probably not going to converge any of the chapters. But yeah. uh, we'll 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 see how that turns out. I haven't written the second route out, but I'm telling you right now, probably going to have this happen with Varg because it's very fucking cool. If you're going to converge them anywhere, the place that makes the most sense would be the Holtmeyer chapter anyway. So you've got lots of time to fucking stretch this out. Yeah. Okay. So fun stuff. So we got chapter um, 18 uh, comes after Helheim. This is the Jarl Arena allow you to recruit yeah. one of his allies. We already went over that. Yes. Chapter 19. This is my most hated chapter in Vanilla Andron Saga. I hate it because it's long, slow, pitch yes. black fog yes. and fucking yes. boring. Yes. I'll be adding All some named... So, remember what I said about Scotty, how it only has three characters? I was mm -hmm. hoping you were going to do this, so yes. So we'll be adding some named Scotty and enemies to serve as mini bosses who can be recruited in the other route. Okay. Mm. Could be interesting. Zacharias can save Alanda from dying at the cost of breaking the Lumina for good. This makes Zach really optimal for a better ending. So, mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, chapter 20, Helga route. So after Hornheim is over, this is the end of Hornheim, Kaya will tell you about her true self and ask you to help her lead Darius. Remember, she's a Styxian spy. Right. Yes. Her entire thing about being a, yes. a, a, a slave is fake. So she's like, can you help me go to Darius? Now, it says here this... But it's entirely possible that she's actually not working for Dara. She's working for the Lich, uh, King X, and maybe she's like lying to you and she wants to get you down there so he can kill you. But I haven't decided yet, so you know it could go lots of different ways. So the point is, this is all new content. Everything after this is all new content. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna you're gonna have to really expand your mind for this. Uh, it does converge with a vanilla Andron saga, specifically with like the Fortress of Flames. So we'll hear about that in a minute. So this takes you sailing south around Timant. You know what? Let's put a pause here real quick. Let me just load up the map. Okay. The map would really help here. So there is actually a brand new map. Um, uh, other stuff. Map 2.0. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Uh, load it up. Here we go, baby. Okay, you guys can see that, right? You can zoom all the way in on that. Can you see the dots? Can you see the pixels? Mm. Let's just... Yeah, I was like, just expand it. Let's oh, just go ahead and slide it. this over here. Okay, I'm going to have to, like, resize everything if we do that. Okay, we're going to zoom it in to 100%, so that right. way we can see stuff. Okay, that works. Okay, okay so hopefully you guys can see all this, all right? So yeah, yeah, in, I, can, I can make it out of my screen. In this revamped map, you remember that this is the Icebreaker capital. Originally, it was, like, somewhere up in here, but now it's, like, down towards the south. You've got the port, which is directly connected down here to Stillwater, which is uh, uh, Runa's Rune Village. Village. Yeah, so it's very close. So they travel yeah. from Nidoros all the way up past Mount Frostmore is um, where they have Can you move the... that to the right side of the screen, maybe? That would help me. Yeah, there sure. we go. You know, I'll go ahead and expand this just a little bit. That way you can see it better. Okay, so we're over here in Iceflow, right? This is Scotty's capital. Jaka and the gang go over here to Mount Frostmore. That's where they fight uh, Skilla. Mm-hmm. Um, but right up here is the Mistwalker Mountains. This is where you find Bjarki. That's why you're in this chapter right here, and you meet up for with um, Half Down, who's down in here. So you meet up with uh, Bjarki comes down from the northeast. You got Half Down coming down from the northwest. You meet all up in here. Then after all of that's over, after Hornheim, you go down and you sail around. Oh, yeah, you have around. a really long way to get to stick. Yeah, it's a long way. We could assume it's months, right? Yeah, it takes yeah. months. And then you start, you join up with um, the Styxia, I think. Where did I say? South route where you find the ill road in and killed Tendaris. And right, this will take you down. sailing south where you find that you sail around Timet. So you can imagine a scene on the boat 
where you find out that Il Rodan killed Tendaris and seized the throne. Then you meet up with Kepri along southern Styxia's shoreline, who liaisons with Kaya to inform her of Darius's location. Okay, so you meet up with Kepri at the start. Um, so Morph we'll Ball say is asking uh, who drew this map. Oh, um, so someone made the base for it, and then I went through and redid this entire map. So uh, I would say you probably. Know who the base? Uh, one sec. I think was it Mr. Market? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I have it pinned. Oh no, wait. I have the name right here. Uh, it was there was Fruclid and Mr. Bun, and I, it was Mr. Bun who made the base version of this map. I can actually show you guys the base version real quick. The base version does not have any like ser this is literally just the vanilla Anduron yeah. Saga map, so it's got like it doesn't have anything fancy going on over here. And then mine um, is much more detailed. You can see like Chris the changes. saying that the forest makes um, Angvik's ter uh, centaur territory look much more impressive because there's a lot more forests. Whoops, I zoomed in too far. One second. Yeah, and there and you remember what I said earlier about Taurus? It's right next to a bunch. All of these yeah. tent things are the uh, the centaurs, and they protect the Solanum Shrine, which is next to that. But we're getting off track. Yeah, back down there. So they sail all the way down to the port. This is where you first. You first, uh, you have your first chapter in Timaeus. So before, you could say that you had your first chapter like right up around here. That's yeah. where you meet the slavers. Now you're down here. Mm -hmm. So we meet up with them there. Um, so you go to you 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 learn of Darius's location. He's under siege by King Axe's forces, and you need to rescue him. This sort of resembles the original Tendaris rescue chapters in Vanilla Andron Saga. So kind of the same the same idea. But remember. To me, it's getting a big change, so we're not repeating it across two routes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you arrive in Southern Styxia. Instead of the slave saving chapter, we'll have a chapter focused on racing to save Darius. This arc will not be about sneaking around behind Kang Axe's back, but defeating him openly to save Darius. There's no deception of Kang Axe. Kang Axe knows who you are. He knows what you're here to do, and he's ready to stop you. So to spice this chapter up, this is where it gets fun. King X himself will be attacking Darius to try and kill him. If you kill King X, he will simply revive back in Quadim, which makes his status as a lich much more interesting. So if you mm -hmm. kill him, doesn't matter. He's a lich, he just revives. Yeah, yeah which makes his, perfect sense. His AI will prioritize killing Darius above all else. You have to rush in there and save Darius. He will just tear through everything as long as it gets into Darius. Okay. And after you save Darius, he informs you that you will have to travel to the Tomb of Horrors to find the Morganus amulet and defeat Kang Ax. Now it's very straightforward. So in this one, there's no there's no real deception going around. You know what your goals are. Mm -hmm. So chapter twenty one is the Tomb of Horrors. In vanilla, like it's chapter twenty. I've been saying this for years or years, uh, weeks. Like I really enjoy Tomb of Horrors. Okay, so in, in Vanilla, it's chapter 24. Here it's chapter 21. You know what that means? It means we saved three chapters, which is pretty important. That's three chapters we can use for other things. Yeah. And that's just by removing Timaeus. So anyway, um, it's the most hated chapter in Vanilla Andron Saga, but it's also the most beloved, and I don't want to ruin that for people. So I may cut down on the BS by removing Thracia Fog and making it Normal Fog. I like maybe. that. I don't like Thracia Fog. Okay. Uh, I can add mitigations for some other mechanics too. Perhaps Elanda, Estelle, Lena, Don, or Zacharias can reduce the tomb's power through their magic. So maybe there's like little things you can do with your characters that will like make the tomb a little bit less bullshit. But otherwise, pretty much the same mechanics. You're still going to have Nemesis chasing you. Okay, chapter 22. So the Tomb of Horrors is the only one that's mostly the same as in vanilla chapter 22 is a brand new chapter instead of going directly to the capital jaka is besieged by king axe's forces as he and the others exit the tomb of horrors and head back to quadim the battle takes place between two mountains going west to east north of quadimayat so let's go ahead and check that so they go up here they make their way around here and they make their way all the way over to the tomb of horrors and then Quadim. you can see right here yeah. oh it's right here this is where they they have their big their battle in this next chapter right above quadimayat I see. Okay. So they're going to have a battle between two mountains. Um, going west to east. This will be a route chapter facing off against many mounted Styxian units, including camel riders. So, yeah, we're going to have Ooh, camel riders in this. I love that. I have seen, I've seen a camel rider sprite in a and different It's, it's I janky. Don't... It's janky, it's and I don't like it. We can have someone, uh, I can pay someone to improve it. I'll uh, probably do that. Uh, since we're talking about janky sprites, uh, I believe it was just to it earlier hours ago asked if you're planning on using the same mermaid sprite and if not no, we're, prob we're probably gonna change it he would like to make one for you oh perfect yeah i'll contact him Ooh. yeah uh, wh whoever whoever that name was 
Uh, it was uh, Just Do It on Twitch, but their name on Discord is... Yes, Just Do It. If you have any animation skills, go ahead and contact me on Discord. It's just Clockinator on Discord. I would be more than happy to work with you. I'll even pay you for animations, dude. Okay, so let's move on. His, yeah, his Discord name's different, and I'm spacing on which one it was, unfortunately, but I... Oh, there he okay. is. He's in chat. Yeah, yeah. So just go ahead and contact me on Discord. Uh, but keep in mind, I'm busy on the stream right now, so we'll have to talk about that later. So chapter 23. This is the chapter where you assault King X's castle. This is using the same map and roughly the same mechanics as in vanilla. There's going to be some changes, though. Since there's no deception involved, you're not going to do like that thing where you walk into the chamber and you're mind raped or whatever. Uh, King X will simply teleport Jaka and Darius into the throne room to kill them personally. You can kill King X now. It's actually very easy to do. But every time you do, he revives within two turns because okay. he's a lich. Yeah. So he, he, his goal is to wear you down with a war of attrition. Yeah, and he probably doesn't so, even care if he dies, because who... Yeah, what, what, what does it matter? He's a lich, and I felt like that was not expressed properly in the uh, original storyline. This is just one of those things I didn't have time to even think about, mm -hmm. and I thought about it after release, I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of silly. There's just a lot of limitations in regular Fire Emblem that you wouldn't be able to pr properly show off a lich without it being exactly like Ash. That's fair, yeah. And maybe, but Ash is like more of a phoenix thing, so who knows? We'll, we'll think about yeah. that. Okay, so as for the Morganus amulet, perhaps King Axe can have Deveus steal it through some other means, like a thief staff. That could be fun. Okay. Instead of Kepri, you'll get a different unit in this chapter. So instead of um, Kepri uh, or her, I'm planning on a, a new unit that I haven't really put a lot of thought into. Maybe we'll get like a male Styxian because we have like, what is it, three girls or something like that and then mm -hmm. one guy. So maybe we throw in another guy. Okay. After that, we're back to the Fortress of Flames. So we're two chapters away. This was originally chapter 26 for the Fortress of Flames. So we've bought ourselves two chapters of Wiggle Room. Yeah. Uh, in this part of the game, there's a brief interlude where we get to see Il Rodan speaking to his brothers, assembling an army to march alongside Mortimer. Il Rodan is allied with him, but he makes it clear to his confidants that he will backstab the Andron King in some way once they defeat the Lord of Lances. Okay. Meanwhile, Mortimer is worried. Jaka has united Hornheim and Styxia, making both capable of pincer attacking Anderon. He decides to focus on defending the north while allowing Ember and Gale to slow down Jaka's siege from the south. To that end, while Hornheim attacks his northern edge, Mortimer sends a clone down south to speak to his wife and mother-in-law. So other than that, it's pretty much the same as the original Fortress of Flames. You'll notice there's nothing else after this, but I can, yeah. vag I can vaguely describe the chapters to you. Sure. So... It's a little bit still in flux for obvious reasons. Yeah. But chapter 25, we're thinking that you're still going to go into Alvaro's dungeons. Uh, you're going to have more talks with Alvaro. Uh, there were limitations we had. We couldn't add them all, not to mention time limitations. So we'll add those. Um, Alvaro's dungeon is pretty much going to be the same as before. Now Cyrus and John are both effective against the Harbingers. So there's an extra like weapon you can throw at them. Okay. It's kind of cool. Does the Amelia thing still happen? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, you can still talk and everything. Remember what I said before about Chapter 32? You guys haven't played it, but yeah. Amelia is supposed to be like a boss that shows up if you did yeah, that Yeah, I was thing. just wondering if you were choosing to keep that exactly the same, because like 32 is a, is a thing that not a lot of people are going to see unless they're going specifically for it. Yeah. So well, you no, now it's, now it's a guaranteed chapter. You're going to okay. see it. Sweet. However, okay. Amelia okay. showing up is optional. Jaka being an evil boss is optional. And you know what's funny too? I had this idea that Ralphnir is offered... A, a taste of power instead of Jaka. If Jaka refuses, and if Ralphnir accepts, he gets like a, a super powerful devil axe of some sort, and I he's think that the is one. Fucking hilarious! Because uh, I like in my fin my finished Iron Man, Ralphnir was the one I used to hold off the Demon King, and he fucking died. That's awesome. Yeah, but he Ooh, if he accepts, he's the, he could be the one who shows up in the final chapter instead. And maybe other characters will be offered it. Maybe we make it a random thing. Like, any character can be offered the demon weapon. Ooh, ultimate power or something like that. Uh, we'll, you could possibly we'll code it to be it offers the unit that has the most stats combined across all of their statistics. So yeah, yeah, because he wants, like, a powerful your... envoy. Yeah, totally it's trying that. to tempt your most, like, it's going after your Isabel, for, per se. I like this. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Isabel's like, what the fuck? Why would I want that? Well, you could kill Mortimer. And she's like, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that anyway. Have you seen these guns? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need your power. <laughs> she like takes it. She's like, what the fuck? This, this, this I, fucking this demon. Is spear yeah, it makes me weaker. What? I'll just take Dawn Caller, you dumbass. Demon okay, blessed so anyway. Hubert. So now let's talk about what comes after um, the dungeons. So then after this, we're just going to say this is the Windlands chapter. Um, pretty much the same. 
you know, um, because you're you're if you look at the map, if you look at the map you right still here. You have to go through. Yeah, you go through here, and then right after that. Gale. Yep. And then after the Windlands chapter, which is pretty much the same, you know, I've heard people asking me about um, Alicia and the Pegasi sisters, whether we'll make changes or not, I can't say. It's it's too far away. Then after this, you're heading up to Holtmeyer. But before you go to Holtmeyer, you stop at Castle Orion because Kurt and Haley tell you, you know, let's just stop at my old home. And you've already killed their brothers, I think. Maybe... No, that's right. Maybe there'll brothers... be a conditional thing, like if you, ha if you actually failed to get the early... Uh... Gale shot, there'll be like extra units that you have to fight. Maybe, or something. maybe you have to fight your way in because her brother was, um, maybe if both brothers are alive, I don't know. We wouldn't want to make it like an optional guiden that you can entirely miss if you didn't kill the brother early. No, on no, no, no. If you, yeah, exactly. It'll be something different if you failed to get the Gale shot and kill the brother or you chose to escape the map without killing him at all. Something like that. Yeah, and someone uh, in chat, Morphal, says, I feel like these ideas are getting a little too ambitious. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, and I, I was like, I I've, I felt this way for a while. Like, if you can make all this happen, that's really cool. But, like, a lot of this is very, very ambitious. Uh, I don't know. So, normally I would say something like that, yes. However, when all of these ideas are taken apart and gone level to level, you're not, like, don't forget, you're not making a giant cohesive game all at once. If you're making yeah. a tactical game, I'm, you're doing I'm... this map to map, which means you have lots of time to isolate a problem and fix it for this all one of these app. all of these ideas are taking a look at the existing game and mm -hmm. like what can we patchwork yeah. to fix it and don't get and me wrong some of these new chapters are going to require lots of like level design and stuff but absolutely but what i'm saying is you could be focused on a, an idea or mechanic that doesn't have to be prevalent through the rest of the game it only needs to work here and it's a lot easier to make that happen with a broader program like Lux Taliolus than it is with Fire Emblem Builder. Sure. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and let's just continue one last thing because yeah. this is this is we're almost at the end of the stream, guys. We're almost yeah. there. So Castle Orion, you go here and whether it's a Gaiden or you fight your way in, I don't know, but um, Orion allows you to get like at least one extra Gaiden in before the final battles, and then after this you go up to Holtmeyer. Now there's going to be two Holtmeyer chapters. The first Holtmeyer chapter is an assault on Holtmeyer. You need to break your way in because the dragons are stationed there. Okay. And the dragons are stationed there, and you have to, like, smash down the walls. Maybe Aubrey approaches you, and you have to, like, pay. You can offer to pay her to break down the walls for you, but they stay broken down even in the next chapter, so maybe you don't do that. You could cuck yourself a little bit. Or maybe you go in and on the next chapter after that. She still asks you if you want to pay her to not break down the walls. Like, there's some options we could do here. But yeah. I want to have two chapters. One is Holtmeyer Assault. One is Holtmeyer Defense. Back to back. And I think that would be, like, a really cool thing to do. Especially since I, it I just like, reuses... I like the idea of making your decisions in one chapter affect the next, making it either easier or harder. As long as, once again, you have a dialogue that's like, we need to think about what happens after we take this city. Yeah. Any damage we do will make it harder to defend it against mm -hmm. Mordor. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of options we can do there. And I also, you know, because it requires only one map, it should be a little bit easier to do. Um, one big issue with Holtmeyer in vanilla is that it's on a ROM hack. And if you have too many unique classes, the map sprites shatter, like they explode and break. So by using Lex Talionis, we can put lots more unique individual enemies on there. It's mm -hmm. not just like 850 Cavaliers. So that should feel a little yeah, bit I better. never noticed that. Like, I never noticed, like, an influx of too many of this or that when I was playing. I thought the whole Mario chapter was... Well, the reason you didn't notice that is because Mang's cut back on the number of units a lot. The original beta test had, like, three times as many enemy units. And the, and the constant breaking of the chapter was very obvious. We rammed, the, like, the 65 enemy unit cap constantly. And now you almost never do. Mm -hmm. Well, the, I mean, the Tamea Tendara's chapter was really bad for not spawning units, like, when they were overflowing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think, um, who's the general dude that attacks from the bottom? Apollo? Oh, God, he didn't I don't remember. Spawn in my first, he didn't yeah. spawn in my first attempt. He just, like, three of his horsemen showed up and no one else. <laughs> okay, so that actually pretty much, that covers the route. By the way, that yep. covers the route. So um, because the dragons are up here, we get to um, economically tell the story of of Il Rodan's forces. And Il Rodan's forces, by the way, the dragons will be joining uh, Castle Ember. They'll be joining uh, Castle Gale. So you'll see lots of dragons throughout these chapters as you fight your way up to Holtmeyer. And then Holtmeyer represents the final battle. But I see. you will not kill Il Rodan on this route. Because why would Il Rodan show up in person? Yeah, He's not going to do that. Power. 
yeah, he's a coward. So he stays behind and lets his generals go out and fight you. Maybe you fight Apollo or whatever his name is. Maybe you fight or him Adrian here. Or whatever, yeah. But at the end of the game, you know, the, the reigning Timaeid king is still the reigning Timaeid king. He's still there for the sequel. Yeah, this that's is a, assuming, different, of course, we a story for a different yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, and of course, there's the alternate route where Tendaris survives and kills him. So that's a thing. But generally yeah. speaking, you're not going to kill Il Rodan in this one. Well, my, my guess is just based on the you're, you're you seem very passionate about having the attack chapter followed by the defense chapter. So I'm guessing if we choose to go to Mayet, that you'll show up here and Holtmeyer will be under siege by probably the the, the sticks. Yes, yes, not, exactly. Sorry, the, um, if you yeah. do meet up here, it's gonna you're gonna have to deal with um, Tyranar. And he, this is going to be so cool because Tyranar is going to be smashing into Holtmeyer. And you can have Bjarki talk to him. You can have uh, Ralfnir finally get his revenge by killing him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, in, and that's that's how Ralfnir promotes to a Jarl much later because you're not going to visit the Jarl arena. You get promoted to a tier three in Holtmeyer. Yeah. Now, granted, that would make a lot less sense as to why the walls of the city are still standing when you arrive, but it. Uh, maybe you could make the argument that, like, Aubrey was effectively, like, not paid enough, so she was not allowing the walls to be destroyed, hoping that she'd be able to cash in bigger then, or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because Vikings yeah. are not quiet invaders. They tear through everything. Okay, so... The whole fire would be on fire. This stream has gone on long enough, but before we wrap it up and before we show off any missing portraits, especially Elonda, I'm just going to give a very, very brief overview on what would happen if you did the Timaeus route. And please keep in mind, I haven't written any details about this down. I'm sure. I also still right. have my list of questions, and maybe we can fly through that with like one word yeah. answers. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with Holtmeyer, because Jaka and the gang are in Holtmeyer. They sail up north. Helga approaches you. You reject Helga. You're not going with that woman. You're not a simp. So you sail all the way over here, all the way around the coast, and you meet up here at the Tendril Port. Now, here's a big change that we're making. It's not going to be just Il Rodan and Tendaris. They're going to have brothers and sisters who are also royals, uh, probably also half-bloods like Tendaris. So Il Rodan is like the full-blooded one. So they all like bow to him in deference or whatever. Um, so you join up at the Tendril Port. You just kind of make your way down very easily because this is six months before Il Rodan lays siege to and kills Tendaris. You join up with Tendaris very easily. And from there, Tendaris tells you, I need your help cleaning up shop. So your goal, you have to go up and you have to wipe out Fortress Tendril. You have to wipe out Eridan, Volthar, Feros, or whatever. You have to go through here and like clean up shop, eventually killing all of the brothers who support Ilrodan, so that way Tendaris can become king. Okay. Oh, I see. And so the, the, the Timaeus chapter is effectively just wiping out that entire rest of the lineage. Yes, and okay. Tendaris is like very sorrowful about this, I guess. You know, who knows? Maybe there's a plot twist there. But after you do all of this and Tendaris becomes king, then um, all, while all of this is happening in the background, King Axe kills Darius. Yeah. He kills Darius. And then up here, um, Tyranar wipes out Scotty, and we have that thing with Varg. So while all of that's happening, these two both launch an assault on the north and uh, the north and the south of Anderon. They're attacking, and then you launch an attack from the east. So Anderon is being pincer attacked by all three. And as for what comes after that, I haven't fully decided. There's going to be some Anderon chapters. Um, I will say this, the Timaeus chapters are going to be more numerous than they were in vanilla. Instead of like four chapters, it's probably going to be like seven. Okay. Is there so any way you can conceivably find some excuse to make the maps in Timaeus more diverse? Because well, one take a look right here. Take a look or, right I see, here. I see a few. I see, I see some castle maps that could happen. I see that forest with the, with the lake down there that could possibly work. But what I'm saying is like the two outside Tendara's chapters or Timaeus chapters are so fucking samey looking. And then you have a fire. Yeah, they're very, they're just there. lava. It's just lava. And, and it's yeah, and if you're adding more chapters, you need some really good excuse to not just have oops more lava. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. For yeah, sure. Yeah. I've thought about yeah. it. It'll it'll be hard to get it looking uh different environments and stuff. Um yeah. clock, I was it's, also it's kind of why I'm not upset that Stixie is as short as it is, because you have one desert chapter, tomb of horrors, mm. and a castle chapter. And that's yeah. it. I mean, there's some, like, oasises out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Clock, okay. I was told by Moose to pass on the message. Check your Discord DMs for an uh, Natalie animation. He just yeah, made I already it. saw it. I, okay. I don't really, like, it's just it's just the, uh, I guess I can show it off real quick. Can it just pop up right here? Yeah, so. 
This is uh, this is Nadal <laughs> <Nathan Garum. laughs> You know that's, she's got the flame sword. That's awesome. I do, I do. But it's I think I saw te there it is. Natalie Winters. <laughs> she cute. says her name as a battle quote. I like how they look at each other for the crit too. I yeah. like that. We got this partner. We got this. Boom. Right That's here. adorable. No? Right here. Boom. <laughs> so cute. That's pretty fantastic. Also, Moose had a good point. Shout out to uh, all the people who have been here for this entire thing. Absolutely. Yes. You guys I cannot believe how many of you have stayed around. They're all fantastic. Both I was thinking two to three hours well tops. I didn't yeah. think we'd be talking yeah. this long. I really appreciate yeah. each and every one of you. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new. I do uh, SRPG stuff all the time. Fire Emblem and tons of others. Right now I've got a playthrough going of Flame Dragon Knights, which is a super niche Chinese-only uh, SRPG that was inspired by the game Shining Force, which is very near and dear to my heart. And it's the first oh, ever... Man, I've, been, I've, it, I've been wanting to try that. It's the first ever English Let's Play of it. So. Uh, I'm going to post uh, the link to Nihil's channel in my chat, so if you oh, guys yeah. and like, please, please go and subscribe to him. I mean, it's a YouTube channel, guys. Subscribing costs you nothing. It's not like it is here on Twitch. You should also oh, follow... Yeah, yeah. Spiral Sigil, though, and you'll be able to find uh, a link to his Twitch in my description. Heck yeah. All right. Uh, um, a little bit about myself, in case you guys didn't know, since Nihil gave one of his. Uh, I'm usually a variety streamer, but I do a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot of Fire Emblem Iron Mans. Uh, I did Andron Saga, Blind on Lunatic. I'm currently working on Bile, uh, Bells of My Left. I've done a lot of the canonical Fire Emblem games as well, and I'm doing some Baldur's Gate on the side. So that's me. I love your Baldur's Gate videos. They're so good. Uh, my, my, my crew is so funny. I'm I'm very privileged to have them, and we're going to be doing that later on tonight. I probably have to break for dinner, and then I'm going to be streaming that. Okay, but we get to do one last thing before yes. we end the stream. See the we get to show off Alonda's new portrait, and I don't think I've shown either of you Alonda's new You've portrait. You've shown me. Not, you did say this I is did. better than Runa's. You said this, this is, is better this than is the Runa's. best. I don't want to hype it up too much, okay, guys? I don't want to sig Sigmar balls, you know what I mean? But this is pretty good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show Hang it. Hang on, off. I gotta, I gotta size it because you changed it. Oops, sorry. Yeah, uh, I've still got it on online, so you're good. I'm having to refix things. Uh, I had everything already like zoomed in. Hey, so you tell? Are you saying that I should lie and say I'm a good tactics player because it, I'm not? Have you seen how many times I've died in these iron? Do, do you want me to resize this downward to make it a little bit uh, more square? Oh, that's fine. I'm already almost done. It looks fine to me. Yeah, but I mean, not, uh, Chris is doing his stream too, so I want to make sure it's uh, good for oh, him. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, yeah, I, thought, I thought he said it was okay. You ready? I'm almost there. Hang on one more sec. Oh my God. <laughs> He's almost there. I'm sorry. I'm oh, uh, right. I'm uh, there we go. Well, well, okay. Let's finish this off. Uh, Rorik has asked twice now to clock specifically. Do you have any co-writers for your project? Slash, are you looking for any co-writers to work with you? No, um, I don't have any co-writers, and uh, I don't really think I need them. Like, um, I do have Iron Lance, and Iron Lance is helping me with the story. He comes up with a lot of good ideas, and then I refine them. Uh, that's pretty much all that I need for as far as writers. I intend to do all of the writing myself. Oh, That helps it stay more cohesive, so I, yes. I agree. But I, I did want to make sure that I didn't overlook that question because I saw it twice. Okay, let's we're do, ready uh, for the wait, new wait. Elon. Let's do Ayla's the last thing. Can we fly through the questions from my chat real fast? One, one word answers? Do it. Sure. Um, Slave Caroline DLC skin. No. AI generated portraits pack for $99. No. <laughs> um, was there a specific reason for wanting to release Onderon Saga at a specific deadline? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Mings about that. I, I think know. he just wanted it out. I think he may have also gotten tired of working on it. Mm. Um, I felt like another six months really would have helped it, especially with a lot of the nitpicks and minor issues I've had, especially with rewriting, like, the Timaeid arc. That really needed more time. Mm. Um, will Christi Christina use the same paladin class as Samuel? No comment. Uh, we might change that. Okay. Um, Tax says, if Elanda's no longer pregnant or dying, she could easily take the main character slot. Wink, wink. True. Yes, and she is going to be more of a main character than she is currently. Like, she just disappears from Andron Saga's main story, and that's not right. Retcon, uh... It's like main character number three. Retcon asks, why does House Rose have two regalias? Uh, <laughs> Mangs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, your average Skeletor asks, will you add an actual ability to Bulwark uh, as the only regalia without an ability, or will other regalia also change in their abilities? Uh, the regalia are probably going to change in some way. I'm not going to comment on what, though. 
Um, dragons it's just too early. Dragons in Space uh, says, I think if Sigmar becomes recruitable, then Henry from House Claymore should be recruitable as well if you talk to him with Victoria and Ariel. That way we could contrast their upbringing. Kind of debating it. Like, I don't think I'd want to make Henry recruitable, specifically because, you know, if every enemy is recruitable, that's a problem. And we are adding a lot of recruitable enemies. But uh, I think I think um, Hubert is a little bit different because he's fairly sympathetic. And he's not even really like a bad guy. <laughs> Sympathetic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He is a sympathetic person. Um, Pariah the Messiah asks, could Kurt slash Haley really crash House Orion on that Gaiden you mentioned before Holtmeyer if Liam and Gabriel are still ru uh, ruling House Orion? I mean, hey, maybe you have to attack it. Because I know that um, the one son, he shows up in the Holtmeyer chapter. That in yeah, vanilla uh... anyway. But maybe you show up and you kill him there and then he doesn't show up. You know, I mean, we can still have we're going to have the dragons now, which were not originally fighting you on that chapter. So there should be enough like variety of enemies to make up for his absence. Um, Alice asks what unique non healing staves will there be? And will, are you, are you guys willing to consider adding the obstruct staff from engage? I don't know. Uh, we'd have to think about that later when it comes to gameplay, like really, really big changing gameplay. I have to put a lot of thought into it because every change is going to be very contentious. Yes, it will, but... All right, I think we're ready for the reveal. That's all Rob the questions. Rorik's got one question to toss into the mix. What house is Godfrey from? Why is he chasing Bodymen? And does he know about Mortimer's plans? Who is he loyal to? That was okay, like so while we've, got, while we've got that question, here's Godfrey's mug, just for people who've forgotten. Um, Godfrey is kind of like an attack dog. I am thinking he's from House Speargarden. He's one of Alexander's dogs, and he hunts you. But he could also be a dragon who is hiding it. Like you see how he's got the, the helmet yeah, on. Maybe he's hiding he his ears ear. and his identity. He could very easily be a dragon. So he who knows? Young Clint Eastwoody to me. Yeah. And this is actually not the, so this is actually an AI generated portrait that we cleaned up. The original portrait looked a little I'll bit be, different. I'll be right back. My dogs think they're alone in the house because it's gone for a while. So they're freaking out. I'll be, give me like okay. two seconds. Why okay. do I imagine him being bald? I was thinking the same thing. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find uh, ah, shit, where's this guy for? shooting someone with a magnum, though? Like, come on. It looks like young Clint Eastwood. Uh, trying to find Godfrey really quick. If I can find his original AI-generated version. Okay, they're cool. They just had to know I was still here. A helmet opens up so he could flash people with his bald. What? I'm trying to see if... If I can find Godfrey's original AI generated version, because it has a different vibe to it that I kind of liked more. I don't know if we've really managed to capture it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Rark is also asking, what if this guy was um here it is. Rihanna's royal guard? So this is I the original god. I think yeah, he this did is it. the This is the original Godfrey mug. You can see like obviously a lot of details were changed. But for me, the big thing is the face. This face is a war weary like attack dog who just he like he hunts down and kills people. Yeah. This face is a calm, collected commander who hunts you with a ruthless efficiency. They're I agree. two very different vibes, and I prefer this one for what I wanted, but this one's not bad, right? So as you can see, like this is the original version. This is the uh, the cleaned up version. They're very different too. Like even like the little details, like the helmet sigil or the armor trim, it's all very different from one to the other. So mm -hmm. humans definitely made some changes here. But anyway, I think no. we're all ready. We're finally yes. ready. I love that. Yes. I, I don't know. Ready. I mean, we've, we've held the back long enough. Maybe we just, maybe we don't want to see a to this. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what if we just both hit end stream right this second and just cock block everyone? Well, anyways, you guys have a good night. It's been new a baby. Boom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, she's she so pretty. She's so gorgeous, right? Here's old. Here's new. Oh, this, this is a glow up for sure. Big glow up. Here's her. All right. Not so smiling. one last time in the stream, I'm hitting the button. Wait, it's not done yet. <laughs> okay. You look at this. She's got like these long eyelashes. Oh, I, I love her eyes it. Too. And check this and out. And of course, so. Serenity's like, it's Sailor Moon. It does kind of <laughs> look like Princess Serenity. You know, it's so funny here's... too. I had not seen this because you showed me a work in progress. This looks a little different. Okay. So check this out. So that's Alonda. This is her cheery eyes. Uh, hold on a sec. Is there a little difference here? Oh, these are actually the same. I was about to say, that looks the same. <laughs> Okay, one sec. Okay, so we got her. This is Alonda smiling. This is Alonda frowning. A little different with the eyebrows. And then Alonda determined. Ah, I'm going to fight you. I will defeat you. Here's Alonda sad. 
And here's Alonda crying. Oh. Oh, did you already make uh like uh infected dying sprites of her too? Like all the nope. ones that she we, gets. We haven't gotten to that yet. I wanted to okay. have that done, but we haven't had that done yet. We do have a wedding photo, which I don't know, it's work in progress. Maybe you guys probably don't want to see it. Oh yeah, before we do. Before we do that, we're gonna talk about Alonda's child portrait. Okay, so here's old Alonda, right? This is her original. Here's yep. her variants for all the people. Um, let's actually, I want to see her frown talking and smiling. She looks more determined. Mm -hmm. And then we got her talking with a smile. Got her little fist up. Okay. And then she's sad with a smile, talking. And then finally, Alonda crying with a smile. Do you make her cry with the fist up? <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad idea. She's like, I will. I will pound his rectum. Whoa. <laughs> okay. okay, so anyway, uh, we'll <sighs> not discuss pegged. what I just said. So this is the original Alonda child. Now, here's what I don't like about it. The it eyes. The, same. the eyes look zonked out. If you look at, like, like you can see the eyes become larger. They become really zonked out. It looks like she's high on something. Mm -hmm. She doesn't look like a sad little girl. But yeah, like bring magic. What if I told you that her child portrait had an even bigger glow up than her adult portrait? Oh, really? I'd say you probably are on some kind of list. Oh. She's so cute. Like, yay. So check this out. This is her talking. She gets her, like, a little blinking. Then here's her when she's concerned. I like her that. when she's scared. Daddy. Oh, Daddy, I like no. little hands. Because I do that. I do this when I'm nervous. She's like, Daddy, I don't know how I feel. Daddy, no, don't die. Daddy. And then finally, my favorite, her pouting mug. Oh. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Hey, uh, Nahil, can you put a timestamp for hearing Clock say Daddy like that in your chat? Kill yourself. Just yeah, like, definitely. Just gun in the mouth, <laughs> dude, please. I'll, I'll, put, I'll combine that with the Jocko one. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love her little puffy cheek there. She's like, I don't want to so go anime. with you, Theodore. That's, that's a look I'm surprised Lilinette didn't have. This is the look of Theodore's trying to get her to eat her green beans. Mm hmm Yeah, then she doesn't want to eat those. But yeah, she's extremely cute now. Super good. Much huge glow up over her uh, child portrait. So. Because her child, quote unquote, picture in the original just looks like her. Yeah. Yeah. And Barely now she looks any younger. This actually looks like a child. Yes. It's great. Okay, okay. I I guess if you guys want to beg me, I guess I could show her uh, her other one real quick. Please do. Let me just, yeah, let's let me see just... the wedding, Irlanda. God oh, but it's work it, in I progress. I don't know if you... Work. It's going to look so janky. Nah, it's fine. Uh, okay. So before we do, did I show you guys work in progress, Sham? Yes, yes you, did. you did. I did? Yes. Yeah, he looks like 400 years older. Yeah, okay. So that's that's Sham. Um, I actually want to show you guys one other thing. This is work in progress, Sigrid and Helga. Let me just. Uh, ooh, where, where ooh yeah. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Yes. Yeah, this is very Sigrid work looks, in progress. Sigrid looks like decidedly older, like a teenager, and Helga looks really good. Yeah, now, Helga looks like she will absolutely stomp your pelvis into paste. She's got a pretty good glove, but we have to wait to see the Get final the bad part. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we? There's no bad part. Now it's time for Elonda. Okay. Boom. Uh, let's just zoom in. There we go. Get oh, yeah. That, that hair, okay, that hair, I like so that. much better than the current one. I fucking hate the hair in the current one. That looks good. Yeah, that looks fantastic. I'm watching chat reactions come in, baby. Yeah, this is this is the new a -line. Look at the this absolute is... unit and Sigurd got all the hair. This is great. Isn't this? I think that Alonda alone justifies the existence of New Dawn. But then you throw in, like, Runa... Rune is so oh, good. Oh, Rune is so good. Zari is so good. Shay is so good. Shay's adorable. Rune. This is great. We're going to have some great portraits. And some people aren't going to like all of them. You know, some people don't necessarily like the new Haley. I understand. But I like her. And then I like I like new Amelia. I like a lot of these portraits. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like my a famous YouTuber and my spirit animal once said, I like big girls, pretty kitty girls. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a good note to end the stream on, right? I was about to say, we almost made it. <laughs> almost made it without the cringe. Too late. I feel oh. uncomfortable. Uh, I like the short steps in the tall queens. Hey, hold on. I gotta find... Uh, that you have that I'm memorized gonna... is hilarious Okay, to me. there we go. I found one. Hey, they're showing off all the new portraits. I'm actually going to be posting all of the portraits uh, in the um, New Dawn channel. Someone pin that and send it to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an FBI open up sound clip handy, sorry. 
I'm I don't have your stream open, so I don't know what you said, and I'm gonna pretend it was a compliment. That's probably fine. You know, you are worthy of some compliments, though. In all seriousness, thank you for uh, oh, for sharing this yeah, with fantastic. with us, and it, this this has been really fun. This was a great stream. Uh, we got a lot of good comments. We got a lot of good feedback. I'm fully I... looking forward to Clock completely disregarding everything we said and just making it his way anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I didn't get to read, like, I probably missed 99% of the comments because I was so busy talking and doing other stuff. When this stream's over, I'm going to go through and rewatch it probably like a week from now because I'm going to need a recovery mode after this. Oh, 100%. Same. Yeah. Like I'm going to catch be... up on all the comments I missed. So I will be posting. Uh, saving this as a VOD for Twitch, and then I will be exporting it to YouTube as well. Uh, I'll probably just, like, throw, like, a oh my god, Funky Kong picture on the thumbnail or some stupid bullshit like that. <laughs> yeah, like, you could just rip <laughs> off Nihil. That's what he did. The new Funky say, mode. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. I oh, did, uh... I, 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 actually, my favorite thing was the fucking featuring Dante from Devil May Cry thing in the corner. I'm like, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, but it, it, saw that. it doesn't say Dante anymore. I know, I know. I looked at it, I loved it. Uh, my favorite thing, was uh, trying to find the font for uh, so the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog font so I could get the An Ahmed. Can you just send that picture to me? Uh, I'm trying yeah, to show it. That. I'm just going to use that. <laughs> Fuck it. Hang on, where is it? That's too good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, there just it is. It, I'll just put it right here. Boom. Yeah. So that's the that's the new final patch. This is the game of the year edition, new funky mode, best value complete edition, final patch, Anderon Saga and Knuckles, HD 1.5 plus 2.5 remix, original original Clockinator seal of quality, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series, rated E for egg by the ESRB. This is the deluxe gold edition Xbox 360 family games edition. Is it available on Connect? No. Fuck. Boycott. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be able to control it by dabbing. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a fun 18-hour uh, stream. Uh, yeah, I hope you, hope you guys all had fun. Thank you all so much for coming. Chat, I really appreciate it. It's good. I didn't expect to see so many people showing up. Even though I pinged the Discord, I figured, you know, maybe 20 people would show up. But it seems like we had, like, 100 people. Like, chat was really active. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was it was a good time. Um, me personally, I gotta go take these fucking headphones off for a bit before I have to put them back on to play Baldur's Gate. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. And chat, uh, hello, feel free hello, feel free to leave comments. Podcast. Yeah, chat, feel free to leave comments either in the main Discord or on uh, Nihil's video. Or I don't know if they can leave comments on the Twitch afterward, but those should be. Uh, I also have a spot for my Discord. I'm throwing it on my chat there. If you guys want, there is a Fire Emblem slash a tactical board where we discuss all things Fire Emblem and Duran whatever else and clock is a part of that discord so you can ping him with yep. all of your inane questions you're also yep, if you have other questions yeah. about it i'm more than happy to answer them you're oh, all invited to room? you can join my discord too uh, poor guy. what are you saying dojo just said that shout out to mangs for losing his challenge run so i guess his uh, iron man ain't going too well riff uh, so anyway, I changed it back since we hadn't specifically counted on Anderon in a while, so that's why I just added tactical to it. Hmm. Anyway, like I said, I gotta take a break, so I hope you guys have a good yeah, rest I of the day. I gotta pee, Thank you. so... Yeah? Alright, thank, thank you all so much for joining. Subscribe to all the channels, join discords, do all the things, leave a like. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.